Okay, welcome to ninety point one FM. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Mr. John Prophet. Hey, good morning. How are you this morning? I say still sleeping, you know. And I must add, of intellect. <laughs> <laughs> you and the family good, friends? Yes, everything. Every, every all, every all is good. Yeah, now. Mm -hmm. I was going through my archives and I find something I'd like to, I'd like you to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, something that took place, uh, like, what, about maybe 30 years ago? Mm. Right. It was uh, honoring uh, Dr. Yusuf Ben mm -hmm. right? But I like you to, to 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 listen to these two young men who are speaking from memory and not reading script. Mm -hmm. All right, here goes. At this time, may we be graced with the presence of two young brothers from our Saturday morning Institute for Youth will come forward to read, and I understand they're not going to read it, they have memorized it. <laughs> An amended poem from Haki Madhubuti's collection entitled, Killing Memories, Seeking Ancestors. Please welcome Sanjiata Dominique and Gregory Taylor. Question. What is Question. the greatest what is the greatest challenge I face as an African human being? Answer. My continued quest is to be a responsible, loving and effective black man, husband, father, writer, educator and publisher in this ocean of white world supremacy and not to allow white racism to alter or destroy my 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 memory spirit drive integrity world view convictions and values that are the result of 25 years work excruciating pain serious study and 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 organized struggle How old, are, how old are these kids? Uh, they're between 9 and, um, and 11. I tell you what, you want, you want to send me the song, Bite? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, the, the whole uh, file. Okay, great. This file is like, uh, it's 11 and a half hours, bro. Cool. It means you have a lot of, of research, a lot of stuff to get down into then. Yeah, and the, 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 uh, if it's stuff like this, mm -hmm. especially when I was uh, commuting back and forth to, uh, between Boston and I mean, uh, Massachusetts and New York uh, a few years ago, mm -hmm. because I used to do it on a daily basis, I mean, weekly basis, and stuff like this is what used to keep me company when I would be making that three and a half hour trip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing is, these are some of the things that, and and like I said, th this is going back into the like the mid 1990s, bro. Mm. Right, and it's a program that was that had been established like about maybe 20 plus years prior to that, right? And you know, the, the thing is, our youth are so gifted and talented, but because of the continued negative portrayal of our youth, especially in the media, too many of us see our youth as being destructive. Mm -hmm. If we don't respect and honor our young people, how do we expect other people to do likewise? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at, look, look at Steve Ban. Look at the transformation that's taken place with the youth in, in Sweet TNT and around the world. Just using that uh, as an example. One of the students at, at uh, STIC, right, Springfield Technical, Technical Community College, mm -hmm. where like I'm taking some courses. Last year, this young lady, I think she was about maybe 19 years old, is 
creating a patent for a watch that will tell you ahead of time if you are about to have a heart attack, a stroke, or any medical issue that could challenge your life. Mm-hmm. That she, she is with, she, she, well, up to last year, she was waiting for the patent to that bread. Could you imagine the Bill Gates and all of them who, who, who just waiting for that patent to be approved so they could probably go and offer Latch on to ten, it. Ten, like, like $10 a million. Dollars. <laughs> Say what? Latch on it like a tick. <laughs> and then claim it as theirs. <laughs> and make billions. Mm-hmm. I, I suppose this uh, particular young lady would have um, uh, proper advisors um, yes. around her, and because um, yes. this is not this is not the 1900s anymore, and no. um, uh, the people around her would be able to should be able to guide her in a proper ma- uh, manner, providing that they themselves are not as greedy as the same ticks that right. are coming. So you know right. that's the only way. Mm-hmm. Tick stick is providing her with all of the legal N- advice right. that she needs to get. Mm-hmm. Anyway, look, I'll take into my Yeah, so we are. Uh, don't forget to send me the song by Dove, and we are. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah? I'll, I'll, I'll do that in 10 seconds. All right, cool. Blessings, yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. When I was a little child, I prayed gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Hey, welcome to the Pomona Fam. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Stephen. How are you this morning? I am good. Mm-hmm. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, I would like to send out some birthday greetings. Mm-hmm. First to my niece, Crystal Corbett, who is celebrating today. Mm-hmm. She is 40 years old. Mm-hmm. And secondly, to Savi. Yes, Savi. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Many more yeah, man. Hey, thank you so much, Stephen. Okay, yeah, have a beautiful right. one. Yeah, man. Blessings on that. Yeah.
Uh, say everyone is a pleasant good morning. Hey, good morning, Scorcher. Mm-hmm. Hey, Grandpa, good morning. Hey, Katya and Kenny, good morning to you. Hey, June, good morning. Arnold, good morning to you. Hey, Fisher, good morning. Of course, I gotta say good morning to Ari Perro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole Black Heat Posse, the whole Black Heat crew. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, Bandra, good morning to you. Hey, San Fernando and Environs, good morning. Hey, Kawash, good morning to you. Hey, walk with the ninety point one of them. Good morning. Blessed Sunday morning to you, Mr. Tony. Hi, good morning. Blessings to you. I would like to send Sunday blessing to Mr. and Mrs. Philip mm-hmm. and the staff of work and their family. Mm-hmm. And um, to happy birthday to Sabi. Happy birthday to Merle and happy birthday to Stephen. He said didn't get her name. Mm-hmm. So this is in Northern Southern from Tacarigo, mm-hmm. sending love like dove to everybody locked on, mm-hmm. local, regional, and international. Ah, blessings. Blessed Sunday, blessed <laughs> Sunday, blessed Sunday. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, for this, my life. Ah, praises, Amen. praises, blessings. Love like dove. Love like dove. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, yeah. Hey, guys, I got to take a break, and then we dive back in, okay? Zion Community, in collaboration with the parishes of the Southern Vicariate, will host the annual Divine Mercy March and Celebration on Sunday, 7th April. This begins with a prayer walk from the Roman Catholic Church on our Harris Promenade at 11.45 a.m., moving along the streets of San Fernando and ending at Presentation College San Fernando. There, the program will run from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and includes praise and worship, adoration and benediction, intercession for our nation's families and church. All are invited to attend Mercy March, Sunday, 7th April. It's time to save the date. Because on Sunday, 14th April, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., Demi Melville Entertainment presents its much-anticipated children's show. Get ready to see many talented children sing, dance, act, and play instruments. The talent will be mind-blowing, so don't miss it on all WAC platforms. Facebook, YouTube, WAC Visual Radio, Sino Radio, TuneIn Radio, and WAC TV. And don't forget to donate. You certainly don't want to miss this on April 14th. So, save the date now. Dive into the rhythms of the Caribbean with an unforgettable getaway. Join us for Kaisoka in Panama Memorial Weekend, May 24th to the 27th, 2024, with an unforgettable getaway. Package includes round trip from JFK, New York, Miami, or Trinidad, airport transfers, and hassle-free travel. Four days, three nights, accommodation in Panama, and the Tourist Day Alba Hotel and Suites. The highlight, Saturday night, jump out and dance the night away with the chosen one, or optional, a tour of the Panama Canal, or city tour. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity on Sunday. It's Last Lap featuring Posa and Prince Unique. Enjoy fantastic music and make memories to last a lifetime. Book now for only 899 US dollars per person, double occupancy. Limited availability. Reserve your spot today. Give us a call 646 399 0000. Kaisoka in Panama. Memorial Weekend. The United States is consistently ranked among the best internationally for its competitiveness. Are you planning to start a new business or branch of your business in New York? Attend our Chamber Coalition's five-week webinar series, Small Business Sense Bootcamp. We provide education and business preparation for small business owners and startups. Learn the basics of business planning, how to finance your business, business credit, marketing, and social media strategies. Small Business Solutions. Legal. 
tax, accounting, banking, and insurance, and how to do business within New York City, New York State, and corporations. Register at startupsbootcamp.eventbrite.com. And of course, Bedrock uh, says it's all about sweet 16. Mm-hmm. Hey, the Lake uh, Asphalt Sports Club presents uh, Bedrock Sweet 16 in full bloom on Sunday 5th of May, mm-hmm. starting at 4 p.m. and going all the way up to 11 p.m. at the Scenic Lake Asphalt Administration Ground uh, in La Brea. La Brea, yes, get your limited edition uh, bloom tickets for only $1,000, yes, while stocks last. They are available at uh, Athletes uh, by the Park, um, Papi's Water Hold, San Fernando, Cheetah's Restaurant and Bar, and uh, Soka Island Restaurant and Bar Point 14, and also online at islandeticket.com. For more information, call 686-4101 or 292-0222. Yep. <laughs> When the time comes to honor and celebrate the life of your loved one, you can trust in the dedicated and compassionate staff at Clark & Batch Limited. With over 100 years of experience, we can tailor every detail that reflects your loved one's unique story. Whether you're considering traditional funeral services, cremation, or pre-planning for the future, we offer a range of options to meet your needs and preferences. We're here to provide the support and guidance you deserve. Contact Clark and Batu Limited, 652-3488 or 665-5266, or find us on Facebook and Instagram. We also do chapel rectals for all denominations, for the funeral services, or for the repast. Good morning, Toya. Good morning, Good morning, Andy How are you this beautiful morning? I'm good, thank God. Blessed, blessed. Thank mm-hmm. God to be in the land of the living. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not letting anything keep me down. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and thank God the voices come in day by day. Mm-hmm. It is getting a little better uh, day by day. Blessings. Um, God works in his in his own time, and mm-hmm. slow but sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And what a second morning to the world. International, local, everybody, all fan club members, everybody. And I want to send out birthday greetings to Savi, Merlin Wancho, and those who passed, Mrs. Esther and Charles, Mrs. Hazelwood, Patricia Hazelwood, and my son, Mr. Philip Jones, and anybody else who is celebrating for this month, I wish them all God's blessing, health and strength, and many more. You know, we have, you know, we have some coming up next week. Mm-hmm. You, you know that one? Mm-hmm. Yes, that yes, one, yeah, yes. that one, yeah, that one, yeah. Yes, that <laughs> one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can't do both about the month. Mm-hmm. The month. And the month. Hold on, I hear you. Yeah, the best month. Yes. Yeah, the best month. Yeah, yeah. I tell you. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> let, them, let them both. Let them both. <laughs> so, Tony D, you have a great day. Mm. We jump safety with God guidance. Mm. Lynette, how are you? Okay? Good morning. And I'll catch you up next week. Please, God, you'll be there. That's all. Uh, in a week. Mm-hmm. You'll be coming on in a week, not so? Sometime, mm-hmm. someday in a week. Mm-hmm. All right, good. Yes, thank you so much. So, yeah. All right, catch you then. Mm-hmm. We jump safely with God guidance. Yeah, thank you. Have a beautiful one, yeah? Yeah, okay. Bye. As I go along life's journey, I'm reaping better. I'm reaping better than a survey back with a 90.1 from Good Morning, Toya. Hi, right, greetings, Brother Bass. How are you this morning? 
well I'm here in the land of the living mm-hmm. thanking God for every moment mm-hmm. you know the mercy on me and I live up to this age yeah, mm-hmm. I, I do whatever that I, I divorce mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> apart mm-hmm. from God I divorce yes sir to live at this age mm-hmm. yeah and greetings to everyone in my life mm-hmm. that's a big care Mm-hmm. But I thought tell mm-hmm. and so much hundreds of people mm-hmm. who like better peace and thinking about better peace. Well, yeah, brother Tony, mm-hmm. what's going on? Well, everything, you know, everything is going on, good, bad, ugly, and indifferent. Well, it, is. it is what it is. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, it is what it is, huh? Mm-hmm. Right, brother Tony, I make a plan for the people for Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. If I made about a plan? Yeah, I actually get a plan, you know. Mm. It's simple, you know. It's war in a Babylon, a tribal war in a Babylon, mm. you know. Mm. It's nothing that can't... I, I want to call a call just on and do any attention to what's going on. Mm-hmm. Four killings already for this, for this last night. Mm-hmm. You know, he burning out everybody in the, the houses of the government. Uh, mm. You know, they put them in these houses. It was a plan and... I bow the head in like E.T. Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. to be careful. We have to, we have to make a plan. Mm-hmm. How we are to, what we are addressing that, Brother Tony. Mm-hmm. And it's people like me and you mm-hmm. concern and so on. It's just we have to learn how to pray. What do you think? We, we, I, I think, um, well, I'll deal with it afterwards. You go ahead. I'll deal with it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why I see, why, why I ask that question, you see, in this conversation, I define that decision is up to you. So that's mm-hmm. why I asked you, mm-hmm. what to do? How are we supposed, are we supposed to pray? Mm-hmm. We have to have reality. Mm-hmm. To fix it, what we have to do is we diagnose what causes it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have to stop doing some of some the things that we used to do. And mm-hmm. we have to check on ourselves. No one else should be more than us. Mm. What do you think? That's for sure. That is for sure. That is guaranteed on our part. Right on, mm-hmm. right on brother. Right I'm on. not pretty Yeah, man. The best, the best really, I don't mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, man. But, so you home, yeah, you, you home, you home this morning? Or you're heading out. Yes, yeah, now nah, I'm home this morning. All right. I'm cool. home this then my me arthritis and thing on it's in over. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you, man. Hey, you have, so have a nice one, bro. We'll we'll chat chat. Right, respect. Yeah, man, love you. I'm reaping better. Hey, welcome to the ninety point one FM. Good morning, Toya. Good morning, brother Tony. Hi, good morning. Well, I am calling to wish Stephen's niece mm-hmm. happy birthday. Mm-hmm. Savi in Cuba, happy birthday. Merle in Rancho, happy birthday. And I hope you live to see many, many more. Well, this is the fat man from Timor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I rocked all that. Listen, I ain't going to show this morning. But he gave me some trouble this morning. Anyway, okay? mm-hmm. So, I had to take in you and then take in a... Um, what do you name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to take in a uh, listening, uh, listening praise on the radio this morning. Nice. Yeah. Blessings on that. Yeah. yeah. And to so all the Arconians, I hope they have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful Sunday. So happy Sunday to you, Brother Tony. Mm-hmm. Happy Sunday to you. Ah, blessing. You have a beautiful one. Arconians. Thank you so much. You have a beautiful one today, would you? Okay, then. Mm-hmm. Thank you. you know, right hey, I want to say good morning. Good morning to our... Uh, uh, going through some rough times in your life. Good morning to Yvonne. Uh, good morning, Veronica. Hey, Joe Bruce. Good morning to you. Hey, Gloria. Good morning. Karen, good morning. Upon your family. You must hey, Walk with the 91 FM, good morning to you. Good morning to you, the fuck to the double X. Mm. <laughs> the flex. Hey, what's up? What's going on with you, my brother? 
Hi, cool, brother. I want to say blessed morning to Demi. Mm -hmm. And blessed morning to Foxy and family. Mm -hmm. And all those who locked on, finally, all the Waconians. Have a blessed day, have a safe week. Mm -hmm. And all those celebrating anniversaries and birthday, may they see many, many, many more. Mm -hmm. And be safe. Love yourself. And be nice. It's nice to be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Fuck you stay as nice as you. all the people investing in blessings to everybody. Yes, man. Love blessings. Family. Yes, man. Blessings so much. Have yes, my brother. Yeah, man. So tell me, what can conquer you? What can conquer you? I mean, we cannot go on um, saying the same things. Uh, doing the same things and expecting a different results. Can we now? But it's something we get used to as a nation and as a people. No, I am not saying that press does not work because it does. But uh, your creator who created you and who made you a little, just a tiny, a tiny bit lower than the angels gave you the power the might, the authority to create, to change, to build up and or destroy. He give you the power for you to be happy. The power for you to be sad is a choice that you have to make. And all we do is sit by every single day and we complain and complain and complain, right? About what is the authorities doing? Why are they so not doing the things that they need to do? Let me ask you a question this morning. What are you doing? No, seriously, seriously. No, 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 seriously. Um, it's not about... Um, uh, what your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your friends, your enemies, your neighbors, your government, your preachers, your teachers, your imam, your bishop, your pundits. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing? Are you doing anything whatsoever to change the narratives or you are just uh, con going to continue complaining? If uh, your neighborhood, your authority in your neighborhood is not doing the things uh, that it needs to do, then we as a people must get up and do it ourselves. In certain part of your very scripture that you read and you claim that so you read daily, I hope it is daily, excuse me, um, says that God drove out, drove out the enemy little by little. It's not that he couldn't do it all at once, but he was fearful or careful that if he did it all at once, it was going to leave a void. It would have left an opening that you were not yet ready and or prepared to fill. The nation of Trinidad and Tobago belongs to you. And let's, let's talk about the whole crime situation for just a minute. Crime is big business. The destabilization of Trinidad and Tobago is big business. Not only for some in Trinidad and Tobago, but also from an international perspective. There are many agencies in Trinidad and Tobago. Many, 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 many agencies. British has their agency in Trinidad and Tobago. The Americas has their agencies in Trinidad and Tobago. The French has their agencies. The German has their agency. The Russians have theirs. The Chinese have theirs. 
There were so many people in Trinidad and Tobago that had been behind the scenes providing information to the local authorities about things that is going on in Trinidad and Tobago and they have made recommendations as to how we could go about solving those problems. Do you remember one particular Prime Minister in the past saying that I, I know who Mr. Big is? Well, everybody in that circle knew who Mr. Big is, was, and still are today. It's not about who you know in some cases, and it's about who you know in most cases. But let's put them aside and, and what they do and how they do. If the nation of Trinidad and Tobago was a fighting nation, if Trinidad and Tobago and the citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago would get up their lazy butts and protest, and I don't mean having one little church service match down the street uh, this week, and six months later, you have another one coming up. I mean shut it down completely. Shut it down, but you're worried about um, you you're worried about losing a dollar, and in your worry about losing one dollar today, you don't recognize that you're going to be losing millions later on. It is nobody' problem but our problem. We created the problems ourselves, so therefore we are going to have to serve them. God is not going to do for you. I'm, I am fed up of telling you this day in and day out God is not going to do for you what you can do for yourself that's why he gave you the power that's why he gave you the authority that's why he gave you dominion he only steps in to fight for you in that which you yourself cannot handle and he had said it to you over and over and over and over again so if over the weekend, we had so many murders. Let me ask you something. How many protests are we having this morning? How many chaos are we in Trinidad and Tobago created, right, to say we're not taking this anymore? We are done with this nonsense. How many? No, everybody going to church as normal because the church is supposed to solve your problem for you. It does not, it will not solve your problems for you. You are just chickening out every single time because you don't want to be responsible. So you cast all your responsibility on others. Some people make silly remarks as I voted for the government to, to ha No, 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 you did not do vote for the government to handle that. Unless you had been misinformed. Crime could not be and only be a governmental problem. Crime is a citizenry problem. And I told you, it's all about altars that are being uh, 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 erected and are being activated. So if that particular area had that happened in the past, which you did not know, because you probably don't have any kind of information or history about it. The second one murder take place in that particular community, it reunited those altars all over again. You see, because what is done in secret must be revealed, but only for those who are looking on and paying attention and who has uh, that particular knowledge and understanding about these things can serve or help serve these things. So you're going to dress up this morning and you're going to church. Good riddance for you. Did you get up this morning and ring down the phone of your minister or ministers uh, that are supposedly representing you? Did you get up this morning and go call the pastor and say, Pastor, he was happening now. You see this morning? X and so and so happening. 
I know probably you have your own sermon and stuff planned for this morning, but this morning, I want you to bring the church service outside in the road. I want you to start, I want you to start creating problems for them. Let them understand that this is not going to continue the way that it's continuing. But no, you're not going to do that. Because it's not your problem. Only when you hear it reach in your house, it becomes a problem for you. Have you not often heard it being said that if your neighbor's house is on fire, start throwing water on yours? Everything that's happening in Trinidad and Tobago is we are the citizens who are constantly allowing it to happen. Because you see, the bad boys, the rude boys, your son, your grandson, your nephew, your nieces, your cousins, they have put the fear of Satan in you. If you talk, I'll go shoot you, you know. I know you see me, you know, but um, hey, grandma, look so on to, and grandma going and work hocus pocus to make sure grandson in lock up. Because I love my grandson, you know. You know, I love my son, you know. So grandma worked a hocus pocus and erected a new set of altars that will continue for generations to come. So it doesn't matter how much arrests that young man have gotten, he has no convictions whatsoever. So he comes out, goes in, he comes out, he's going in, he comes out, he's going in. And every time he goes in, he comes out, he goes in, he comes out with new information as to how to be more destructive. Don't blame anybody for the problems that we are having. And the, 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 one of the things is that we, don't, we, we are afraid of the truth. The truth hurts us to the core. Well, I don't really, if it hurts, you know, because while truth is hurting you, your murderous children are hurting us. Your silence is hurting us. Your evil doing is hurting us as a nation and as a people. So pick up your phone, call your politician, call your counselor, call your imam, your priest, your bishop, your pundit, call your deacon, call your prophets, and let them know I ain't putting back one foot in this worship center or calling a church. Not it all because you all are placed there, you all are supposed to be the guiding light to society. You all are supposed to be the one that calms the storms in the community. You all are supposed to be the one that brings answers to problems. And if that is not happening, then you're not doing the job that you are supposed to be doing. And you are part of the problem, not the solution. Hey, I see my phone lines going on. Let me take a call and then we cross over the faith center, shall we? Hey, walk away to 90.1 FM. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you very much. Because um, in my church, I afraid to say, I say I am getting a, a young preacher. I say I'm not getting the food that I deserve in my church. You know where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The vex the, the people go and tell him different, and he he like he vexes at me. <laughs> I go on for food. I not go on for nonsense to talk here. I go on for the food. Mm -hmm. I want good preaching, mm -hmm. and what you saying there is real truth, right? Thank you. Ah, uh, you have a beautiful one. Trinidad and Tobago has a history of not fighting for anything. We have never fought for independence. We never fought to become a republic. We had two kind of jokey kind of coups. So we don't really understand and really know the need, the value of life. So we argue about something or we are concerned about something for today because it happened today. It's fresh on the lips of everyone. 
And two days later, you forget about it and go on about your merry business as normal. And to you, that's natural. It's not natural. So start writing your politicians. Start petitioning your government and everybody else to do something. Or else it's simply just going to continue the way that it is. And only you and you alone are going to feel that heat. Hey, welcome to the 90.1 one from Good Morning. Good morning, Brother Tony. Hi, morning. Thanks for talking the truth. Thank you for talking the truth. Who vex Lord? You understand me? Mm. So, you just continue doing what you're doing. Who vex Lord? But that is exactly what has happened. Let us hide them under the, the frock, mm. the dress. I them under the bed, and they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, man. Thank so you, you so have much. A, you're welcome. You have a pleasant good evening. Good morning. Mm -hmm. And good morning to the whole of South Trinidad. Blessings, bro. Okay. You may be going through some rough times in your life. But I'm here to encourage you today not to give up. I pronounce a blessing upon your life, upon your family. You must prosper and be in good health in the name of Jesus. I believe it on my heart. So Lord, help me not to grumble and complain of the tough roads I am on. From my saucer, cause my cup has overflowed. And if I should go on living, if I should go on living, should the way get steep and rough, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord. May I ask for no other blessing, Jesus. Cause I'm already blessing up May I never be too busy I won't be too busy, too busy To help a brother very slow I'm drinking from my saucer Thank you. Drinking from my saucer because my cup my cup of overflowing. No, as, as, as beautiful as this soundtrack uh, sounds, and it is a very beautiful soundtrack. Oh, I said I would give you the original uh, words for that particular soundtrack, and I may do it um, sometime. Uh, he didn't mention whether uh, the source that he's drinking from was good, bad, and or indifferent. Not all tea is tea. Not all coffee is coffee, not all soup is soup or porridge is whatever. And sometimes it depends on the person who is making that particular thing. Are they making it with a good heart? Are they kind and loving? Or are they evil to the core? So your soul is like just maybe, your cup just maybe overflowing with wickedness just as well. So careful. Hey, good morning, Trinidad. Good morning, Tobago. Let's go over to the Faith Center, shall we? If I should go living, should the way get steep and rough, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord. May I ask for no other... Join Faith Center's worship service on Prince of Wales Street in San Fernando every Sunday morning at 8.30 and aired live on WAC 90.1. We can face tomorrow, Lord. We have come with our children. We have come with our babies in arms. We have come even with the unborn baby in the womb. 
we have come as a father, mother, grandparents, great grandparents before you. Oh God, you said, come unto me, all you that labor and a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn, learn of me. For a meek and lowly apart, oh God. We thank you that you are touched with the feelings of our infirmity. We thank you that you, Lord, you care for us, Lord. You will provide, you are our provider, you are our strength, Lord. You are a peace, you are the that passes all understanding, which will keep our hearts and minds stayed in you. We speak the name of Jesus over every family over every child, Lord. Lord, our seed is blessed because, Lord, you said it. We declare and declare that our seed is blessed. We are blessed going out, blessed coming in, blessing the city, blessing the field, Lord. The things that we put our hands to do, God, we are blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your grace, which is sufficient, and your strength, which is made perfect in weakness, oh God. We cleanse our this morning wash us with his of that we shall be whiter than snow oh God cleanse us from all six secret sins oh God the sin of omission the sin of disobedience you said if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn oh God turn from our wicked ways Lord we have wicked ways in us and repent we stand before an awesome God today, the God of Isaac, Jacob, oh God, Abraham, we are the seed of Abraham, oh God, we bow down before you this morning, Lord, heal our land, our land is in trouble, our home is in trouble, oh God, our land is our home, oh God, we pray for every family, we pray for the needs of your people, oh God. God, Lord, you are our provider. There is nothing impossible with you. Lord, you see that you said to Abraham, I've seen the tears of my people. I've seen their suffering and I've come down to deliver them. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, that they will worship me. We are made to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jehovah Jireh is our provider. Jehovah Nisi is our shield, our buckler, our defense. Lord, everything that you said to Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you as God Almighty, but you will know me as Jehovah. My name is Jehovah. So whatsoever you need me to be, I will be to you. Only trust me. Only look to me. Only turn not away from me. For I am your God. I am a faithful God. I am a delivering God. I am a healing God. A God who will stand before you. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up in judgment, we condemn it. In the name of Jesus, we cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We bring into subjection to the obedience of Christ. You said if any man loved me, he would obey me and my father will love him and they will make a bold in us what power we have to live this victorious life the power of the father the power of the son the power of the holy ghost holy ghost fire breathe upon the church we are your people crying out to you lord we ask lord pour out your strength pour out your wisdom Lord, your ability in the name of Jesus, what the locust and the conqueror of my season, you will restore. You will give us double for our trouble in the name of Jesus. We cast down everything, every wicked plan of Satan to weaken your people. We break every chain, every bondage, every slavery to sin. We will be sin of oppression, every spirit of depression, everything that binds your people. We loosen them this morning. 
They are the head and not the tail. They will be the lenders and not the borrowers. Above only and not beneath. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over every issue. Everything coming against the church of Jesus. We march into the territory of Satan. And we take back our children. We take back our families. We take back our faith. Faith in God will move a mighty mountain. Faith in God can calm the troubled sea. He can make a desert like a fountain. In the name of Jesus, rise up and be healed. Rise up and be whole. Rise up and be strong. We are more than conquerors who are in love us. We are not defeated. We serve a God mighty to save.
answer us if we run to him he will run to us if we lift our hands he will lift us up come now praise his name all you saints of god come on sing for joy sing for joy to god our sing for joy believe it sing it again if we call to him if we call to him he will answer us if we run to him he will run to us if we lift our hands he will lift us up come now praise his name all these saints of god draw near draw near to him he is here with us, give him your love, he's in love with us, he will heal our hearts, he will cleanse our hands, if we rend our hearts, he will heal our hands. Lift your hands and sing, oh sing for joy to God, he is your joy, he is your strength, sing. Joy, sing for joy to God. Come on, sing for joy, sing, sing for joy to God. One more time, let him strengthen you. Sing, sing for joy to God. Our strength, we thank you, Lord. Sing for joy.
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, you could have chosen another wretched sinner. Lord but Lord, you touch our hearts this yes, morning. Yes, you touch my life this morning. Lord, I am forever grateful. I am forever thankful. Lord, I lift my voice with your people today to say thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making me your child. Thank you for giving me your salvation as a gift. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you paid the ultimate price for me. You paid the ultimate price for my soul. Lord, I am grateful this morning. I am thankful this morning that you have loved me with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice, church, and you express your thanks to him. While we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Communion servers, please, please prepare to serve God's people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your voice, please, and just give him thanks while the communion servers are preparing themselves. What a op beautiful opportunity just to keep giving thanks. Keep lifting your voice to thank him for his mercy and his grace. For touching your life. For redeeming us from destruction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you a million times over. Lord, we are so grateful. I hear my blessed Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus paid it all. Go ahead, Silvers.
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Cover yourself with that blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless you this morning. We bless you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's right, Jake. Bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and peel the first layer of your emblem. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we take your healing now into every life. We take wholeness in our bodies. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord, that is what we celebrate this morning that by his stripes we are healed Lord we take it into every life every sickness, every disease we curse it today in the name of Jesus that we stand on your word Lord Jesus that we are healed that we are delivered, we are set free from every sickness every pain your people are experiencing now not only physically but emotionally and mentally Lord, we thank you that there is a balm in Gilead. Yes. We thank you that there is a way of escape from all of our sicknesses. And Lord, we celebrate today. We celebrate the goodness of God. The healing power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With confidence, eat ye all of it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. second layer thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Lord we are washed by your blood this is just to remind us of the great price that was paid for our cleansing. Thank you for the blood. Everybody thank say you. thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. 
Thank you for the blood that Thank washes you, away Jesus. all of my sin and yes. guilt and shame, yes. even down to my conscience. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. This is a better covenant that we can yes, enjoy Lord. today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Drink ye all of it in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Mm -hmm, my soul. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation. So church and we, we want to read uh, God's word from the book of Galatians chapter 6 the first 10 verses I'll give you a couple seconds to get there while you're doing that the Lord Jesus wrote seven letters sent seven messages to the seven churches the Apostle Paul also wrote seven letters to seven major churches, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and number seven, Thessalonians. But we're going to read today the letter to the church of Galatia, chapter six, and reading from verse one, and we read responsively, meaning I read the first, and you read the second, and so on. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Your turn. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And all of us on verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And all the people said, Amen. God bless you.
Halleluja.
mightily bow your heads as we pray. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you this morning, Lord, for your loving kindness and your mercies towards us, Lord. Lord, your mercies upon this church and this people, Father, Lord. We thank you for calling us. We thank you for choosing us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for putting your glory upon our lives and in our lives and upon this church, Father, Lord. Lord, we want to do nothing else but to please you and to honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. We want that when you look down upon Faith Center, Lord, you see a people who love you and who are willing and obedient, Father, Lord. A people, oh God, who are not willing to be, Lord, inflexible, Lord Jesus. The people who want to serve you. Lord, our presence in the house this morning, Lord, when you look down from heaven this morning, the presence of a peep, your people in this house this morning is evidence, of oh God, of our love for you, Lord, and our, and our passion for you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for saving. Thank you for adding to this church, Lord Jesus. Thank you for blessing this church, Lord. Thank you for blessing our forgiving us leaders, forgiving us pastors after your own heart, Lord. From the beginning of this ministry, you have given us, oh God, pastors after your own heart, Lord. Lord, and that is something we want to thank you for. Lord, you have seen growth and expansion, Lord. And Lord, you are not done with this church. You are, Lord, our minds, oh God, cannot begin to fathom, Lord, all that you have in store for Faith Center. Lord, I pray that everyone will join, Lord. Everyone, everyone who is part of this ministry, no one will feel that they are not part of it, Lord Jesus. We pray that everyone will jump in, Lord. That everyone will feel the stirring and sense the stirring of the Holy Spirit. Everyone will sense, oh God, the new season that we are in as well, Father, Lord. And, and, and Lord, that they will want to be a part of it, Lord Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you will make us more spiritual. We pray that, oh God, that you will help us to cleanse ourselves from any kind of carnality, Lord. As we draw closer to you, Lord, cleanse this church, Lord. Make us all that you want us to be, Lord. Put your, continue to put your word, Lord, and your instruction, oh God, in the heart and in the mind and in the mouth of our pastor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you will give your people, not itching ears to hear all kinds of things, but give your people ears to hear what you are saying, Holy Spirit. Lord, we don't want to hear this one say and that one say. We want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to this church, Lord. So, Lord, bless Faith Center. Lord, may it please you, Lord, to walk amongst us, Lord. May it please the Lord to pour out his Spirit. May it please you to pour out your anointing and your power in this church, Lord. Lord, may it please you to add to this church daily, Lord. Hallelujah. Because, Lord, we have a church, Lord, who love you and love your word and love prayer and love what you want us to do Lord Jesus so Lord continue to bless this church continue to lead us and give us direction in all that we do Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen and Amen and Thank you very much Reverend Kevin Amen Ushers if you'll come at this time please and, and while they are coming I would like for you to turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 13 when Jesus shed his blood for us, it was to redeem our soul. But he gave instructions in the Old Testament how he wants to redeem our money, our living, our livelihood. And so Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that the Old Testament, which we are reading this morning before we redeem our money, basically. The Old Testament is given to us as an example and as instruction. So the Old Testament is just as relevant, just as important as the New Testament. And then in the book of uh, Romans, Paul writes to the church and he says to the church, because we could sometimes feel, well, you know, the book of the Old Testament is written to the, to the Jews, and they were written to the, to the people who were before Jesus. Well, Paul says in the book of Romans that you and I have been grafted in as the Jews. And so every promise that has been given to them is for us, and every condition that God has given to them is for us to meet for the promise. 
And so in the book of Exodus, they are now coming out of slavery. And so God says, man, I want to help you to become independently, financially independent. Because you're coming out of slavery. And I want to show you how to be blessed. And so he, I'm just going to read two verses out of it to prepare you, to help you to understand the importance of paying your tithe to the Lord this morning. It's more than payment. It's a redemption of your money. Look at it. Reading from chapter 13, from verse 11. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, into your promised land, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and give it to thee. So you have it in your hand. It's there. I have given it to you. Thou, that thou shalt, what? Set apart. That's your offering. That's your tithe this morning. You've taken it and you've put it apart onto, onto the bills. No, onto the Lord. It's the Lord's. This is a principle that God is teaching his people so he could bless them. And you're going to read about donkey and lamb and you're going to say, well, how that connects to me. It does apply to you. Because back in that day, they used donkey and lamb for trade. Today, you and I use fiat, cash money. And the Lord says, thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the womb or the matrix and every firstling that comes of a beast which you have every bit of income you get the first part of it belongs to the lord the male shall be the lord he's specific the male shall be the lord and verse 13 Every first thing of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. Why would he say that? Because the donkey is considered an unclean animal. He's really talking about Jesus here, the lamb of God. And so Moses being instructed by God says, you can't present the donkey, the, the donkey to God because God considers the donkey an unclean animal. So you're going to have to take the donkey and you will trade it for a lamb and you'll present the lamb as your offering. Do you understand? All right, beautiful. And if thou will not redeem, if you're not going to pay God, what is the firstling? What's the next part of the verse? Then thou shalt break his neck. In other words, you're getting a choice. You either allow that first part to go to God and let the rest of it be blessed or we take the whole thing, we break the neck. No use. The donkey was a form of livelihood. The donkey was a, a burden of a beast of burden. The donkey helped them to be able to do what they had to do in the field. And so he says, if you're not going to pay the tithe, Break the neck of the donkey. The rest of it is already cursed. It will be swallowed up in some kind of expense. Washing machine gone bad. You can't have to fix. You get sick. You have to go it's a simple principle that God put down to bless his people. Set apart what this is. The firstling. And he will, what's the last part of the verse? And all the firstborn of man among thy children shall thou redeem. Redeeming your income. God wants to bless it and this is how he does it. And God bless you richly for being obedient to his word. Why don't you hold your offering in your hand? Hold your tithe and say thank you Jesus. Lord thank you that the other 90% is blessed. Thank you that the other 90% is going to cover bills. Is going to help us save the other 90%, you are going to breathe on it. Father, the enemy will not uh, devour it. In sickness, in bills, unexpected bills, in unexpected expenses, 
Lord, we follow your word today. We bring our first thing to you. We set it apart and we present it to you. You are well able to take care of your people in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you richly. Bye. 
thank you very, very much, singers, and thank you so much, ministers, for being here, for your support, and to everybody who makes the ministry, I don't think a Sunday should go by without me thanking you for your contribution during the week. It's so important that we remember that this is not a one-man show, it's not even a, a staff operation, it, re it really is a lot of beautiful there's a lot of work behind the scenes, and um, we are so grateful to God for the ushers, for the intercessors, for the technicians, for the Sunday school teachers, everybody who works in the ministry. God bless you richly. We are closing off our third evening of prayer, and uh, we had a wonderful time Friday night with Reverend Russell, learning that God is doing something new, a different structure in the ministry. And uh, everybody has to understand that it's going to cause us to be a little bit uncomfortable. It's going to stretch us a little bit, but it's going to be refreshing because the man of God has spoken it into the ministry that from March, we will not be the same. And so we look forward to seeing what God will be doing. And then last night, Reverend Speaker spoke on 17 great points out of that 10-day prayer meeting in the book of Acts and how that changed the whole world. Wonderful time, and this evening we come together again to pray and to spend some time with God. I want to just make a little quick announcement. We have been promoting the, the new service starting in May. It will start in June now. There are some things that I would like for us to put in place, and our time is of the essence. It's amazing how time flies. And so you have to really put your things in order once in advance for it to be successful and so I think we will be starting in the in the month of, of June for that with that new Saturday evening service and then uh, we have several things going on the ladies are having a, a like a 12 month birthday party and that should be fun for all the ladies and the men are going out on Wednesday to, to have a time of cricket and fun this week this this coming Wednesday I want to encourage everybody Get plugged into the church. Get plugged into the life of the church and bring somebody along with you. That's so important that we keep the evangelism cutting edge of the ministry. And so what people wouldn't come to on a Sunday morning, they would definitely come to the line, to the birthday party. And uh, the, the leaders know that we have to give an opportunity for people to, one, hear the gospel, two, understand the gospel, and have a chance to receive Jesus Christ as their savior. So everything we do, whether it's weeks or house meetings, um, that's, that's our objective. Our prayers go out this morning to the family of Sister Mary Shim. Sister Mary was well, served in Sunday school for decades. And um, her kids grew up in church with most of you, Jaron, and, and uh, he's a son, and the, the, the other two daughters. Our prayers are with them. They are hoping that the funeral could be on Thursday afternoon at 2.30 here uh, with, the host, with the holiday on Wednesday. Things had to be uh, adjusted. But if you do know the family, by all means, I trust that you would be a, a support to them. Let's turn into God's word, please. Matthew chapter 13. And we are going to read together. Matthew chapter 13. I'm glad to hear that the Bibles are going from the, from the bookstore. That is so good to hear. People are buying, purchasing, investing in your Bible for church. That's what we want. Build that relationship with your Bible. Matthew chapter 13, going down to verse 24. Let me invite you to read with me, please. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, <coughs> then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then has the tears? 
he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tears, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. We are going down to verse 34. Let's read. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitudes in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tears in the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Jesus often referred to himself as the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tears are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear let him hear father we thank you this morning for your word parables are given for us to understand the spirit realm, the things of the kingdom of God. Lord, we cannot understand them in our own limitation with our flesh. We cannot understand them with our experience, with our upbringing, with our brains. Lord, by your spirit, we pray today that you will open our eyes and open our hearts to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Jesus could have spoken and preached and reached the masses anyhow he wanted he could have used any medium he wanted um, for example he could have used drama when you look back at Shakespeare Shakespeare was pretty um, successful in impacting the world with drama or he could have used poetry and song like David <laughs> David used it and he impacted not only his time but generations to come but God gave Jesus a particular personality, just like he gave you your personality. And Jesus used his personality and the way he was comfortable to share the message was through parables. God gave him that personality. And so he, his style was giving these parables and he was the best at it. People enjoyed his parables. Even though many a times they didn't quite understand the deep meaning of it. Even on the surface, they were able to connect with it. Because he would use everyday experiences, everyday things that they could, they could, um, they, they could be familiar, they were familiar with. And they could connect with. And not only that, Jesus had this special quality. Two things. One he liked to give people time and he showed compassion on people. And that's important as we as a church are into evangelism and caring for people. I want to encourage you to be a little bit more comfortable with your personality. Be like Jesus. Don't think that you have to put on 
some kind of religious, whatever they call that, so that you could share the gospel. Eloquence is nice and flair is nice, but it wasn't Jesus' style. And if it's not your style, don't feel like you have to be like the Apostle Paul. He was very intelligent, or like Isaiah. He was a very intelligent man, and the writings were, hmm. But Jesus came down to earth. He was down to earth with people, and he shared his message of faith in God, and he shared them shared with them in compassion and I think everybody here could do that just using what you have who you are to impact your world and like I said Jesus used his time to spend with people I think in this busy age anybody who gives anybody time they are going to appreciate that because everybody is busy Parents are busy, they can't spend time with the children. Um, spouses are busy, they can't spend quality time together. And so anybody you could show any kind of time or spend time with, I think they would appreciate that so much so that they will be paid with accepting an invitation to come to your church. Not only that, but Jesus was a person of compassion. A lot of hurting people today. And all they want is an air, you know. You know that. You and I are hurting. You and I would like somebody to give us an air and not judge us. And not to make any assumptions about us. And just try to, to hear us out. That's how Jesus was. And because of that, he gave time and he gave compassion. They flocked to him. And so... People will accept your invitation to church if you give them that kind of time. And I'll tell you that it's important that you bring them to church. This is the place that God is going to give them conviction. This is the place God is going to renew them. This is the place God is going to give them miracles. Those things could happen, but very unlikely, my dear friends, what they get here in church, they can get it in a casual conversation on the phone or at their business place or at the house. There is an anointing in here. And once they are able to come into the anointing, they are going to experience something a lot more than what you just tell them about and so being in the house of the Lord well our lesson today is is the parable that we read and the people really didn't understand the parable and that's why they went to Jesus after and they said Jesus we needed to explain this to us and what Jesus was really talking about was living in the last days Living in this time. So it really wasn't very applicable to them at that time. It is really applicable to us. And the book of Matthew chapter 24 is where Jesus talks about the end of the world. What will happen. And he says in the end of the world there is going to be increase in famine, in earthquake, in pestilence, in wars. But he also said in Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 9, he says... Be very careful because people are going to treat you, the church, differently. Can you put it up there, please, Kevin? Look, look at those words that are highlighted on the screen. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And you will see the word and hated. And many will be offended that's verse 10 the word offended there means backslide not no feelings got hurt it's worse than that it's i walked away from myself and 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 and, and jesus is telling his disciples this is what will happen to you in the last days men are going to start to afflict you and to hate you Many people are going to be backsliding. You're going to be betrayed. You're going to be hated by one another. 
And the rest of the verses tells us how the devil is going to plant people in our lives. And be very careful. And they're going to cause you to want to be backslidden. They want to cause you to feel betrayed. They're going to want to pull you down because, <clears throat> excuse me, because of backbiting, because of hatred. That is the devil's last ditch. To steal your soul and to frustrate you and to make you walk out those doors. Understand what Jesus is saying. And that is why he gave the parable of the wheat and the tears. Because the devil is out to discourage you. The devil is out to make you offended. The devil is out. He's put people in your life. I am sorry to tell you that, but I think you already know that. And the Bible, and, and the parable starts off with... The kingdom of God, very important. The kingdom of God. Don't let your earthly experience try to figure out this parable. Because my earthly experience on this parable will make this parable very irrelevant and will keep me going around in circles. So that's why we prayed before I, I, I started speaking. Because if the Holy Spirit doesn't help us to understand what he's saying here, we could interpret this in so many different ways. The devil will make us feel bad. The devil will make us feel, oh boy, I probably, uh, I'm probably a kid. I need to be, no, this is about the church. This is about the last days. This is about the world. You know, uh, so Jesus is telling them the kingdom of God is like this. And then he is using what the people are very accustomed to, which is an agro economy. The agro economy and so farming was easy for them to understand and back in the day there were a lot of farmers competition was stiff and the way we would we would try to get the upper hand on our competition is when he went to sow seed his wheat we would look for an opportunity at night to go and sow something called darnell seed Daniel seed, or they call it bastard wheat, among his wheat, trying to sabotage his crop. It was so bad that the Romans made it against the law to sabotage a neighbor's field. So when Jesus started speaking, everybody knew what he was talking about. It was a big problem. And so go to verse 25 with me. I wouldn't go over the, the obvious explanation that Jesus put. The Lord will help us to learn some other things out of it. Um, but I wanted to pay close attention to verse 25. Verse 25 says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. And what happened? He go on his way. <laughs> oh boy, it's not like the devil. That is a good devil strategy there. Drop some out of sync, some out of timing, some out of Jesus, out of hell people in your life. You don't know where they come from. You don't know how they end up close to you, close to your family, close to your children at school or at university. But the devil comes and he drops some, some, some tears. And the majority of them well, some of them, let's start with some of them. You could make them out a mile away. And so you tell your children or you tell yourself, you know what, I, I'm a brother, take them. Oh, I ain't feeling them. We're not, we're not compatible. But the majority of them, trust me, they come skinning and grinning. And they're coming closer and closer to your marriage and to your children and to your business and to your ministry. So, and he's gone. See, I can leave that. All you fight up with that. And you and I cannot afford to do what the first part of the verse says. We can't afford to fall asleep. We can't afford to be very um, accepting and very open and allow ourselves 
We can't allow ourselves to just give in to everybody who comes our way, who comes to befriend us, who comes to be nice to us. No. 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 The enemy will come when he sees you drop your guard, when you see family devotions is no more, when he sees your prayer life has dipped, when he sees that you're not being faithful, when you're not being diligent and sober with your weakness. And he gone. So I want to encourage you this morning. Be very careful. Single people. Single people. Choose your company with godly wisdom. Because they are around. The devil has planted those people in your life. That's the reality. Be very discerning of the times in which you live. Be very careful with the standards that they want you to compromise with. Parents. Church leaders, church teachers, we ought to be a lot more discerning of the people that come close to us. I sat this, this past week with one of the, the, the trustees of the church and she reminded me of that. She said, be very careful of who comes around you because not everybody coming around you is there to lift you up or to push you forward. Well, it's for me as for you. Not everybody in your life, the Bible teaches us in this parable that the devil will plant wicked people, tears in your life. And so the book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 1, hear what John tells the church. He says, the, he says to the church, Beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirits be discerning are you of god do you have a relationship with jesus are we unequally yoked are we compatible is jesus the center of your life discern the spirits because many false prophets have gone into the world many false philosophies have gone into the world Many false teachings have gone into the world. And then he says, go down to verse 4, John writes to the church and he says, Now you are of God, or you are of God, little children, and you have overcome the world. You have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have to live like that. You have to depend on that greater power inside of you. That is called the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't properly discern the people around me with my own understanding. And so Jesus is speaking to the disciples about their relationship or about the relationship with the church and the world. The relationship between the wheat and the tears. And notice what Jesus says. Jesus says to them, um, yes, there are these two opposing operatives in the world. And I am going to leave them. And the worker said, what? You're going to leave them? You're going to leave us to live with people who are wicked? You're going to leave us to live with people who don't care about God and who will persecute God and who will come against us? And Jesus said, let them be. Let them be. Hmm. God is not eager to get rid of your enemies. Like you think he is. I wish it were that way. I prayed some prayers on some people and I still waiting for something to happen. <laughs> what will be funny is if I go before them. <laughs> it is what it is. But how many of us have said, Lord, take that person out of your life. That I, I trouble. And God said, Jesus said to the disciples, no, I would not remove the tears from among the wheat. 
And as wicked as they are, or are no good to God, and no good to man as they are, you're going to be stuck with them, and you're going to have to learn how to manage in this environment, and you're going to have to learn how to depend on God's peace, and God's grace, and God's strength, and God's joy to take you to the end. But I am not going to remove them from your life. The tears and the wheat. And that's where we are. People in the office, people in your neighborhood, people in the work, the competitors in business. Less like there's a garden bed. Maybe in your own bedroom bed, there's tears and wheat. And you pray to get out of that somehow. And it's just not happening. Because God knows best. And for my sake, he is not going to allow me to live without the tears. You know, back in the 80s, uh, when they discovered AIDS, the whole Christian fraternity uh, began to say, Wow, Jesus, yes, this is the end of the gay movement. The AIDS go kill everybody, all the homos are dead. Well, 35 years later, the LGBTQ community is very vibrant, very determined. Isn't that right? So if it's one time you thought, God ought to answer that prayer. He said, no, I leave me the tears right there for you. As I look at, the, at what is happening across there in Israel, if Israel really think they could get rid of the Hamas, And drive them off of the planet. That's what he said. We want to make sure that they don't um, hurt the rest of the world. Well, then they read this, this, this parable. Jesus ain't taking away no Hamas. Might be killed some of them, most of them. But the philosophy, the hatred is still there. In the hearts of people. And so, for our sakes, God will not remove the tears but thank God this morning that he promises to be a shield. He promises to be a buckler. He promises that he will defend us. He promises that he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And even though he will not take away those tears, thank God that he promised that his grace is sufficient for what I go through. And I learned to accept that. And I learned to move on. And I learned to fill my life with the Spirit of God. Because there is a guarantee of victory at the end of this life for me. There is a guarantee of victory at the end of this life. I gonna, you have to keep your joy. Church, you have to keep your peace. You have to keep your faith. Because when you are in Jesus Christ, you are watching a replay of a fight that you have already won. You understand me? You are not in the fight, you know. You're feeling like in the fight because it's virtual reality. But according to God's word, when you are in Jesus Christ, you could look at your life saying, I have already won. I am a victor in Jesus Christ. I have been, been made more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And I am not going to get all break up and all, all, all discouraged and all frustrated as if I don't know the end. The end is God redeems his own. God has left the tears with the reed for a reason and as we read in the passage, the time is going to come when he, he, not the church, not the pastor, not the church leaders, but he himself will separate the unrighteous from the righteous. David had to check himself, you know. We like David, reading David, because David had to check himself. He was faced on every side. You name it, with, with backstabbers and with wicked people, people who provoked him, provoked his family. And, and, and out of his frustration, and, and out of his enlightenment as well, he starts to write his journal. And he writes this journal 
Psalm 73. Turn in your Bibles, please, because I want this to help you. I think many of you will draw some strength from this. And David is saying, God, man, why, why do righteous have to suffer like this? Why is it God's people cannot experience the wealth and the success and the, and the glory? Well, look here. Let's read together, please. Reading from verse 3 of Psalm 73. And so he's writing. And he says, let's read together. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they had no bonds in their debt, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people shall return hither and waters of a cup full of wrong, cup, sorry, are wrung out to them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? In other words, he's saying, man, you, God, your people want to know if you're really watching what's going on here. Lord, you don't see how the world is, is, is using wicked means in the office. How the world is using their, 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 their influence to trap us at the... The king is going before God. Verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain, and I wash my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, Behold, I shall offend against the generation of thy children. Lord, if I really tell God's people how I feel inside, I'll offend them because they say, yeah, boy, I agree with you. Verse 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until, let's everybody read, please. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I there. And I am so happy that you have chosen wisely to be in the sanctuary of God. There is an anointing here. There's a peace here. There's an assurance here. There are miracles here for your marriage, for your children, for your future, for your business, for your health. The sanctuary of God. And you continue planting. You continue developing. You continue strengthening your ties with the Sunday school. Strengthen your children's ties with the dunamis. Strengthen your ties with the groups in the church. Strengthen your ties with your prayer pod. Very important. Because church is not a sacrifice. Church is an investment. I am investing my life and my future in God. And therefore... If I am not in the church, or let me put it this way, I am only in the church when I am in church. Keep yourself in church. Keep yourself in church. Don't let anybody keep you away for no reason from being in the house of God. Because here is where God will make a way of deliverance for you. He's done it for many. He's done it for you in the past. So I don't know why you're doubting. He's made a way for you. He's kept you. His victory is through his church. The prayer meeting tonight, that is for us to find victory. Go down to verse 30 of Ma Ma Matthew chapter 13. In verse 30, Jesus says that the harvest time is coming and the angels are going to 
gather the tears and he's going to bundle them. He's going to bind them. He's going to bundle them. That has happened already. Bundle. 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 Wicked men. Bundle wicked men. United Nations. World Health Organization. World Economic Forum. Equal rights movement. Bundling. Are you seeing it happening in the world? Yeah, it's, it, it's not men coming together. It is God's word being established. And if you have eyes to see, see what is going on. And so all these bundlings are taking place all over the place. Equal rights movement, the Amnesty International, the interreligious organization, the Rotary Club. They're a bundle. Alcoholics Anonymous, it's a bundle. The friendly societies, the chambers, they all are a bundle. And a lot of Christian people are giving more time to that bundle because they're well intentioned, because they really feel they could change the world through that bundle. They can't. This world could only be changed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I can tell you, none of those bundles have Jesus Christ as their foundation. So don't waste your life, don't waste your youth, don't waste your resources trying to change the world through a bundle. Because we see from Jesus himself what is going to happen with the bundle. And as you look around, you see, as you look around and you see the bundles coming together, Jesus, open our spiritual eyes now so that we can see that the church is the barn. Look at that verse. I could, I could title the sermon, Bundle and Barn. Because you're either in bundle or you're in barn. The church is the barn. The church is what Jesus gave his life for. It's the church is where Jesus invested all of himself, all of his power to change the world. So see the church as the barn. And man, connect yourself to that. That is where the life is. That is where the power and the transformation is. And that's the best place to be in these last days. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Okay, but can you put that up? Can you put that up? First, first Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Hear what Paul says to the young pastor. Don't worry, church. The barn or the bundle, where you? Where you invest in your life? You are called to live for Jesus and to honor him and to please him. Keep on that trap. Don't get distracted. Paul says, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the what? The pillar and ground of the, I am preaching the truth to you. The church is the pillar and the ground that you ought to be building your family with, your future with, your life with. You should be getting old with the pillar of, of truth. As Paul is writing this to the young Timothy. Because everywhere else. His lies and deception. And for 2,000 years, Jesus has extended his unbelievable, best way I could describe it, his unbelievable mercy to the human race. He has been so long suffering towards us. He has been so patient. He has been so forgiving towards us. He has been so gracious to us. But the day is coming when it is called the day of reckoning and that, is, that side of Jesus, you see no more. 
It's the judgment side of Jesus. And that's what Jesus is talking about today. That's what Jesus is talking about. It's a separation of the sinners and the saints. The believers and the wicked. And so it is a totally different side of Jesus. The ungodly man will see. And my God, it is going to be a dreadful sight. It is going to be a dreadful sight. Verse 39. The harvest is the end of the world. That's where we are. That's where we are living now. We are living in the end of the world. And as we sit here this morning, every philosophy is being bundled and getting ready to burn. Not, as every, not only is every philosophy, but everyone who follows the philosophy. And Jesus says in verse 39, the workers of what? Of what? Look in your Bible. Verse 39. Iniquity. Iniquity. God will judge iniquity. And I am so grateful this morning that 90% of you are already saved, that you're already working out your salvation with fear and trembling. I am grateful to God that the, the, the righteous keeps walking righteously. I am grateful for that. But how many more people, how many more people don't know? How many more people are walking in blindness? Their philosophy and their whole life, Jesus said, is going to be burnt up in fire in hell where there is weeping, gnashing of teeth. You and I can't even begin to think what that is like. Can't begin to see a man go through that much more. Your family member, your children, your spouse. And that is why the devil throw tears at you. Because he wants you to get so discouraged. He wants you to take your eyes off of the king is coming. He wants you to get sleepy. And think, man, Jesus ain't coming soon. Anytime now, I have time to play with the world. I have time to, to, to really fast and pray over my, my, fa my family. No. No. Go down to verse 43. Because this really is for you to be encouraged. This is for you are the wheat. You are the righteous. And hear what God says. Hear what Jesus says. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. The righteous are those of us who are justified by putting our faith in Jesus as our savior. And not only did we put in our faith in him to be our savior, he is also our Lord. So we have taken his righteousness and now we live righteously. We live according to his word. That's who the righteous are, the righteous. And words could never, human words could never begin to describe what Jesus is trying to say here. That's why I pray that your spirit will be quickened this morning by God's word. That God has for the righteous, God has for you and I, an abundance of glory. God has for you and I, one day, perfection. God has for you and I, abundance of beauty. He puts it this way. He says, You will shine forth Verse 43, as the son in the kingdom of your father. A totally different experience to what you and I are accustomed to. So let's not try to even imagine it. But let your faith be encouraged this morning. Let your faith be discouraged, encouraged this morning. 
that there is a, a day coming that is most dreadful for most people on the earth. Most people, they don't see it coming, but it's coming. But thank God, there's a blessed day coming. There is a blessed day coming for you and I, and you and I are not going to be spared of any, any pleasures from God the Father. God is going to fill your heart with his joy, with his peace, with his... God is going to show you that what he took you through was not to break you, was not to mash you up. What he took you through was just to help strengthen your faith in him, was just for you to, to be confident in your God. And don't you let the enemy, and don't you let the people in the world change your mind, discourage you. And so I get ready to close. John 4, the four lessons, four simple lessons from this parable that I think we could, we could close off with. Lesson number one, don't struggle with living side by side with the sons of the devil. Don't struggle with it. You keep growing. The Bible says they are going to get worse. But the Bible also says the path of the just is as a bright light shining more and more. So let them do them. You do you. That's how it works. And every time you get discouraged, just go back and read the end of the book and see who is the winner, man. You are the winner. I am the winner. This life is light afflictions. This life, God will teach us some lessons, not to mash us up, but for his honor and for his glory. The righteous will shine forth as the sun. Second lesson. You must patiently wait for the return of Jesus Christ. Please, don't ever let the enemy steal that hope from you. Don't let your waiting turn you into a foolish virgin. Don't let your weight and make you become sleepy. Rather, you are looking for the glorious appearance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are living your life every day with that hope in you. You are living your life with anticipation that the return of Jesus Christ is Sure, it's guaranteed, and it will be the final separation of good and evil. Fourthly, thirdly, oh, thank you. Put your hope, put your hope in Jesus. It may sound simple, but I'll tell you. The world has set so many other hopes. To get your hope. Tricks. You got to stay steadfast in your hope. To Jesus Christ. Don't let. The enemy put people in your life. To fool you. To deceive you. The book of Galatians is written to a church. That their eyes were totally gone off. From the grace of God. To the works that they have to do to be saved. Don't you be like that. Don't put all of your effort into a bundle because bundles cannot change the world. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ could save this world from the wrath of God which is to come upon the planet. And it is only the preaching of the gospel that will change the world one life at a time. Yeah, I mean, it's one life. It was designed to change the world one life at a time. And you investing your life in him and investing your life in somebody else is a good investment. And fourthly, as we close, remember that at one time, you two were here. At one time, 
you and I were enemies of God. At one time, we deserved the wrath of God. At one time, we were blighted and we were cursed. At one time, the Bible says we were separated from God. Let us not get so churchy and so comfortable with where we are that we forget that had it not been for the grace of God, I ain't going to be here this morning. And the same God who was gracious to me continues to be gracious to my friends, wants to save my friends, wants to save my family, wants to touch my workplace through me. The light is going to come through me. The shining is going to come through me. And even though they will mock me and even though they will laugh at me and they'll call me church boy and church girl, I will not be dissuaded because I know what will happen to the tears at the end of their life. And God put me here for one reason. To tell the tears, come to Jesus. To give the tears hope. To bring the ungodly man and the wicked man and the wretched man away to salvation. That's my job. And that will be your job. You have to have that in your heart. Fan that flame back, man. Start getting back a passion for your siblings. Start getting back a passion for your children. Start getting back a passion for those that are backslidden. Because what God did for me he expects me to do for others, to give my life for them. Give up my pride for them. Give up my conveniences for them. You name it. So we had to preach the gospel and tell the world that Jesus came to save sinners from hell. And we ought to live right and back it up. Live right and back it up. We close. Well, the day and the time is coming. That, that day is already set. That day and time is already set. When there is going to be the separation of the righteous and the wicked. Now we live together. It's a fight now. But the hand of God is going to come. He's going to separate. The only thing Jesus didn't say in the book of Matthew is when. He said everything else but when. And so, my question to you this morning is if he comes in your lifetime, what is he going to find? Going to find a tear, a wicked man, an ungodly man, an unrighteous man? Or is he going to find a wheat in the barn, a wheat that is in connection with the farmer, with the savior. And so we come this morning, go ahead Emil. We come this morning to commemorate the Lord's death and burial and resurrection. But he did all of this so that all men could be saved. That you don't have to die in your sin. That you don't have to live a life that is full of wickedness and reap the consequences of those wickedness without the grace of God and no, 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 no Jesus came to give you a better life he came to save you from hell and here we are in church this morning it's your choice it's always a matter of choice nothing else forget your past, forget your history those do not count it's your choice now and I'm going to ask you, while all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, if you are here this morning and you don't have a relationship with God, that Jesus isn't your Savior, and you know in your heart that you are living like a wheat, that your future doesn't look good, I want to give you an opportunity this morning to come to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus. While all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you would like to do that, I want to pray for you. I want to bless you. I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand. That's all. Lift your hand so I could pray for you. Thank you. God bless you, ma'am. Is there anybody else? God bless you. 
Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Under the balcony. God bless you. Thank you so much. Don't walk out of church after hearing that God wants to give you a new life. And say to yourself, Lee, another time. No, he accepts you as you are. He is gracious and he's kind. He knows everything about us. And that's why he brought us here to bless us. Is there anybody else? Thank you for those who lifted your hands. Those of you in the balcony. Are you saved? Are you saved? Not grow up in church and, and have some religion and Sunday school and no faith center. No. Are you saved? I don't want you to make that mistake. Side balcony, are you saved? I want to invite you to come to Jesus. The other side balcony. Thank God for a full house this morning. God bless you. Is there anybody else? Sir, I'm waiting for you. I don't want you to die and go to hell. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Lift your hand. Let me pray for you. Is there anybody else? Backslide, a time to come home, man. God bless you for being in church. Thank you. God bless you. But time to come back home. Time to come back home. The time is way spent. If you would like to recommit your life to Jesus this morning, I want you to lift your hand too. Make a public demonstration that, Lord, I surrender my life to you again. Is there anybody? Thank you for the lady on, on, under the balcony. Is there anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Let me invite you to stand, please. That's a nice song, Emil. Rich. Lord, your grace is still amazing. Lord, your grace is still amazing. Lord, your grace is still amazing. Amazing to me. Father in heaven, we are so grateful this morning that you have redeemed us, that you've called us apart, you've set us apart. Lord, your hand is upon us. Jesus, you said in your word that nothing could separate us from the love of God. We are so grateful this morning for the security of our salvation. We thank you, Lord, that your righteousness has been given to us. And that your righteousness is working in us. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your grace, your strength, your peace. Lord, we are, we are wheat among tears. There are people in our lives that cause heartache and, and sorrow. And, and people who try to hurt us and our families. Lord, the devil has planted those people in our lives to discourage us, to frustrate us. Lord, we pray today that you would help your people Lord we read from your word you will not take them away Lord we accept that but Lord we also accept your great peace we also accept your strength we accept your wisdom to deal with the situations that come against us we pray today Lord Jesus that you will continue to be a shield and a buckler for your people that you will be a fence all around about them Jesus Lord, I pray that when the enemy comes in like a flood, attacking their children, attacking their marriage, attacking their health, attacking their finances, their, whatever it is, Lord Father, that you would keep them. Yes. Lord, we know that the enemy comes against all those things with one objective, to get at our faith. To get at our faith. Lord, we pray today for those people who have been praying for weeks and months and years for a particular miracle. And Lord, they haven't seen any relief yet. Lord, we pray today that you'll encourage their faith. That you will keep their faith. That their hope will be in you, Jesus. That their strength will come from you, Jesus. That you will keep them in from the day of evil. When they want to give up. When the enemy will come in like a flood. Lord, bless your church this morning. May we be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. 
May we learn to walk in the Spirit. That's our prayer this morning, Jesus. That's our prayer this morning. Strengthen us. Strengthen us, we pray. Strengthen every arm of this church. Every Sunday school teacher. Lord, every dunamis leader, every teleos person leader, every Bible school teacher, the GG, the men's ministry, the women's ministry. Lord, every ministry, we pray for them today, the leaders, the workers, the laborers. Lord, keep us from evil. Jesus, you taught us to pray like that. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Lord, that's our prayer today for your church. Bless them with your joy. Bless them with your peace. Lord, fill them today with everything they would need to live a victorious life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And for those of you who lifted your hands, I want to lead you in prayer. But I want to do it personally. So I'm not going to ask the whole church to repeat the prayer after me. I would like for you to come. I will pray with you. If you are serious, you really want a relationship with Jesus, let me invite you to come. And I will pray with you. I will encourage you. I will help you to understand what you are doing. And that way you are a bit better able to appreciate the grace of God on your life. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, Lord, your grace. Lord, your grace Thank you, Jesus. Is still amazing. Lord, your grace is still amazing. Ministers, if you'll come at this time, please. Lord, your grace is still amazing. Lift your hand, please. Father, bless your people to live. Let your word encourage them. Let your word give them the strength that they need to face the wickedness that is around them. Yes, Jesus. Give them your strength, your peace, your joy. Father, we are more than overcomers through Jesus Christ who loves us. Yes. Lord, you gave your life for us. Yes. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Those of you who would need, like to have prayer, Please come and see any of the ministers and those of you who lifted your hands. Let me invite you to come and meet me right here so I can lead you in that sinner's prayer. Lord, Thank you, Jesus. Still amazing. Lord, of Trinidad and Tobago continues to resonate through the alias of WAC Radio 90.1 FM and WAC.TV. While the rest of the world goes on, we stay rooted in the rich soil of our culture, celebrating the Trinbagonian spirit that dances in our hearts all year round. WAC Radio 90.1 FM is your constant companion, bringing you the essence of Trinidad and Tobago.
everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often offer. Oh, what needless things we bear.
Here I stand looking, looking around me, while all around me, what do I see? Unhappy faces behind the painted smiles, heartache and loneliness, dressed up in more.
Flavin Abraham and the parishioners of the St. Joseph Aushi Church Mayo invite you to their Grand Harvest and Family Day on Sunday the 14th of April at the St. Joseph Aushi Church Mayo. The theme is Witnessing to the Power of God, Luke 24, 48. Holy Mass will begin at 10 a.m. Lunch will be on sale, curry queue and barbecue $50, Creole lunches at $60. There will be lots of games and of stores and music by Mr. Desmond of WAP 90.1 FM. Bring the entire family for a wonderful day of fellowship at the St. Joseph Institute, Mayo. It's an all-inclusive vacation to Jamaica with your music, your culture, and your entertainment. You get a choice of six restaurants, 11 bars, three pools, beach days, day tours to Dunn's River Falls, plus meet and greet with fellow West Indians from USA, Canada, Trinidad, and other places. Also, a private entertainment night with Ronnie McIntosh, Crazy and DJ Madman Maddie, a beach day with more music, six days in Jamaica, your music, your culture, your entertainment from TT, $12,995. August 8th or 9th and return August 12th, 13th or 14th. Call Amrals for your Jamaica All-Inclusive at 6653383. That's Amrals at 6653383. It's an all-inclusive vacation to Jamaica with your music, your culture, and your entertainment. Progressive Entertainment presents I Love You Mom Sunday, 12th May, Mother's Day from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. at B's Popover, Agnes Street, Vista Bella featuring the Joey Lewis Orchestra together with DJ Mr. Desmond and DJ Wiz Admission $100 before 9 p.m. Let's dance with Mom for Mother's Day Th th this one, this one is for Mom Mama, Mama, you know Crazy in the country is lonely and khaki. Contender say, come enjoy 73 with me in his big birthday concert. Bigger and better. better. Friday, 26 April at Cafe Blue Rice and Road from 8 p.m. with some of the biggest Calypso and X Temple stars featuring Crazy, Trinidad Rio, Johnny King, Oronga with the Hendrickson family, Organizer, Dr. Will B, and Trinity with X Temple by Gypsy, Black Sage, Myron B, Niall Manswell, and Gary Ranks. All backed by Michelle Henry, Kaiso Kaiso Encore Band Showtime 8pm sharp MC's Shirley Hendrickson And Omari Ashby Get your tickets now no. At only 150 At Tuco North Zone Office Crosby St. James And Tuco's Head Office 45C Jerningham Avenue Belmont Plenty giveaways as usual Contenders say Come enjoy 73 with me, me. In his big, big birthday concert United States is consistently ranked among the best internationally for its competitiveness. Are you planning to start a new business or branch of your business in New York? Attend our Chamber Coalition's five-week webinar series, Small Business Sense Bootcamp. We provide education and business preparation for small business owners and startups. Learn the basics of business planning, how to finance your business, business credit, marketing, and social media strategies. Small business solutions, legal, tax, accounting, banking, and insurance, and how to do business within New York City, New York State, and corporations. Register at startupsbootcamp.eventbrite.com. Diatonic Pan Institute presents for Separi Effect Pan Kai Soka 24. Pan Kai Soka 24. Saturday, April 30th. Come, enjoy ex tempo clash between Abibeli and Brian London. I want it all the time. King Luther, Left the Kojo, Johnny King, I want it all the time. and the legendary Super Blue, along with Diatonic Pan Institute with vocals and dance. Pan Kai Soka 24. It's all happening at Diatonic Pan Yard, Mary Street, Separia. Showtime, 8.30 p.m. Admission only $200. It's all powered by the Atlantic LNG and Live Music District. Pan Kai Soka 24. Make it a day. Saturday, April 30th. When you're ready, ready, man, the iron and the man, where they can go from. It's a vibe in the 
It was nice, so we're doing it twice. Join us for the WAC Meet and Greet in Ocala. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of WAC 90.1 FM at Myron Oaks Community Center in Ocala. On Saturday, June 15th, the Father's Day weekend from 6 p.m. Dress code is white with a touch of red. Come and meet Mr. Feely, the CEO of WAC Radio, your favorite radio station. You make the wrong choice. Music for Dancing by DJ Richard C. of Wack Radio. All inclusive tickets, singles $40, couples $75. Book your ticket for the Wack Meet and Greet now. Call Shortman at 813 263 2127 or Dance a Boy at 917 753 3123. Get discount and hotel accommodation. Call 352-261-0024. Mention WAC 90.1F. It was nice, so we're doing it twice. Hello, Mr. Feely. Zion Community, in collaboration with the parishes of the Southern Vicariate, will host the annual Divine Musi March and Celebration on Sunday, 7th April. This begins with a prayer walk from the Roman Catholic Church on our Harris Promenade at 11.45 a.m., moving along the streets of San Fernando and ending at Presentation College San Fernando. There, the program will run from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and includes praise and worship, adoration and benediction, intercession for our nation's families and church. All are invited to attend. Mercy March, Sunday, 7th April. It's time to save the date. Because on Sunday, 14th April, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., Demi Melville Entertainment presents its much-anticipated children's show. Get ready to see many talented children sing, dance, act, and play instruments. The talent will be mind-blowing, so don't miss it on all WAC platforms. Facebook, YouTube, WAC Visual Radio, Sino Radio, TuneIn Radio, and WAC TV. And don't forget to donate. You certainly don't want to miss this on April 14th. So, save the date now. Dive into the rhythms of the Caribbean with an unforgettable getaway. Join us for Kaisoka in Panama Memorial Weekend, May 24th to the 27th, 2024, with an unforgettable getaway. Package includes round trip from JFK, New York, Miami, or Trinidad, airport transfers, and hassle-free travel. Four days, three nights, accommodation in Panama, and the Tourist Day Alba Hotel and Suites. The highlights, Saturday night, Chapel and Dance, the night away with the chosen one, or optional, a tour of the Panama Canal, or city tour. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity on Sunday. It's Last Lap featuring Posa and Prince Unique. Enjoy fantastic music and make memories to last a lifetime. Book now for only 899 US dollars per person, double occupancy. Limited availability. Reserve your spot today. Give us a call 646 399 0000. Kaisoka in Panama. Memorial Weekend.
want them y'all with them big monkey tails. So it's uh, 11 minutes after 11, 18 minutes after 11 o'clock. Good morning, everybody. Uh, wow. Let me say a special thanks going out to uh, Tony D. Yeah. Bishop Leon John. And of course, the folks down there at Faith Center. Thank you guys so much. As they put things in order on a Sunday morning. Yeah. How is your Sunday morning so far? Hell boy. Ay, ay, ay. Ding, 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 ding. I'm here till 2 o'clock. Let's see if the IFA, the boss man, will be in with us today. Which I hope that he will. Hope that you had a fantastic weekend. Last weekend, you had an Easter weekend, and you know. Mm -hmm. What's up with you this Sunday? Probably in the kitchen or just just relaxing, waiting on the start of another work week. Some people started today already. I mean, you know, at work. Good morning, welcome, you're in the right place at the right time. Walk Radio 901 FM, Visual Radio that is. Mm -hmm. Let me say good morning to my Palm Bay family, boy. I'm going to call Doreen for you, say he had a vex, you understand? Good morning, Doreen. <laughs> to you and your hussy, good morning to each and every one of you. Yeah. So let's see what our Sunday morning looks like, musically that is. So let's go. Hey, look fat man, my wife, my partner. Well, here we are with you. Mm. I've got you on the show this morning. Because nice. Because we give me some real trouble. Right. You see me a great thing. So, after dog here, I take in faith center. Everybody where go dog road. Nice. I take them in from 
everybody from morning nice. I just yes I just looked up right and now I'm here with you right well you're in the right and place I, I mean to... where, where again you have to go you ain't going nowhere I'm <laughs> to the head of to the court nice that's what we're talking about <laughs> <All> right <laughs> all right you it, I'm, I'm locked on and listening so, blessings man nice one Get them my Get them my hand. Are they not Benjai. When you would have thought, you know, after Carnival, you wouldn't hear at least a little two months grace or three months grace before you hear some brand new music. Sure. Here comes Patrice Roberts. Ooh, all right, Patrice again, yeah, yeah. Me not have no chill with the waistline. Every day I have some in a waistline. Give me speed, give me juke, give me baseline. Give me baseline, give me, give me baseline. The place get hot when I go down. Make it bubble like butter on the stove now. Who wanna cook it, cook it up, cook it, cook it up, cook it, cook it up. Cook it up, cook it up, cook it up. I, I, I. Ooh, 
Cook it up. It's called Cook It Up, man. It's a Sunday morning here in the kitchen. Come on, man. Cook up the thing. Come on. Me not have no chill with the waistline. Every day I have some in a waistline. Give me speed, give me chill, give me baseline. Give me baseline, give me, give me baseline. The place get hot when I go down. Make it bubble like butter on the stove now. But when I cook it, cook it up, cook it, cook it up. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Desmond. What's your story this morning, lady? And Tell how me. are you this morning? I uh, I just like you. Okay, okay. Just like you, just like you. All right. Well, that keeps you sure why is it all right? Well, that, but you're my grandmother, we expect. <laughs> if, if, you, if you ain't good, me ain't good neither. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, all right. Well, here I call you to tell you. Go ahead. Just now, I was coming to church to look for you because you might be a pastor just now. Why you say that? On, on the 14th. Well, I'm on the 14th, yeah. Oh, I'm going in church. I play music, but you wouldn't be playing music alone just now. You wouldn't be doing that alone. You'll be a pastor yeah, just now too. No, no, but let me tell you something, right? That's one of the uh-huh. biggest harvests in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, I, 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 Mayo. If if if, if you've never been to, to to that church harvest, you uh-huh. need to you need to hook up a squad and come up the road, man. All you right. know, yeah, they, that, that that is one that that is huge, humongous. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm happy for you, you know. Me? What? What does that to do with me? I have, however, it is, I'm yeah. happy for you. So I, no, I, I was contracted to supply the music. That's it. Oh, all right. That's about today. <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right, darling. All right, Bless. Sunday, 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 <laughs> you too. <laughs> all, right. all right. Patrice again. Yeah, yeah. Me not have no chill with your waistline. Every day I have some in a waistline. Give me speed, give me joke, give me baseline. Give me baseline, give me, give me baseline. The place get hot when I go down. Make it bubble like butter on the stove now. But when I cook it, cook it up, cook it, cook it up, cook it, cook it up. Stay me, what can make your bun down? Ding on and stop, never run out. But when I cook it, cook it up, cook it, cook it up, cook it, cook it up. I, 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 arch back protest. Come let me fix you up. It could have taste like that Good flavor up in your face No chill with your waistline uh, Every day I have some in a waistline uh, Give me speed, give me chill, give me baseline Give me baseline, give me, give me baseline The place get hot when I go down Make it bubble like butter on the stove now Oh, when I cook it, cook it up, cook it Cook it up, cook it, cook it up Stay me, what can make your bun down Ting down and stop, never run out Oh, when I cook it, cook it up, cook it Cook it up, cook it Good morning. Good morning, Desmond. What's up, darling? That, uh, that visa will be nice. And then you there, oh, Lord, boy, I'm sorry I can't go. That's the best visa in the whole and world, yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, boy, I used to run away and go, boy. Yeah, that's a big one. Just yeah, yeah. my grandmother's house, eh? All right, cool, man. <laughs> All right, darling. Yeah. Nice jam from Patrice Roberts, boy, I tell you. And of course, you must check out Kess, man, Kess. Wow, his brand new album, Man With No Doors. Here comes the track called Bless Me. Sunshine bring the way you're watching with your eye glistening. Give me a rhythm with a dance, I'll swing. End up denied with some good, good loving. And I'm so blessed to know you. So please just let me show you. 
Cause you're everything I want and need And when you walk all, you know I'm giving it all Yeah, let we get it on I love the way you rock down is that Come now, let we bubble up a good time So baby, when you come, I'll be fine Come now, let me hold on our waistline Woman, come bless me Come bless me, woman, come bless me Come bless me, woman Come bless me, woman So it's a battle, yeah And in the air, that you're loyal, yeah Girl, you alone want me to hold tight to me now Your body, your car, so you're at to perform You know me love just all You turn and twist I've been in love, but nothing quite like this We up in the party, couple smoke, couple drinks Prime time wine, make you feel pure bliss So what me tell you I love you when you're locked down with time Come now, let me bubble love a good time Baby, when you come, I'll be fine Come now, let me hold on our waistline Come on, let's go Come bless me, woman, yeah. Come bless me, woman. Come bless me, woman. Hey. Oh, my baby, you know I'll treat you right, yeah. So come right over, let's make love through the night, yeah. Say so we can run away, come and follow me. And if it's everything you want, that of a male. Cause that is how I feel, give you something real. So baby, come hold me closer Cause I love the way you're up down with sun Come now let we won't have a good time Baby, when you come, I'll be fine Come now let me hold on our waistline Come on, come bless me, come on, yeah Come bless me, come on, yeah Come bless me, come on Come, come on, come bless me The way you bless me Come on, come bless me Yeah, you know you bless me Come on, come bless me The way you bless me Baby, come bless me. Woman, come bless me. Ah, oh, yeah. Woman, come bless me. The way you give me that. Woman, come bless me. Woman, come bless me. Woman, come bless me. Now, won't you come? Won't you come, please? Cause I love the way you're up down with me. Come now, let me bubble up a good time. Baby, when you come, I'll be fine. Come now, let me hold on. Come bless me, woman. Come bless me. 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 From his brand new album, Man What. No doors. <laughs> nice kiss. Hey, we coming back after these. Flavin Abraham and the parishioners of the St. Joseph Aushi Church Mayo invite you to their Grand Harvest and Family Day on Sunday the 14th of April at the St. Joseph Aushi Church Mayo. The theme is Witnessing to the Power of God. Luke 24, 48. Holy Mass will begin at 10 a.m. Lunch will be on sale, curry queue and barbecue $50, Creole lunches at $60. There will be lots of games and of stores and music by Mr. Desmond of 90.1 FM. Bring the entire family for a wonderful day of fellowship at the St. Joseph Institute, Mayo. Progressive Entertainment presents I Love You Mom Sunday, 12th May, Mother's Day from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. at B's Popover, Agnes Street, Vista Bella featuring the Joey Lewis Orchestra together with DJ Mr. Desmond and DJ Wiz Admission $100 before 9 p.m. Let's dance with Mom for Mother's Day th th This one, this one is for Mom Mama, Mama, Zion Community, in collaboration with the parishes of the Southern Vicariate, will host the annual Divine Mercy March and Celebration on Sunday, 7th April. This begins with a prayer walk from the Roman Catholic Church on our Harris Promenade at 11.45 a.m., moving along the streets of San Fernando and ending at Presentation College San Fernando. There, the program will run from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and includes praise and worship, adoration and benediction intercession for our nation's families and church all are invited to attend mercy march sunday 7th april die 
right into the rhythms of the Caribbean with an unforgettable getaway. Join us for Kai Soka in Panama Memorial Weekend, May 24th to the 27th, 2024, with an unforgettable getaway. Package includes round trip from JFK, New York, Miami, or Trinidad, airport transfers, and hassle-free travel. Four days, three nights, accommodation in Panama, and the Tourist Day Alba Hotel and Suites. The highlights, Saturday night, jump out and dance the night away with the chosen one, or optional, a tour of the Panama Canal, or city tour. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity on Sunday. It's Last Lap featuring Posa and Prince Unique. Enjoy fantastic music and make memories to last a lifetime. Book now for only 899 US dollars per person, double occupancy. Limited availability. Reserve your spot today. Give us a call. 646-399-0000. Kaisoka in Panama. Memorial Weekend. Toronto, Toronto, get ready for the big, big, big relaunch of A Taste of Madness at Twilight Restaurant and Bar in Scarborough on April 13th, 2024. Don't miss an electrifying night with the Calypso King of Toronto, Connector, Nikita. Could this be Daryl the Steel Pan Man and the sensational Jew? Accompanied by Toronto's finest Tassa drummers with DJs, the enforcers, and selector Ombi. And hosted by the big band Taste of Madness. Remember, it's the relaunch of Taste of Madness. Win a door prize of a microwave starting at 9 p.m. Tickets are $40. Book now on eventbrite.ca Taste of Madness and tasteofmadness.com. Come and join the unforgettable madness. It's an all-inclusive vacation to Jamaica with your music, your culture, and your entertainment. You get a choice of six restaurants, 11 bars, three pools, beach days, day tours to Dunn's River Falls, plus meet and greet with fellow West Indians from USA, Canada, Trinidad, and other places. Also, a private entertainment night with Ronnie McIntosh, Crazy and DJ Madman Maddie, a beach day with more music, six days in Jamaica, your music, your culture, your entertainment from TT, $12,995. August 8th or 9th and return August 12th, 13th or 14th. Call Amrals for your Jamaica all-inclusive at 6653383. That's Amrals at 6653383. It's an all-inclusive vacation to Jamaica with your music, your culture, and your entertainment.
Canada is a party in the engine room. No oxygen tank, we got dipsy die, dipsy die. It's a vibe in this session when we jam into the steel bun, bun. Party. I invented 
madness in the capital, so I feel like I'm running tongue again. Jump and shake the ground again. Live with one man friend and them. No place like like home the lake asphalt sports club presents bedrock sweet 16 in full bloom that's taking place on the 5th of may from 4 to 11 p.m at the scenic lake asphalt administration grounds in la Brie. get your limited edition bloom tickets for only one thousand dollars while stocks last available at ateliers in san fernando Papi's water and hole in san fernando the Cheetahs Restaurant and Bar, Soka Island Restaurant and Bar in Point Fortin, and online at islandetickets.com. Or you can call 686-4101, that number again, 686-4101, or 292-0222. 292-0222. Bedrock, Suite 16 in full bloom. That's taking place on Sunday the 5th of May in La Boue. Just about 10 minutes away from 12 noon. Here comes the red plastic bag. When you're getting old. <laughs> Once upon a wine, remember? Yeah.
Tobago. Mr. Desmond. Mr. Desmond. Mr. Desmond. Mr. Desmond. Sometimes, you know, when you get the best jam of your life, 
and it have people who are around and they see some kind of something while you're having your best jam now. You know what I mean? You need to take this advice. It happens everywhere, everywhere, any part of the world that you go, it must have one of these that, you know. But take my advice. Do this. Anytime you see and just do this. Yeah? Well, if you have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all, just so shan't go your way. Will you? Come with the word them negative vibes and energy. Yeah, yeah. Best you move from wrong way. Move now. Stay far from way. Move now. It's only be a good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. We outside and we have a good time. If you have nothing good to say, hush.
it's a Sunday afternoon, six minutes after 12 o'clock. All you come now, man. Ladies, what, well, man? Lay cook yet? Boy, hey, that, that, I, I think that, that, that's a major obstacle. You yeah, understand? That I, I find on a Sunday, 12 o'clock. Yeah. Fellas, all you don't play bad like me, you know. I find 12 o'clock. You sit down on the table. Now, not just sitting on the table and hand nothing in front of you. Sit down and you have a chicken bone in your mouth. If they have a man in this world could call me now and say, There's money correct. Not one. Call and say bye. You see, just where yesterday, I find that it's supposed to be so. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, this one. Uh-huh. Sorry to spoil your bottle, but I finished cooking since yesterday morning. Well, if you it's alone, no one. Yeah, die, 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 oh, that's not, how it does oh, it's not me alone. It's not me alone. Mm. Contrary to your belief. No, contrary. Well, well, it's, it's not you and you and it's you and somebody else. Right. Right. So, you but, die alone cooking, and I finish cooking. And if you don't want, I cook yesterday morning. Uh, no. Go, go your way. My mother lay down close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if they have a man to call this phone and say, "There's oh, you see where just say you're correct. Not one. All right, All right darling. Yes. I ain't tell no woman. I want a woman calling me. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dezo. Hey, what happened? It's not that it says, I cook in since 9 o'clock and I can't finish. Well, I know how you just do it in June, but uh, again, <laughs> again, oh it, is, it, is not, it is not what I'm looking for. You, you are, know? If you alone, you and your son, nice, and you cook it. I cook plenty still. I can't. Uh, that ain't nothing, you know? but what I'm saying, right? it has no matter call me and say, Dezo, 12 o'clock, but yeah, you're right, you're correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I cook last night. A lot of people here just cook Saturday night, but uh, not me. All right, darling, bless. Good afternoon. Yes, well, you're very right. You're correct. You're correct. You couldn't have it better. Because you you you, you sound like a bachelor, boy. Right? Oh, <laughs> yes. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you have to be living yes, by yes, yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, oh. All right, partner. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that, that woman in that house there, are you calling back and say, well, yeah, you're correct? Huh? Are you eating tomorrow? But we respect all you know, fellas. I respect all you, all you know, all you cannot. And you, instead of looking for, for, for rowdy and you're watching the pot. And you're hoping the gas and finish. And you're timing yourself and you're seeing like at 3 o'clock. So you just need to hush. And you see you have to wait until I finish wash my hair. If you look sharp, I call in the name, the nail tech around 11. <laughs> Hello. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Delvin. Yeah, well, you eat already, eh? <laughs> yeah. What happened? Yeah, I go like a little. All right. I would like to start birthday greetings first to my niece. Your niece? All right, cool, man. Greetings to thee, Christian Corbett. Okay. Celebration to thee. Mm-hmm. You still have fixed that volume yet, eh, partner? And also, so, Savi. Who? Savi. Savi's Savi. birthday is when? Today? Today. Yeah, Alright, yes. great man. Blessings. Alright. And also, Merle from Rancho. Okay, Merle from Rancho. I tell you, everybody godfather, you know you. Alright, okay. boss. Savi! Happy you strong, darling. Ding, ding. 
So it's 11 minutes after 12. Normally, the, the gentleman might have said, well, I rung the corner or something. If you don't like the job again, like, just call and say, hey, yeah. You understand? Normally, you know, around this time, we might have seen him, but I can't say yes or no.
Just conductor So long I walk in No promotion coming Instead I hold this patch up Want to give me pressure Since they have women driving It's with them I walk in But he have a problem He don't want me work with him Playing he's my friend And only want me work with the men Not me I want to work on Ira bus I want to work on Sarah bus I want to work on Janet bus I want to work on Margaret bus Not me on Isaac bus Not me on Wilshire bus I'd rather that bus Than to work on any man bus Woman, I never have problem. Everything does work right. From gas to the headlights, they check on the tire, gas, oil, and water. They make sure that the bell is working just as well. But when you work with the men, you always have problem. The bus I leave tongue, but the blinking bus don't shut down. Not me. I want to work on Ira bus. I want to work on Sarah bus. I want to work on Janet bus. I want to work on Margaret bus, not me on Isaac bus, not me on Wilshire bus. I just feel the cuss when they put me on a man bus. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Change the work late, we'll see about the last date. Then you the conductor, but to check the dispatcher to see what bus working. They're going and eat something. They wouldn't check before they leave to see the bus defective. Is any old bus? But not me, I check in them first. You see, I want to work on Ira bus, I want to work on Sarah bus, I want to work on Janet bus, I want to work on Margaret bus. Not me on Isaac bus, not me on Wilshire bus, and just make well fuss to work on any man bus. Now you see this brother here? I need you to put on your calendar on your fridge. Right? October 12th. That's all. Let's put on that date. October 12th. On your fridge. And you know you're going to Miami, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this brother is coming to Miami Whites on the 12th of October, 2024.
I'm a soca. Ronnie Mac the knife Mac in touch, boy. Man, I sick of the soca. I tell you.
Sunday afternoon, and you realize I'm a kind of old school kind of mode, right? Yeah, yeah. We keep it there a little bit. Let's go. On the phone lines, right? Let's let's go to the phone. Good good afternoon. Hey, there's no good evening, partner. What happened, boss? Well, boy, listen. Here what happened. Mm. You just give lessons, music lessons. No, sir. Well, yeah, but I think you I look at, I, I, I looking for some for myself. But there's no here what happened. Ah. I want them young boy them to listen how to mix, and not as you start they start to enjoy the tune it wheel and the cut and the corner and next tune. Oh, they're not easy, no? <laughs> but, but, but there's a but there's a you know I just say mm-hmm. I don't give a Bluetooth I, I just say the truth you know. mm-hmm. because there's a you know that's what they just do as they start a tune and you start to enjoy the tune they will well, yeah, and they go with the next two tune. things we have we have to put into perspective right it's a different uh-huh. era you know and they have they they have their time and stuff 
you know, to do what they, they need to do. Right, and we uh, had a we well, we kind of well not kind of but we had our time too, you know what I mean? But still, well, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we we still here, I, I, we still I, here. I, I, we still I, here. I'm diving. Look, I'm yeah. look at the music. How nice the music mix on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I say, and you're mixing mm. according to song, you're mixing meticulously. Well, boy, the well. muscles to mesmerize our souls. Well, that's what we get paid for. That's what we get paid for. So, give some lessons. All right, boss. Lessons. All right, all right. <laughs> Sing no 
a thing again about party But when the fans and them around the world Listen to what I have to say Anyway that I go, anyway that I pass Me keep balling out, no way No, 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 this party can't done Black man, your fans having fun Black man, jam another one This party can't done, this party can't done Come with it, your fans want to party Come with it, jam a party song Come with it, we just want to roll back, roll back All night long Come with it, your fans want to shake up Come with it, build more party song Come with it, it's you make we boogie woogie All year round So just keep on jamming Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop Black man, yes, we love your music Don't let no reporter man come in here now and stop it Yes, you sing and try to bring the whole Caribbean together Yes, you try and try to bring a better life for the elder Yes, you sing and try to make so much other people dream come true It's time that you realize that party people is people too So no, 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 this party can't yeah, do Black man, no fans have been fun Black man, jam another one This party can't do, this party can't do Come with it, your fans want to shake up Come with it, build more party song Come with it, if you make me party hardy All night long Come with it, your fans want to shake up Come with it, jam more party song Come with it It's you make me boogie woogie all year round.
sweet little, sweet little, sweet little boy. From the crown of your hair to the sole of your feet. She be sweet little, sweet little, sweet little boy. From the crown of your hair to the sole of your feet. She be sweet little, sweet little, sweet little boy. Yeah, she looking like something to eat. My God, yeah. Well, as I walk through the gate and they tell me to get me, I stumble and shake. And that's a man only for us, but the way she tap up, I need a money, need a hate, lady. So me stop on me. 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 Stop on Give me a cold Guinness and a sip drink or something, my man. I see a girl that I love more than crab and dumpling. Boy. And that's a love how she whining, boy. And that's a love how she grinding, boy. I want to go tell her something. But feel my belly of a boy. She's too sweet, too sweet. I got to make her to tease and a cute I have to tease. She's too sweet, too sweet. Oh gosh. But then I want to get she to eat. Cause that's a love how she whining, boy. And that's a love how she grinding, boy. That girl that put me in trouble. Oh, but that little little ring in she need her. She's too sweet, too sweet. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. She's too sweet. Mm. Yeah. Well, as I walk through the crowd and the music get loud, like the train started walking, I feel like Jonalyn Bill as I move for the kill, my blood pressure rising. Now little talking, because the music's all out of sign language I'm using, smiling. She white teeth and she dimples, so just let her join in. Boy, and what's I love how she whining? Boy, and what's I love how she whining? Boy, I want to go tell her something. But feel my belly of a boy. She's too sweet, too sweet. I can go feel my cavities and I can't use my teeth. She's too sweet, too sweet, too oh, crush. But when I want to get you to know, boy, come tell her how she whining. Boy, and what's I love how she whining? Boy, I can go put my in trouble. Oh, with that little little ring in she made. Oh, she's too sweet, too sweet. Oh, 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 She giving me a kind of wine that just blowing my mind And the sweat started dripping And then I smiling I wish the barman could take a little glimpse at the pad now whining And with the choicest thing as we jam into so bad And it's all about she whining boy. And it's all about she grinding boy. I want to go tell her something But feel my belly I will boil it She's too sweet, too sweet I can go to my cavities and I can't die at the tease She's too sweet, too sweet, oh gosh But then I want to get shit in my mouth Cause it's all about she whining boy. And it's all about she grinding boy. Now you're gonna put me in trouble Go with that little little ring in she made her Thank you. 
call your name. I did that, your friend and them. When last did they talk to you? So long I ain't talk to you. Go for me, you're in my side. Didn't know you was here tonight. It looked like you're doing all right, like money running around. Music nice, right? Well, not nice, but sweet. 
<laughs> you know, I, I could just imagine non-Trinidadians, you know, or, or not even non-Trinidadians and Tobagonians. I'm talking about from the Caribbean, the whole Caribbean. You're born in the U.S. and you love soca music, let me tell you. You love the best music in the world. And mind you, we will find that there are some people who, who you know, live right here, don't like it. You understand what I mean? You can't vex with a man's choice. But you see your culture, partner. I can't see you not liking your culture. Serious. I could never see that you, you, you live, you, you, you're born, your navel string buried here. And you don't like your culture. I can't see that. Something had to be wrong. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Oi. I, I love folk music. I love Calypso. In fact, I love all the gender of my country. That's what we're talking I about. That's okay, then? That's what we're talking about. All right. Okay, I'm just one. Just one more question. Is this the Dolce Shower? No, nah, they, they watch me. <laughs> I wouldn't answer. <laughs> Have a nice day. You see a lot of sensible things going on here. Now, when we say the culture of Trinidad and Tobago, we talking about chutney and the whole, the, the whole nine yards and you know, the, the works. You understand? So you can't just say you love Calypso and Soka. And you're leaving out Chutney and Tassan. You understand what I'm talking about it? When we say culture, we mean you must be a cultural person. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Desmond. Oi. What's going on? Hey, hey, they... you know what I... Who's this? You don't know this call, you know? Well, you see, well, are, you, are you well surprised that I want to find out who's this? What happened, partner? <laughs> What's up? Ah, good, ah, good. Mm-hmm. You know what I doesn't really wish? Mm-hmm. I wish that, you see, like in those Muslim countries where they have those speakers on every corner and when they're ready, they're doing their prayers, they're here and, yeah, and everything, yeah. going uh, through. You, you wish Trinidad I, had that, eh? I really wish Trinidad <laughs> had that. <laughs> well, we, really we, are more, we are better than that, but it's just that it, 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 in terms of radio stations, but everybody, remember, it's a democratic place, eh? So, you know, everybody had their own choice. All right? No, but... It is true, it's everybody's choice, but there's, man, mm. there's no other genre of music that could have people pouring out into the street and overflowing the road like how Soka does do it. We know that. So. We know that. We know that. Yes, I. All yes. Right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Desmond. How are you, sir? Well, I, I ain't sure after this call. I ain't gonna be sure. Go ahead. Well, you know, Chancellor Boy, you're always contrary. <laughs> you're asking everybody how could you go on here, etc., and not love your culture. Yeah, go ahead. What do you your culture doesn't love you? How, 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 how your culture would not love you? Tell, explain that. Okay. Huh? Explain how your culture would not love you. Let the world hear I'll you. Tell you what. Well, okay, well, let me explain to that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you get the emotions from Trinidad when you're going away to play or you're going your own? Or you play for yourself? I mean, I play for myself. People hire me and I, and I go and do what I have to do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How many Calypsonians get money from the government? Plenty. Or other sort of Plenty. 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 Okay. Plenty. Plenty, yeah. Plenty. Uh-huh. Yeah. Plenty. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 work for and club. And, and um, um, when could attest to this? Apply for a cultural icon. For a few pennies, and they say, no, they can't do that. I will leave it right there. We you know what I'm talking about. You probably know, do. The, the, the whole point I about it is, oh, hello, hello. They have ways of going about getting that, you know. You know, there's, say, X, Y, Z, and expect. We, we, we went to the Minister of Culture, who mm-hmm. happens to also know the person. Mm-hmm. We went to the, um, the tourist board here. But they said over to us boy here. Mm-hmm. We went to the um, just the embassy here and they said they would they don't get donations, but they would no, they said they can't contribute anything financially which we weren't asking for. They said they could make a donation. I said, so you know what? Give me a couple of uh, bottles of rum now. I still have the email. We ain't from them yet. 
igual ya, ya, ya sabe ahorita que ver allá. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it have people who get that kind of stuff, eh? But mm -hmm. I, mm, And, 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 and I also be believe that they, they, they have cultural ambassadors where they choose and they send to different places when they have activities and that kind of thing. That goes on here. But, but, you know, Mr. Yes, sir. You know who the cultural ambassador? Mm. Crazy. Crazy is in everything on Facebook. Crazy. No, but then listen to, to me. Crazy has always yeah. been an ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago's music, yeah. culture and everything. Right. Right? But it's just, you, you, you have to understand that, all right, they don't have to come on the newspaper and every day and say, well, they give X or they send X or they do whatever. Yeah, I mean, come on. But they do it. I like your excuse always. Okay, excuse? All right, dancer boy. All right, brother. Dancer boy said the culture ain't like you, know? I, I don't understand that one, though. Right, but I, I, I have seen that they, they have supported contingents going to different places and you will get grants and that kind of thing. You just have to go through the right channel and you have to start early. You can't want to go next week and come today. Hello, good afternoon. Um, guys, what men, partner? Didn't get a dance say you ask a few bottles of rum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's why you call. Well, that's Tell them it, it passed by you. Yeah, when I've had to give you, you call me and I'll come up to Ocala and collect those bottles of rum. Okay, Mr. Dancer? <laughs> All right, brother. Bless. Ding, 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 ding. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Desmond. Oi. Oui. Um, we had a conversation just now. Mm. When you, I had a call yesterday and the person wanted to get... Um, they're thinking about steel bands. Mm -hmm. They say, well, I call NCC. I say, you do not... Call NCC for Stevens. You go to Pan Trimbago. Right. Each area, you want a California, you go to Tuco. You gotta go to Tuco, well, okay. Great yes. as well. NCC would give you characters. They would send up characters. All right. And I, I explained that to the person yesterday. All right. You have to know who to who go to. Who to go to, to and get uh, to get this and stuff. And then, mm -hmm. then the tourist board would step in. But you can't, crazy cannot help. These people cannot help. You have to direct to these of, you know, these areas. All right, darling. That's, what, I That's what we're talking Okay. About. If you say that they need to be a little more active in, 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 you know, I will say yes. You know, that kind of thing that we need to, 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 to be sending more people to represent and that kind of thing. Because right now it's Jamaica Carnival and, and, and half a Trinidad must be across the... All the artists, everybody, I, as far as I see, have been all the, the, the all the guns on them right now in Jamaica. Right? Where there's soca music, where there's carnival, I'm not saying you can't have carnival without a train here. What do you feel? If a, 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 a different country decides, look, we're going to have carnival. Do you think that they could do it out our artists? To really have a that's, a that's a weird kind of question there's we ain't talking caribbean eh? now nah. caribbean you go to barbados they could they could paddle their own canoe grenada st vincent right but we're talking we ain't talking caribbean here now nah, that, 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 that would be a null and void question really but let's say so somewhere who never had carnival before and they decide to hold a carnival they must call to train but with every world they live in they must bring in to train a green alien a invention a barbadian jamaican whatever otherwise you are carnival now you man <laughs> 15 minutes after 1 o'clock on a good looking Sunday afternoon.
to get up and dance. Good afternoon. Yeah, Nezo. Mm. The, the, the funny question is, will they go? Because uh, they said that I visualize having a threat in Alaska. Mm. And they call in the top gun to come up the answer for. Once and you're paying, been... once you're paying and you have <laughs> thing to guard the call, we gone. <laughs> <laughs> We, I tell All you, right. we gone. Alaska, right. you making joke. Once the money writes, we are getting soca music in Alaska. I hear you, man. Right? Good. Yeah, man. Is that Trini you're talking about? Yeah. Good afternoon. Hi, Devo. Good evening. Hey, what's up? Lady Gypsy here. Hi, darling. What's up? Hi, good. Hi, good. Long good. time, girl. Long time. <laughs> what's happening? I am fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just want I just want to wish um, Ed Watson a happy birthday today. Yeah, but I saw somebody went and, and visited him, and they have a video yeah, right yeah. now on him. Um, yeah, Ed's still there, 94, you know, right? Yeah, they wow. sent it on my wall for me too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know today was his birthday. Was his birthday, yeah, I didn't know that either. Okay. Nice, darling. And also Pink Panther. All right. Today's Pink yeah, Panther yeah. too. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, okay, darling. Baby. Yeah, cool. Hey, good afternoon. Whoa. You need to call us back. Welcome you live. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Desmond. Oi. Hi, this is Diana from Kissimmee, Florida. Hi, Diana. What's up, man, darling? I'm fine, thank you. Tell me. Now coming from church. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm calling about um what that what dancer call and say and say. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what did what I I know what he's talking about, and I'm trying to say that. Last year, he did try to get some help right. for someone coming over. Right. And really, truly, I think it's sad that the government can't help some more because I have gone to other associations that had functions. Right. And their government could afford to send people to perform mm. for them without their organization having to pay anything. It was sent free from their government. From their government to government. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. And he was, what he was asking for wasn't much. He was just asking for assistance with a plane ticket. Right. You know, 
And I think they could have, it's for someone who's a very cultural person in Trinidad and Tobago and who has a culture all over the world. Right. And for us to give him something and for them to help, in, even in a small way, they could have done that. And they never did, and they never sent the initiative. And he's still trying again. They sent him to different sources, right. and nobody returned. Any nobody returned an answer. Exactly. So what he's saying is the truth. All it's right. not that his culture don't like us. You know, it's right. what our culture do for us do and for what we so. do for it. All right, darling. Blessings. Okay. Yeah, I man. just need to put my teeth in. That is what All we're right. talking about. Blessings. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, brother. Good. Listen. Are you good? Nice. Well, I want to say happy birthday to Savi, which you know all going Yeah, Savi, to Savi, today, Savi. You probably went to church birthday. and thing, man. Because you, you yeah. like, you're the food, huh? Yeah? Well, happy birthday to Savi. Nice, man. Blessings. I went there. Bang, bang, padaga, ding, ding, diggy, ding. 22 minutes after 1 o'clock. Bang, 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 I, boy, hmm. it's something that, that, that needs, you know, seeing about in terms of, of, of how do you get the, the, the funding for cultural events, that kind of thing. And the right channels to go through. They, they, they need to probably have, have some way that you could go online and get all the information and set the things straight, really. As to who you could go, who, what you need to do, what you need to ask for, what you... Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Because as far as I know, some people get... I don't know if you have to be somebody friend or something, but they get. You know. So at 2 o'clock, we have the Mercy March coming live on WAC Radio. A uh, big march in San Fernando. The Mercy March is on. I'll see the boss man. I'll send me some information here. So they're probably organizing themselves to go live at 2 p.m. To, for the Mercy March. Right here on Work Radio. So let me continue the soakerization of your Sunday. You ready? Tango, diggy, diggy. Tango, diggy, diggy. Hey, hey. I think you know. See when I get dressed. It's a home for the fun with my friend. Them. And they don't for the run. Me as experts. And don't to hurt. If they bring more gal, well, that can serve. Yeah. Today is a good day to have a good day. And join in the line. Now, seeing that today is Ed Watson's birthday, of which I just found out. You know, we don't let anything like that pass. Just so. so let me pay a little tribute to Ed, right? Celebrating 94 years today.
Also, let me say happy birthday going out to the collectors, boys. Who win? Happy birthday, brethren. Yeah, man. I have, a certain, I have a question here, right? Somebody called me and gave me the front liners of Ed Watson through the years. Let me see if you really know this band. Now, I don't know for sure how much. I know about three. We wait for me. Right? But somebody called me. Let me see if it have more. And let me know some of the front line singers of Ed Watson and the Brass Circle. 6524901. Music. 1786292 Or 7664920 That's the WhatsApp number. Let's see if you know band. Hello. Jesse. Yeah, give me some of the front liners. I'm here. I know two Erelashi saying Ryan. That is your only two, you know? Yes, sir. Alright, well that well yeah, alright, good, but I'm more than that. Only, a, only somebody from St. Margaret's or Pleasant Spark will know one of the other frontliners at that band. Good afternoon. Guys, man. Oi. Let me see if I could get the karaoke. Um, sing in the hand. Right. Errol Ashe. Right. Pelham Goddard. Pelham was singing in that band? He was a frontliner. Doing what? I talk about Whatever singers. Was, yeah, the singers. 93 I know. Well, I know. Well, I, I, I don't need to alter that tree good. <laughs> I'll never say that. But okay, I'm talking right. about singers. Is <laughs> that <laughs> one more they need to call, boy? Right? And you have to be from either St. Margaret's or Pleasant Park. Oh, yeah, real avid follower of Ed Watson and the Bicycle to know that next man. Anybody, anybody want to try? Happy birthday, Ed. See if the name David Henry will kind of judge your brain a little bit. Yeah, David was a frontliner with Ed Watson for some years. David Henry. Out of St. Margaret's. You know Beulah? I think that was Beulah's brother. Sing Murray. Yeah. For the master of Soka. Remember. Hello. Yeah, we're so tired. Versatile used to sing with Ed Watson too? Yeah. Uh, I, I ain't too sure. I ain't know about that one. Somebody had to say yes to that. I ain't sure. Like that. That is so good. That is so good. A little bit. That is so 
And you know, Edward Sue was around from since the big band days, you know. Fitz Vaughn and all of them, you know. Ed come out at that era. Richard is asking me, what about the musicians? I ain't too sure about the musicians, you know, partner. People are like the one of the callers said, well, Pella I might have a little stint with them. I'm not too sure about some of the musicians. If you only want to call and let me know who are some of the musicians in the band, it's also welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Desmond. I'm hearing today of our very own Wayne's birthday and Savvy's birthday. Wayne from Canada? I mean, um, Orlando? Yeah, is his birthday? I don't know. I'm, I ain't sure about Wayne. I ain't Wayne Godfather, but I know today's Savvy. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I so you, li- you, 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 li- you live in right there, close to the man, and you don't know if today's the birthday? You asking me? So I guess if you're close to somebody, you have to know that it's their birthday because they're close to them. Well, but that, that's supposed to be your neighbor, your, your, your brother's keeper. You're supposed okay, to be a brother's keeper. What happened? His birthday is November 30th. You are that, okay, well, he was born the same day with me. <laughs> okay. Eh? Well, look how far you live in and you know mine, though. If you listen to some of this music, I could be wrong, eh? But you see that new Afrobeat thing that they have even listened to Ed Watson's music. I mean, I I I feel that's why here in they too, you know. Afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Desmond. Hey. And how are you today? Trying to be good. You're, you're trying to be good. You're good. You're doing good. You're doing very well. This you're is fine. your new best, your new best friend. Uh, yes, you're doing good. I have a new best friend, boy. Wow, you can't remember. Uh, girl, I. <laughs> the among the best friend I have. Uh, and you, you tell me, get all the people first. Oh, uh-huh. you. <laughs> you know. <who? laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't stay too long. How are you going to stay there so long? <laughs> How are you going, darling? Bless it. I'm good. I'm still down here in Laumin. Mm. All right here in Laumin. Nice one. Great. Great yeah, is the so word. Let me, mm-hmm. I don't know when you're going there, so because I have a... Yeah, so I think that's... All right, darling. Yeah. Blessings. Good. <laughs> all right, then. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. Okay. I don't let you call cook, right? By you, eh? I'm so no, <laughs> you know what to expect. 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 They must, they must have some respect. Huh. Respect. Respect. Come in strong, rolling down right under. I say, clearly, they give me room to suffer. Join this jam, drink strong in my water. Look, woman, grab a man. 
soca music, sweet boy. Hey. No, but listen to the difference, right? The difference of the music now to then. Yeah, I mean, everybody had to be in the studio in this band, yeah. No, no, no instrument coming off and no computer and all kind of thing here, you know. You understand? Everybody had to be in the studio. Good afternoon. Oh, so you know the name is, um, um, the name is Kepi, but I'm not going to lose since Calypso, my father, um, um, Karina, um, Eralashi, Eralashi. Right, Eralashi. Sorry, Eralashi, yeah. Mm. Okay? All right, thanks. All right. Ding, 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 ding. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Desmond. How are you doing? Hi, good, darling. What's up with you? I didn't know pork or pork, no beef. No beef, Me and then... Sharon just... Uh. Me and Sharon want to wish you a happy Sunday. We in sunny St. Martin. All, all in sunny St. Martin? Yeah, and Sharon, don't there with you? Me. Don't tell Desmond I'm in the kitchen cooking this stew chicken. Don't call my name. You know, Desmond can't hang around. No, no, Sharon, 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 listen to me. I going to tell Gail, Dale, don't eat that. <laughs> 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 Sharon, we want to send out birthday greetings to Savi and to yeah. um the, the guy in Florida. Yeah. Um Wayne. and all those who are celebrating birthdays together. Yes. Yeah, all today. right, darling. Ah. Blessings. So all right. Thank cool. you. Mr. <laughs> all right, good. Sharon. Yes, darling. It's two chicken you're making. Yes, and Gail made kalalu and potato salad so, and macaroni. So answer me a question. Uh, so the, the, the colonel yes. in St. Martin does sell true chicken? Nope, I made, I cut up the chicken. They formed that way in, listen, from scratch, Dazzo. Uh, from, so, so what? From, from the egg, you make a chicken <laughs> and then... <laughs> Grow, then I buy the big, get the big chicken, I cut it off. I cut it off. All right, darling. Yeah. Only enjoy it. Enjoy all yourself, right? Okay. Thank you, for blessings. Yeah, blessings, man, for sure. All right. Let's see who's on the line. Good afternoon. Wow. Hey, call back, call back, man. What? Welcome here live. Hey, there's one afternoon. Hey, what's up? While we're while we talking about music and stuff, right? Who was the band that used to play for Maestro? I, I'm not sure, you know, no, not the band, I, I think... Um, that wasn't Alan Bernard. Is, uh, boy, is according to who was the, the, the arranger, who was the producer, whatever studio he used to go in. I could find out that though. That's something yeah, that, that, that we could find out. You know why? Because yesterday I pulled up an old maestro named Pliny. Mm -hmm. I want to sing my story, I want to sing. Right. And here now, that tune, you see that tune? It's real, nice soccer. Nice soccer. If I, I want to know who just started. Who just put yourself? All right, cool. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey. Did you have did you have singing Diane on, on Yeah 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 we talk about singing Diane, yeah. Yeah man. Okay. All right. All right. You all know that Ed Watson was the man who produced 
sugar boom boom, right? And I think this one also with Kitchener with it uh, just a little bit. He did, he did some awesome work with Kitchener also. The only thing I, I, I think I, I real sad about in this country is that when you listen to some of the, the, the other media houses with the younger DJs, I mean, they, 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 don't, they, they don't even know who is who from that kind of era and that kind of thing too now. And I think that, that, that is only, that, that, that is my main concern, that, that you have to know where you come from before you could walk anywhere. It's good afternoon. Desi, good afternoon. Good Desi, this soca song in so much like what you call, let me say, authentic soca. In addition to that, I'm asking myself whether he did any work with Arrow. Although I know Lefton did some work, a lot of work with Arrow, I wonder, because Arrow, did, Arrow that, that soca beat is so similar to Ed Watson, um, that beat of that 80s. You mm-hmm. know, you, you could correct me, but it, it's so... It's so authentic, like like, like um, um, some of Leston work and, and some of Arrow, that, that, that beat. Yeah, well, that, that Arrow used to work a lot with Leston, yeah. They, 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 are, they, know, they I, are men out, out, out in the world who are, who are stars of, of soca music is the work of Leston Paul. Yeah. Plenty, yes, plenty of people that, that a lot I know, of people but don't what know. I'm, but what I'm saying is that Ed Watson giving you that, that similar beat no, no, uh, well, in the early time with, uh, with Leston. But was, uh, you know, let's. It, it, yeah, had, it, had, it, it had plenty people out in at that, at that time. Yeah, you, you know, um, plenty of uh, arrangers out, out, out there too that you use a song. You know, just the same, just as good. Plenty, plenty okay. colors. Yeah. All right. Got you. All right. When you listen to to, to, to soca music, I mean. They call it soca now, but in the seventies, when a tune like this playing was soca, if you were you so fat with, you understand what I say? It's only now that they, they want to be modernized and a man buy a computer and you have it in the bedroom and call you in with a mic and you, you make a song. And if you look sharp, it's a big hit too. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Desmond. What's up? I'm there. <clears throat> I'm an old fella. Nice. I used to dance with a band when I was a young fella mm. by the name of Watson and his Watsonian Orchestra. Right. Could you find out if that is the same band of... What, the Watkins? No, 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 no. The I Watsonians. I know about yes. the Watsonians, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. And that was that was in the fifties, eh? That is in the fifties. Uh, yes, I used to dance with that band. Okay. So I want to find out if it's the same band that is that is. Ed Watson. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is a very good question. Yes, thank you. Very very good question. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, but our blessings. Wow. Because I because in the long time I used to stock records, mm. and I still have. This some of Ed Watson's records here now. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. That is nice. One. Thank you. Yeah, man. Okay, nice. Very good question. The Watsonians. Stephen. And Sabina, by you um... Happy birthday, Ed Watson. Take your flowers, partner.
So in the next 11 minutes, we'll be taking you live to the Mercy March. Our guys are on location. I'm just waiting to cross at 2 o'clock. And Yena, I think this is one of Ed's biggest songs, right? Still plays at parties and still causing Bacchanal. That's just my opinion. I want 
hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoy doing it for you. Join me and Tony tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Inside the Culture Drive. 3 to 7. Weekdays. Right here on WACK 901. We take you home in fine style, man. Yeah. But the longest rope of an end, it won't be too long, my friend. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh-huh. We took safe, blessings, guidance, and protection. Thank you so much, baby. And I can't forget goodness. Goodness. I will. Blessings. Yeah. Right. Do the, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Tell them what to do, Errol, boy. Tell them what they must do. Just a bit will cost to the Mercy March. Have yourself a fantastic Sunday evening, everybody.
subjects are waiting the boss man and when he says we're ready we head across to the mercy march
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening. Good evening to our listeners. Good evening to all that is present. We are here at Presentation College in San Fernando for the Mercy Sunday experience. Today, in the Catholic faith, it's Mercy Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. And we're here to celebrate with all. As we start here today, we were in conjunction with the Zion RC community and the Southern Vicariate of the Catholic Churches. That's all the Catholic Churches in the Southern Vicariate under the directorship of Father David Cannon. At this present time, you are hearing one of the choirs, Dominic and Friends. So let us praise and worship at this time with Dominic and Friends. Jesus, I will rejoice for Jesus made me glad. Jesus made me glad, oh Jesus made me glad. I will rejoice for Jesus made me glad. Take a grip, take a grip, take another grip, my brother. Hold on and never let go. No matter what the people of the world may say, hold on and never let go. Take a grip, take another grip, my sister. Hold on and never let go. No matter what the people of the world may say, hold on and never let go. Just to let you know that this celebration happens all over Trinidad and Tobago today, Mercy Sunday. So we have other celebrations all through the thing, all through Trinidad and Tobago. Our program today involves praise and worship, general intercessions, a featured speaker, worship songs, dance for mercy, and other general intercessions. You could also hear from our Father David Khan, who is the parish priest of OLPH, the community of San Fernando. We end today's proceedings with adoration and benediction. celebration started at 11.45 this morning at Bandstand Harris Promenade to the streets of San Fernando. And then we got to Presentation College right here in San Fernando. For the listeners who are all over the world, as we listen to WAC, the time of WAC Radio for bringing this broadcast today. Kenny and his team has always been supportive and we continue to thank them. He woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me he's not alive. I spoke to him today. He opened up my back and eyes. As I introduce myself, I am Suzanne Wellington Miller, your host for today. We will have a cool host as well coming to assist us by the name of Jennifer Allen. She is part of Zion Community. I am part of World Age. Boom! Our Lady of Perpetual Health Church in San Fernando. Also on Harris Promenade. As you listen with us today, we encourage you to journey with us. Journey with us for mercy this for this entire land of Trinidad and Tobago. We know all sorts of things are happening at this present time. And we plead it to God for mercy so that we can assist with what's happening. We believe that God can deliver us. Just to give you an idea of the communities that are with us today, we have Cedra, Spiri, Labre, Laramine, Monrepo, Moruga, New Grant, Pinal, Point Pair, Point Fortin, Princess Dung, Rio Claro, San Fernando, Separia, and South Old Bridge. We started early this morning with the Point Fortin Choir. 
they came up and they were with us while the persons were walking on the road. Jesus name so sweet. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, it is my joy to welcome you to our Divine Mercy in person celebration. Let's say praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 All of you from all over GH Diocese, we have some from Northern, Central, Eastern. Anybody from Tobago here? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Welcome. And of course, all our Southerners. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? Amen. And we are here to plead and invoke the divine mercy of God. The mercy of God is available to us, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. And we are here to seek and invoke God's mercy. I'd like to invite us to stand as I hand over to Margaret Mary Woods to do the opening prayer. Praise God. Let us stand, brothers and sisters. Let us stand, let us quieten our hearts. And we want to establish the word of God from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. God's word, God's promise to us. If my people who bear my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I Myself will hear their cry, I will forgive their sins and restore their land. If my people who bear my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways. I myself will hear their cry. I will forgive their sins and restore their Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we hear your word. We believe that you have spoken to us as a people, as a nation, the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. You promise that you will heal and restore. If we seek your face, if we turn from our evil ways, you from heaven, you will hear us, you will forgive us, and you will restore us. We thank you for this day, this day of divine mercy. Mercy to Trinidad and Tobago, mercy to the whole world. And even as we gather here, there are many throughout this nation who have gathered to pray and to seek your mercy for this country. Jesus also said to us, where two or three of you come together in my name, I am with you. Jesus, you are here with us. You're here, you're on our side. You also said where two of you agree to pray about anything here on earth, it is agreed upon by your Father in heaven. We have your word, we have your promise. We believe it, we receive it. And we open our hearts to you now that your mercy will descend upon us. Your mercy will descend upon Trinidad and Tobago. 
your mercy will penetrate the depths of our beings to bring about your will of deep repentance and conversion. As you gather your people today, all the prayers that are being prayed, Father, we thank you for grace. We thank you for your spirit who enables us from within. Continue the work that you have begun in us. Bless us all, oh God, and save your people. Every man, every woman, every child in this nation of Trinidad and Tobago, save, Lord. Save even the, ch the children in the womb. Save, save, Jesus. You came to save all. You came to save all, and we are putting our trust in you today. We thank you for the proceedings of this day, this afternoon, and what you have begun. We know that you're able to complete. So complete the work, Father. Jesus, Holy Spirit, we trust in you. Amen. 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 You just heard from you Margaret Woods for the opening anthem. prayer. And now we have the national anthem. to have received God's mercy and that is why we are here today. I'd like to thank Dominic and friends for leading us so far and I would like to invite all the leaders of the Southern Vicariate to please join us on stage, all members of the planning committee. A lot of work has gone into what we are celebrating today. So please, all the leaders of the Southern Vicariate and the planning committee, please come forward. You can take your seats. We will now go into our collection as we are blessed to receive God's mercy, we are invited to pay it forward as well. So the marshals will be around shortly with the collection baskets. The people will be in the high-vis vests. All right. And while this is going on, we are on, listening Dominic to Dominic Bourne, yes. Michael Bourne, sorry, so, who is giving some instructions. We're going to have our collection at this time, and then we're going to continue. We were going to hear Dominic and friends as the continue to keep us to lead us in song sorry and keep us posted after this we're going to have our intercessory prayers
faithfulness each day. We invite you at this time to meditate with us as you listen to Dominican Friends. Cry out to the Lord for mercy. Cry out to the Lord for mercy and for healing for yourselves, for your family, and also for the nation. Most important, for government, for members of parliament, the judiciary, all over. We're just looking to bring mercy and compassion on all. On all. Today we say thank you. We say thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us great weather so that we could have been through the streets ministering to all peoples, helping them to come closer to God and to walk through this divine mercy mission with us. As I said before, this mercy mission, Mercy Sunday, sorry, is celebrating as an event hosted throughout Trinidad and Tobago by the Catholic churches. It's led by Zion ROC in conjunction with the Southern Vicariate who is led by Father David Kana. We have people members from other Vicariates with us here at Central Suburban. We have, I think we have Tobago, one or two members of Tobago are here with us as well. You're going to be hearing from um, the feature speaker who is Father Steve Ransom. His topic, His Mercies Endures Forever, Psalm 118. I encourage you to listen and to stay focused with us today as we journey through this celebration. We thank all the listeners that are with us, all the viewers that are with us, as we also thank WAC Radio 90.1 FM because without them, we could, you couldn't be hearing us. And I know we have people from the states listening with us and from all over the world. Continue to be with us. We're here until 5 p.m. i 
once again for Dominic and Friends. Dominic and Friends. So this event is in collaboration of the entire Southern Mercarians. So I would like to hear all those from different communities in the Southern Mercarians. So I know we have point four in the house. We have there's a four in the house. Good, good, good. We have an EP now in the house. Very good, very good. Who else we have? Who else we have? Let me hear some names. Where? Monrepo, Monrepo in the house. Very nice, very nice. Where else? Where else? Let me hear. Real Faro, Real Faro in the house. Ooh, not much here. Labre, Labre, Labre in the house. Very good. Marabella. Any Marabella? Oh, you good. We have some Marabella. We have some Marabella. Great, great. Laramie? Oh, Laramie? Woo, Clacks and Bay and all. Tortuga, Tortuga in South? Tortuga, Tortuga, Tortuga. Amen, 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 amen. Mayo! Good, good, so good, Mr. Good, Michael good. Bourne is yeah, just shouting out all the communities Mayaro. that are here today. Ah, and we have as far as Mayaro. 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 We have Point Fourteen. We have... Monry Poe, we have Marabella, we have Princess Town. So all these seven groups are here. We have Tobago here, we have St. Marugo, we have OLPH, of course, we have Vistabella. So they've all come to shame with us and to journey with us on this messy Sunday. Sorry? Point up here as well. Point up here. Oh, they are saying OLPH, and he's not calling the whole parish OLPH. Hoover. 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 So Thanks. now I would like to invite all those who will be doing our general intercessions to please join me on stage, our general intercessions. And when we say general intercessions, we mean prayers for different aspects of the church. So we have the church first, we have leadership after, we have idolatry of also, pleasure of the flesh, we, we have, have some What is the sixth form blocking back for all the youth after the walk? Some drinks? And this walk comprised of youths as well as adults. And we had some uniform groups with us, scouts, we had the cubs, we had girl guides. And then we had the youth of the parish, which is the people preparing for confirmation. They were also on the work. At this time, we're going to have the general intercessions. We're starting, I think, with leadership, and that's Vianne Moray I'm seeing close to the stage. The word of God says in John 13, 13, 15, you call me master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and master, have washed your feet, you should watch, wash each other's feet. I have given you an example that you may copy what I have done. We pray, Jesus, through this word you teach us that to effectively lead, we must learn to follow. You teach us that true, dis true leadership focuses on following your example, meeting the needs of others, and empowering one another. Grant our leaders the humility to emulate your leadership, which is prevalent throughout the scriptures and to fully embrace the life of service to each other to which you have called us. May those of us in leadership not regard ourselves more highly than we should, but by our lives welcome those whom you call to this ministry and mentor them according to your will. Lord, hear us. The word of God says in Philippians 2, 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, 
but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. We pray. Condition the hearts of your leaders, Lord, so that love will be the only motive for our service. With the help of your Holy Spirit, may we search our beings and put to death any personal agendas. Deliver us from the desires of being esteemed, loved, extolled, honored, praised, preferred to others, consulted and approved. May your precious blood flow back to the moment of our conception and heal any brokenness or trauma that may influence our motives, Lord. Loving Father, create in each leader a sound mind and a pure heart. Lord, hear us. The word of God says, in James 1, 5, if there is any one of you who needs wisdom, he must ask God, who gives all freely and ungrudgingly, it will be given to him. In Proverbs 19, 20, listen to advice, accept correction to be the wiser in the time to come. We pray. Gracious God, May all in leadership rely upon, not upon our own understanding, but in humility, recognize that no one person has all the answers and skills in every area. We seek your wisdom for all leaders, Lord, today and at every stage of our ministry. Grant us the ability to recognize and listen to your voice by contemplating you in all of creation through our personal and communal prayer, and via good counsel from those through whom you speak. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The word of God says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God's gift was not a spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power and love and self-control. We pray. As we engage the challenges of today's world, we ask that you deliver us from any fear that may prevent us from living with compassion for you, for others, and for ourselves. Jesus, deliver us from the fear of being humiliated, despised, suffering rebukes, of being calumniated, forgotten, ridiculed, wronged, and suspected. May we be free to joyfully execute your instructions with kindness, compassion, humility, gentleness, and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Friends. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we come, Lord, and we ask for your divine mercy upon each and every soul here, Lord God, and upon our universal Catholic Church. We ask you, Lord God, to have your divine intervention in your church, Lord. Lord God, you establish the church from your disciples, Lord God. Heavenly Father, you said in your scripture, upon this rock I will build my church. And you gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Lord God, as we stand under the words of the disciples, trusting in you, Lord God, as church, we bring before you each and every member, Lord God, those who have left, Lord God, and those who are still with us. Lord God, we pray for the church, Lord God, that they will rise up, O oh Heavenly Father, rise up and bear new fruit in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would have your divine intervention, that your way will be upon us, Lord God, that you would lead our feet, Lord God, and happy are the feet that bear good news. Heavenly Father, we walk solemnly in your grace, Lord God. We ask you today, Lord God, to send forth your spirit upon the universal Catholic Church, Lord God. Surround us, Lord God, with your mantle of protection. Let the precious blood of Jesus flow through each and every member, Lord God, our Pope Francis, all our bishops, the clergy, the magisterium, Lord God, 
All the Eucharistic and lay ministers, Heavenly Father. All of our priests, Heavenly Father, the cardinals, the deacons, Lord God. All those, who, Heavenly Father, who go in the church, Lord God, and ask for your mercy, Lord God, who render their services of missionary to you. All our sisters, our nuns, Lord God. Heavenly Father, those who are seeking, Lord God, vocational life, those in married life, those in ministry, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, today your anointing will fall upon the church, Lord God. That, Heavenly Father, you will stand firm in us, Lord God. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And where the Lord thy God is, there is freedom. So today, Lord God, we come as one people, as church, and we praise your name. We glorify your name, Heavenly Father. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We ask for your intercession, Lord God, for the sick, Lord God, for the dying, Lord God. We ask for your intercession, Lord God, for those who have lost their way, Heavenly Father. We ask for your intercession, Lord God, for those in corruption, Lord God, even in the church, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you will bring back ministries of fulfillment in your church, Lord God. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bring back your youth in the church, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to call them forth. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let your mighty name reign, Lord God. Let us not be afraid to carry the torch of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world, Lord God. And let them know that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We give you praise today, Lord God, as church, Lord God. As we stand on your word, Heavenly Father, we know that Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one come unto the Father except to him. So today we come in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord God, to send forth your mighty sword, your Holy Spirit in us, Lord God. Let us, Lord, Lord God, not be afraid to declare you. Because, Lord, you said those who are ashamed of me before men, you will not declare them before your Father, Lord God. We give you praise, Heavenly Father. Send what you are anointing, Lord God. Send for the angels, the legions of angels to surround your church, Lord God. You said, Heavenly Father, that none will be against it, Lord God. That not even the gates of hell will prevail and we stand on your word. Because the word is not futile, Lord God. You said, Heavenly Father, your word will not come back to you, boy, Lord God. We believe that the word of God is alive and active and cuts like any two-edged sword. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise today, Lord God. Because we claim victory in the name of Jesus Christ. That we as the Catholic Church, Lord God, will not only be Catholic, Lord God, but we will be apostles. We will be holy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because we are one holy and apostolic church in Jesus' name. And we stand on that word of God. We know, Lord God, that you, God, you are God. You are Father. You are Abba, Father. You are Alpha and the Omega. You are the great I am. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the unchanging God. You are the God that hears. You are the God that knows. You are the God that experiences. You are the God that feels. You are the God in whom we can put our trust and our hope is in you, O oh God. We know, Heavenly Father, Lord God, that you are the God, oh Heavenly Father, that leads us to still and calm waters. That you are the same God that goes out and finds the one lost sheep rejoicing, Lord God, when it is reunited, Lord God, with the 99. Because scripture says, Lord God, that when one is lost, Lord God, and it comes back to the repose, Lord God, heaven rejoices. Today, Lord God, let heaven rejoice. Not for one, but for millions, oh God. That, Lord, they will hear your voice and they will answer you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we pray for the church in politics. That, Lord God, even those who are politicians and they know you, Lord God. And they trust you that today, Lord God, they will stand on you, O oh God, on your word. Father God, for we lay everything at your feet in this divine mercy Sunday, Lord God. As we ask, Lord God, St. Christina to pray for us. All the angels and saints to pray for us. May they intercede for us. May the Blessed Mother intercede for us. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, please forgive us of our sins and hear our prayer. Lord, hear us. And that was the prayers for the church. And we now have somebody coming to pray for idolatry as occult pleasures of the flesh. 
We want to continue crying out for God's mercy. That's Mr. Pastor. On our nation, Trinidad and Tobago. We want to pray for mercy. And come against the spirit of adultery that is upon our nation. Deuteronomy, Exodus 30, 20, sorry, says, from verses 3 to 6, You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in the heavens, or the earth beneath, or in the waters and the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, Yahweh your God, am a jealous God. And I punish the father's for it. In the sons, the grandsons, and the great-grandsons of those who hate me. But I show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Deuteronomy 30 says, verse 17, But if your heart strays, if you refuse to listen, if you let yourself be drawn into worship of other gods and serving them, I tell you today, you will certainly perish. Lord, carry for mercy. For the many ways of God, we have erected gods in our lives, in this nation, in the many ways, the many gods we have bowed down to in our nation of Trinidad and Tobago, and in our homes and families, the many gods we have lifted up to and give honor and glory to. Today we ask your mercy, O God, upon our lives, for breaking the first commandment of God, of having other gods before him. Father God, we cry out for your mercy here on Trinidad and Tobago. And for breaking that commandment of God, we ask your mercy, Lord. We ask your mercy upon us. We ask you to forgive us. We ask you, God, to renew your presence in us. We ask you, by the blood and water that flowed from your wounded side, to wash and cleanse us from God. Deuteronomy 18 says in verses 10 to 12, There must be never anyone among you who makes his son and daughter pass through the fire, who practices divination, who is a soothsayer, ogre, or sorcerer, who uses charms, consult ghosts and spirits, or call upon the dead. For the man who does these things is detestable to Yahweh your God. Lord, in many ways in our nation, we have indeed invoked other gods. In many ways, even in our very homes, we have erected altars to false gods. In many ways, we have brought our children unto the powers of demonic forces by bathing them, washing them, bringing them to all sorts of people for power and prestige. In many ways, oh God, we have exalted other gods in our homes. In many ways, oh God, we ask the mercy today for having done this, Lord Jesus, for causing our children to engage in rituals to demonic powers. For we ourselves take the demonic forces upon us by tying ourselves with cords and charms and spells and hexes for power and prestige. We ask your mercy today, O God. Mercy upon us, O God. Mercy upon our homes that is under the influence of these demonic forces by the blood and water from your side, wash and cleanse our home this evening and break these powers that have come upon our families, O oh God, because of our own wickedness as it were, our sinfulness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. First John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. You must not love this fast world or anything that is in the world because nothing the world has to offer the sensual body, the lustful eye, pride and possessions, could ever come from the Father, but only from the world. And the world with all it craves is coming to an end. But anyone who does the will of God remains forever. Lord, we want to stay in your presence. Not only now, but when we cross over to the other side. We want to remain in your presence. So we want to repent, O oh God, for these things of the world, things of the flesh that have us bound up, that cause us giving our life, our blood to these false gods, to these pleasures. These things we have exalted above God in our lives. 
these things, O oh God, that we work our life out for, that we give our sweat and blood to, O oh God, which will also come to an end. Father God, help us to reach out, to embrace the mercy that you are holding up to us, especially today, this day of divine mercy. We ask your mercy and forgive us. For oh Lord, giving our lives, giving our adoration, giving the glory and honor to the things of this world, embracing them, these things that have caused our families to split, marriages to be dissolved because of the pleasures of the world. Father God, we pray and we ask your mercy even now. We cry out for mercy in our homes and families. We pray again by the blood and water that flowed from your side as a fountain of mercy for us. We're so upon our people here in Trinidad and Tobago. And every one of us sitting here in the presence of the Lord and set us free that we may experience that mercy that God, through the Son, has poured out upon us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Medical friends giving us some uh, meditation songs. Right after this, we'll have the Shakti of Divine Mercy being done by students of St. Joseph's Convent, San Fernando and Presentation College. Accompanying them will be one teacher from Presentation College. So let's continue to listen to Dominic and Friends.
Dominican friends, and we continue to thank them for their ministry. And the Divine Mercy, the first decade is going to be done by Presentation College. Two boys from Presentation, it's Luca and Logan, they are twin. Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and for those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The second decade of the champions are for those suffering from mental illnesses. The such second as decade is going to be led by Chelsea and Salas. Chelsea from Convent and Salas from Presentation College. Dear Lord Father, I am for you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and the sins of the Holy For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The faith that gave the shadow is that he is the ghost who lacks faith. And this decade is led by Shemaya and Jidon. Shemaya from Convent and Jidon from Press. This fourth decade is being led by Ruben and Robert. Ruben is the student, Robert Ennis is the teacher from Presentation College. is going to be led by Antonia and Kelsey. Sorry, Kelisa. They are both from Convent.
after that was the Messy Chaplet recited by both Presentation and St. Joseph Convent, San Fernando, the two Catholic churches, Catholic College, right here on Harris Promenade in San Fernando. We are now listening to Dominic and Friends as they help us in song to continue this mercy journey. you to continue to walk with us in mercy and continue to pray wherever you are. Just for your sink yourself into prayer for mercy for this nation of Trinidad to be one All extension of the world. Are held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. Oh yes you have. And all my life you have been so, so of the goodness of God. Sing it once again. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy. For your mercy never fails me. Oh, I mean, as we listen to this inspirational song, we really love the Lord. We ask you to open your hearts and to welcome the Lord's love as we continue to journey in mercy, in mercy, in mercy for all of us, all who are listening on WAC 90.1. All our times, joy. Lord has been faithful to all of us in different ways, different times. But He's always been faithful to us. Continue to thank Him and to journey with Him. It's 
running out to me, single on my line, and all my life you have been faithful. Oh yes, you have, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am faithful, oh I will sing of the goodness. Yes, and, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. introduction, a powerful and dynamic speaker, the parish priest of Shogonas, ordained on May 29, 2010, at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Please join me in welcoming Father Steve Ransom. So our featured speaker today Stretch is Father Steve Father Ransom, someone who is well known throughout Trinidad and Tobago as a well, as far reaching of all of the Caribbean, a dynamic priest. He belongs to St. Philip and St. James Parish in Shogonas. Yes, Genesis was very blessed to have him. We are your soul. You are a God. We are your people. Right now, everybody's pouring a blessing on him before he comes to us to worship. We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. Not by might, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing in the heat? <laughs> Praise God. It's good to be alive, though. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm really grateful to God, first of all, for this wonderful opportunity to be here with you, to share this time and this space with you. And to thank Almighty God for Zion Community for the wonderful job that this, this ministry has been engaging over all these years. It's more than just throwing events, it's touching people's lives. So thank you very much. Praise be to God. And for all of you all who are here today, because you all have your own struggles, disappointments, fears, anxieties, pains, and aches, 
and you know who to go to. Amen? Amen. And it ain't me. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. My brothers and sisters, today I have this wonderful opportunity to share the word of God with you based on that powerful message from the psalm that reads, His mercy endures forever. I just invite you to say it with me, please. His mercy endures forever. One more time. His mercy endures forever. So whose mercy? Mercy, exactly. And today, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate divine mercy. So my brothers and sisters, when we talk about mercy, mercy comes from one source and one source only. Mercy is from the heart of Almighty God. It is a divine mercy, but it's almost as if we shouldn't even mention divine because it should be self-evident. I can't give mercy if I don't receive it from the one who is divine. It is because I've understood the divine mercy that I can give mercy. It's because I've experienced the divine mercy that I can offer mercy to anybody. I cannot give mercy from my own strength, my own power, my own resources. I don't have the proficiency. It is God who gives mercy. And on this divine mercy day, my brothers and sisters, let us understand the source of mercy. It comes from God and God alone. And his mercy endures forever. His mercy persists forever. His mercy, therefore, speaks to his fidelity and his enduring love and compassion for humanity. So my brothers and sisters, this divine mercy is not a slipshod, piecemeal, one today, one tomorrow kind of mercy. God's mercy, my brothers and sisters, that endures forever is exactly what it means and what the psalmist says it means. This divine mercy, my brothers and sisters, is day in, day out. It is even when I don't feel it, he's offering it. It's even when I don't deserve it, he's offering it. It's not because of my goodness, but it's in spite of my sinfulness. That's God's mercy. That's why, my brothers and sisters, nobody can give mercy but God. We don't have the power to do it. In some ways, my brothers and sisters, as we stress this deep truth of mercy that is divine, ultimately divine, who can talk about mercy as if it's some kind of self or human generating quality, virtue? It is entirely from God, and it is entirely for God's people. My brothers and sisters, God gets nothing from giving us mercy. God does not become more God by offering us mercy. You see how unfair this is? We sin against Almighty God and God, God offers mercy that endureth forever. And he is not more God for offering us mercy. The mercy that God offers us, my brothers and sisters, that we don't deserve is given entirely for our benefit, is entirely for our good. That is the nature of Almighty God. And so my brothers and sisters, when we talk about God's mercy endured forever, we are talking about something so essential in who God is. Psalm 36, 136 also refers to God's mercy. I just want to quote that for you because it's almost like a a litany of thanksgiving where repetitively you hear God's mercy endure it forever. Just read a little line for you just so that you get the sense of it. Psalm 136, and this is the translation I prefer, um, God's mercy. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. You could use love as well. Give thanks to the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endures forever. He alone works wonders for his mercy endures forever. In wisdom he made the heavens for his mercy endures forever. He set the earth firm in the waters for his mercy endures forever. He made the great lights for his The sun, don't mind it hot, to rule the day for his mercy Moon and stars to rule the night, for his mercy endures forever. He, we ain't done there yet, you know. He struck down the firstborn of Egypt. Why? For his mercy endures forever. He brought Israel out from among them, 
for his mercy endures for with mighty hand and outstretched arm for his mercy he split the sea of reeds in two for his mercy endures forever let israel pass through the middle for his mercy endures he drowned pharaoh and all his army brothers and sisters there are three more verses like that you can't exhaust it can't exhaust it god bring me here today for his God give me food to eat today for his. My son that was giving me trouble whole week. He come and talk to me nice this morning for his mercy and yours forever. Amen. We could go on and on, brothers and sisters. My husband who does give... Anyway. <laughs> my wife who... <laughs> and we could go on and on. So what is this mercy we're talking about, brothers and sisters? According to the... If you want to go to the antecedent... Um, understanding or the origins of mercy in the Hebrew understanding. Mercy is really the compassionate disposition to forgive someone or to offer aid, assistance, to help, to give help to somebody in need. It's linked to God's grace. And God's grace is his life and his love. It's linked to God's goodness, God's compassion, God's loving kindness, God's patience. In the Hebrew understanding as Raham or Ranam. Essentially, my brothers and sisters, it is so constituent to who God is that whenever we talk about God, we talk about God's love, his generosity, his kindness, but we have to talk about God's mercy. And today, my brothers and sisters, his mercy that endures forever, this mercy that touches us at the point of our needs, we see that it has been demonstrated throughout humanity, but also throughout human history, his hand at work in our lives. And by this, God shows his faithfulness. He keeps his promises and maintains his covenant relationship with his chosen people, despite their unfaithfulness. Brothers and sisters, when we think about the people of Israel, we think about time and time again, God calling them to this right relationship, this covenantal relationship, this relationship based on God and them. And time and time again, my brothers and sisters, as we heard in the prayer of the faithful, they chose other gods, false gods. They looked at God who was loving and compassionate. And when Moses went up the mountain for 40 days, what did they do? They took the chains, the gold chains, the, the, the metal, and they formed a, a, a calf. To worship the calf, even though Almighty God was showing his mercy for them throughout their own history. Brothers and sisters, the story of Israel is the story of us today. Time and time again, my brothers and sisters, just think of our own lives. Think about the time when we used to pray a lot when we were not feeling well. Think about the time, my brothers and sisters, when we wanted to do well in exams. And every day we praying and doing novenas and going to mass and stations at the cross and helping out in the church. And when things go good, we see you in church again. All it could help, I ain't had no time at all. I get a job. Who gave the job? I'm feeling better now so I could be up on my feet. You know, we just talking to Trinidad. So I could be up on my feet. So if all ain't see me in church, all they go understand, right? No. God was there for you when you were down. All of a sudden, you get spunks, according to the old people. And you don't have time for God again. The story of the people of Israel, my brothers and sisters, is the story of good Roman Catholic Christians. Let me hear amen. amen. Everybody quiet all of a sudden. The only people who make a noise is point four ten people in the... <laughs> my mother from point four ten, eh? Only watch all yourself. Watch all yourself. But brothers and sisters, God's mercy endures forever. In this covenantal relationship between God and humanity, God and Israel, and now God of the people of the new covenant, Christians, it is a story of God's disappointment, God's feeling of rejection. And if I will go so far, we as people in right relationship, covenantal relationship with God, we have abused God. We have been abusive in our relationship with God. How many people, my brothers and sisters, will stay in a relationship if somebody only comes to you when they want something? Not me. Why do you think priests don't get married? <laughs> <coughs> Who 
Who will stay in a relationship, my brothers and sisters, when that person only comes to you when they want something? And jostling you and abusive towards you and demanding and giving you cold treatment and manipulative tactics only when they want something and as soon as they get that something, they're gone. Brothers and sisters, how many of us are like that in our relationship with God? Present, sir. I can't lie. I'm not a hypocrite. And, and the domain of uh, Zion community and Father David can. I can't lie. I have to tell the truth, brothers and sisters. God's mercy is more, brothers and sisters, than just God doing things for we. It's more than just God doing things for we. God's mercy is more even than God saying to us, you have sinned and I have forgiven you. If you don't believe me, brothers and sisters, in scripture, just think of Mark chapter 2, when Jesus is in the room, and there are two things that bring people to a preacher man, and it's not his preaching. One is if they're sick, and the other one is if they have demon. And brothers and sisters, four men or four people bring this man to Jesus, a paralyzed man, so he's sick. But the house full. And what do they do? They lower the man down. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Those who sins you... No, that's later in. That's John. I'm mixing it up. I have a homily to preach today too. But he said to them, your sins are forgiven. And he says, to prove to you the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins, take up your stretcher and go from here. And there's a connection, my brothers and sisters, between forgiving sins and meeting people at the point of their need. Apart from that, my brothers and sisters, where else we have Jesus talking about, I forgive you, I forgive you. No, more than that, we hear Jesus healing, multiplying loaves, casting out demons, proclaiming the kingdom of God. And those two, my brothers and sisters, are instances of God's mercy. Mercy is not just saying, I forgive you. It's saying, I see you. I see you in the point of your need and I want to be there for you. An act of mercy is not only saying, brothers and sisters, you have wronged me and don't worry with it. An act of mercy is saying, I see that you are in need, brother. Come, jump in the car. We're going in the same direction. Mercy. And that's why as Catholics, brothers and sisters, we talk about acts of mercy. That brothers and sisters, if people come to the office in our Catholic churches and we ain't know them, but they have somebody to bury, why do we ask so many questions? She used to go to this church. She used to help out in this church. She brother used to be an altar server. She great, 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 great grandmother used to help with the flower. And if the answers are no, brothers and sisters, then what do we say? Let's be honest. This divine mercy Sunday, all they can't lie. What do we say? Well, I don't like to be a hypocrite. I'll tell you what we'll say. Get the deacon or the lay minister to do it. And if they can't get a lay minister, too bad. It are other parishes. Brothers and sisters, mercy requires something else. Somebody in suffering, somebody in pain. And the question you ask is, how can I help you? Not who you are and your relationship with the church. And I know people say, Father, you're too soft. You have to be more hard and firm with them until something gone wrong with them. Until something gone wrong with them. Brothers and sisters, mercy is not only receiving forgiveness from God. It's a recognition that God sees us and meets us at the point of our need. How many times, my brothers and sisters, people leave the church because when they get sick, nobody comes and visit them. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite. You can't find the Catholics there at all. I'm telling Mr. Chippenis about COVID. You know how long COVID gone? <laughs> even in COVID, them, if you see them full in price, Mart, Pennywise full. But when it comes to visit the sick, COVID. It becomes an excuse and a rejection of God's mercy having received it. We don't like to give it. Brothers and sisters, how many times in our church... We come to church and they have hierarchies in the church. 
and you know them by the surnames. Me ain't calling no name. I have a good relationship with my people in Chagona, so I ain't go damage that, you know. I ain't go mash up that, you know. My central people, we just go down good, you know. So I think, eh? So I think. Me, you know. Brothers and sisters, why do we act like that? Because we have received God's mercy and we don't want to give it. How many times, my brothers and sisters, we are child to baptize? And it's a set of form and documentation and come back tomorrow and three months later. And my point is, my brothers and sisters, they go through all of that and they still leave the church. No. Mercy is about real relationships. People, when they receive mercy, they receive God's love, his grace, his compassion, and his patience. And I want to tell you a truth today, brothers and sisters. When I have experienced mercy, I've experienced mercy not only from God directly, but through the sacramental presence of God in Holy Mother Church. And that part is the redemptive side. I am a priest today because I have experienced mercy in my church. And I thank God for that. People like you all who have shown me love and appreciation in spite of my own shortcomings and idiosyncrasies. And that is what God is calling us to. God's mercy is more than punishment withheld. Scripture makes it very clear by the work of Jesus. It is actively helping those who are miserable due to their circumstances beyond their control many times. And Jesus in his healing the blind, for instance, in Matthew 9, 27 to 31, 20, 29 to 34, and healing the lepers, Luke chapter 17, 1 to 19. You can check it for yourself. God is a father of all mercies and consolations. Over the Lenten season, I was reading for people or quoting for people that when you go to confession, you know what the priest says? He begins by saying the absolution, God the Father of mercies. God the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace. And I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But it begins with God, the Father of mercies. God's mercy endures forever. What's another word forever? What is another word for forever? Eternity. What's another word for eternity? Right. It's not that God's mercy book ends our lives, you know. That I go gain mercy at the beginning and I will gain mercy at the end. No. God's mercy that is forever is ongoing. It's ongoing. And I want to tell you a truth today, brothers and sisters. We have God's mercy not only because we read the books of the Jews, the Old Testament, but now we have God's mercy made perfectly manifest in someone. And that person has a name. And his name is? And how you spell it? J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's the name of mercy. That God could send his son into this world the very incarnation is an act of mercy. At the point of conception when the Blessed Mother said, Yes, a fiat to Almighty God. God allowed a door to open for mercy to be made present and manifest. If it may have been later before, now everybody will know mercy in a person. And that person's name is Jesus. We have somebody who is a person of mercy. That's why he came. Scripture tells us even when we were sinners, he called us friends. He would say later on to the, of the Father, it pleases the Father to give you the kingdom, little ones. If it were me, I would say little wretches. It pleases the Father to give you the kingdom, little wretches. But he doesn't say that. He said it pleases the Father to give you the kingdom, little ones. Even in his language, my brothers and sisters, we have the language of mercy. And this Jesus Christ, who is the self-revelation of God and the manifestation of God's mercy. How much time I have? Brothers and sisters, the self-revelation of God's mercy gives us the story of the prodigal son, reveals to us his mercy 
when Peter comes back to him after disowning him three times, do you love me, Peter? Jesus who met them and said, bring the fish, I start to fry for you already. God's mercy. On the cross dying, I could never do this, you know. I could never do this, you know. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. You know what I would say? I probably can't say it here. Them killing me on the cross. And I saying, I thinking about them. In a good way. Forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they do. You killing me and I giving you the benefit of the doubt. Or they must be mad. You know what I would say? Father God, in the name of Jesus, burn them. <laughs> burn them. Kill them in the worst way, Lord. This member that I hope all ain't taping me here, you know. I just saying that's that is my old self. That is my old self. That is my old self. But as of today, I'm a changed man in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I wouldn't say that. Somebody just say it live. What are you doing with this folly matter? All you need to tell people before they do these things. <laughs> but no, my brothers and sisters, I just want to give you, I don't want to piggyback too much on the gospel of this weekend. But I think about Jesus in John chapter 20, going into the house of the disciples who all scattered and left him alone. And the doors were closed and he went in. And he said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. What an act of mercy. You see, brothers and sisters, I have done things to people. You know when you do something and there's no excuse, there's no justification, you can't find a glimmer of light of redemption from your side. You ever had that experience? I don't want to tell all that too much of my business, but I'll give you one example. Remember hearing, I am not a gossip, I'm not a macro, eh? But I remember hearing something about somebody. And I remember sharing that with other people. And it went wild. And it caused a lot of harm to the person. I want to say to you, it wasn't maliciously done. But I should not have spread that. Let me put it another way. If I had done something... I wouldn't want somebody to spread that. If you understand what I'm saying, I'd want that person to keep that to himself, to herself. I didn't do that. And it spread wild. And I remember feeling awful when it started to go around. And I, I, I have to tell you the truth because I'm not a hypocrite. I feel worse when I figured the person would realize it was me who spread it. So, you know, it was bad enough that the, the word went around. But it got worse when I realized, oh, oh, the person might realize it's me, you know, gosh. Pressure. But brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. I spoke to the person and the person said, listen, let me forget that. Let me move on. I had no reason to do it. And that person had no reason to say that to me. It was so bad. And yet the person said, forget that, move on. Amazing. Amazing. Putting my shoes my foot in that person's shoe, I do not know if I could have done that. My name was tarnished. And the person said, forget that, move on. No reproach. No reproach. So brothers and sisters, if I have received mercy like that, I could offer that mercy too. I'm talking about as a young man growing up in a household with my family, the amount of things I did in my household you never forget this. This is life. <laughs> but as a young man, teenager, my mother didn't want us to go outside to play cricket, and she went to rest. She was exhausted. And I took, you know, those bob spray and a lighter. In those days, my father used to smoke cigarettes. And I light the lighter, and I spray the bob spray, and I, this flame went off, and my mother woke up from her sleep terrified and I ran off laughing. I know I'm not a good priest. I know. <laughs> that is the height of wickedness. A bob spray and a, 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 a light and it just flared out over her bed. 
and she woke up, as we say in Trinidad, she woke up dotish, you know? <laughs> My brothers and sisters, you know, that came to me one Tuesday evening when I was speaking about confession with a con confession to the RCI candidates and I went inside and I decided to call my mother to apologize and you know what she said I don't even remember what you're talking about <laughs> which gave me vex too because then I should not have mentioned it if she can't remember I'd leave it alone but she could not remember she could not remember that is the mercy of God. That is mercy. How many wickedness I do to my brothers and sisters, and they're still talking to me. And when I'm a little short of money, they'll give me a little change, you know? <laughs> brothers and sisters, that is the mercy of God. And we know that because of the love of Jesus Christ who came into our lives, who came through closed doors and said, Peace be with you. He's the master of the doors. And he enters in. Why? Because inside there, they are afraid of the Jews. But inside there, my brothers and sisters, they're not dealing with the truth that while they may be afraid of out there, they need conversion in here. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, today, I think I have to wrap up now. God's mercy that endures forever. I just want to pray in thanksgiving for what he has done for us, for his goodness, his generosity, his patience, for offering us life and health and strength. And I pray God's blessings upon all of you that having received mercy from the very heart of mercy, mercy that has been given a name of Jesus, we may be sacraments of mercy too, that all those we come in contact we may be slow to anger, quick to offer forgiveness. And may we see those in need, and with our capacities, may we aid in their needs. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Let's say it once again for Father Ransom. Thank you for reminding us that we are all sinners and we are undeserving of God's mercy, but we get it anyways. So we would like to thank you for sharing your words with us and thank God for giving you the gift that you graciously share with all of us. So as we continue to thank you. And sisters and brothers, you would have heard Father Ransom. What an awesome priest. What a realist. You know, he is what mercy really represents because we have to be real with mercy at this time we have Dominican friends sharing with us again so let's just continue to listen as the blessings continue to flow on this mercy Sunday
your rich in love and your slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for your spirit, Lord God. 
thank you for washing us with your blood, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God. We praise your name. We praise and magnify your name, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God. We worship your holy name, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God. You are the holy one, Lord God. You are the one deserving of all praise, Lord God. We praise and magnify and glorify your name, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God. Glory to your name, Lord God. Glory to your name. We praise and magnify your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. We have had words of wisdom. We have had songs of praise. And now we will have a dance from the heart. I would like to invite Laverne Moreau to come forward for, to show us her dance inspired by mercy. You can have your seat. And as we've just heard, that we have worship and dance now by Laverne Moreau. Those of you listening, this dance by Laverne, she is from Point Fountain, from the parish of Point Fountain.
Yeah, we had a really lovely dance there by Laverne. Laverne is from Point Forte. After this, we're going to have some general intercessions. So next, we will be having a procession with the Blessed Sacrament. So oh. everyone can kindly stand. My bad, sorry. We have the procession with the Blessed Sacrament. The Blessed Sacrament followed for us. And that is going to help with the Blessed Sacrament has to come out for the adoration and benediction. So they're taking it from the chapel. That's the Presentation College Chapel, and it's going to be coming to the main stage. The Blessed Sacrament is going to be exposed. Yeah, the Blessed Sacrament is going to be exposed for adoration for the people that are present. In spirit, you can share in the adoration with us as you open your hearts and minds because the Blessed Sacrament is being exposed here. And we believe that is Jesus present in the Blessed Sacrament. As the Blessed Sacrament is carried around by the Father, we ask each person to open their hearts, receive God's powerful healing, receive God's mercy, mercy is present for each person to meet each one of your needs cry out to God right now believe have faith God is meeting your present need all the servers are in front and the father is walking with the monster with the blessed sacrament we have some lay ministers following him and they're proceeding to the stage they're passing around by all the tents so that the sacraments can be exposed to all present procession is heading to the stage at this present time so we ask you to really open your hearts on this mercy Sunday cry out to God cry out to God for all your needs let God hear your cry from deep within believe trust Cry out to God for your families, for your neighbors, for the leaders of the world, for those who are sick, for those who are part of the 
different corporate organizations in this country for educators, for lawyers, for doctors, cry out, cry out for each person. We cry out for our church, the Roman Catholic Church, and for all the members of the Roman Catholic Church. At this time, Father Cornelius Philip is coming, and he's going to give us another dimension of mercy. We welcome Father Cornelius. He's a parish priest of Point 14 Cluster, very dynamic, originally from Dominica. So we welcome him to this stage to bless us with his understanding of God's okay, mercy. Sisters and brothers, Mercy Sunday as we said. Mercy Sunday is celebrated all through Trinidad and Tobago. And at this time I'll ask my co-host Jennifer Allen to give us some a little history and background on both Mercy Sunday and Zion since they started the Mercy Sunday celebrations. So Divine Mercy is always celebrated the first Sunday after Easter. It is a Catholic feast, and the Zion RSC community decided to embrace this ministry of prayer on Mercy Sunday. The Association of Catholic Intercessors, a prayer ministry of Zion RSC community, which is the Ministry of United Prayer for One's Nation, Church, and World. The ACI was launched around 1995 at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine Auditorium with a celebration of prayer, praise, and creative dramatic presentations. God is good. All the time. And all the time. Father Colinius is present with so, us now, so we invite you to yeah, listen closely. Very well, dynamic. First of all, just Priest. thank God. Thank God, first of all, because gathered in his presence on this most holy divine Sunday, divine mercy Sunday, and we recognize that mercy woke us up this morning. I don't know about you, but I know for me, mercy woke me up this morning. We got to be grateful and thankful for the gift of life. And the Bible tells us it is in him we live, we move, and we have our being. The Bible also reminds us through Genesis that when God created human persons in his image and likeness, he said that we are all beautiful and wonderfully made made in his image and likeness the imago day the, the imago day we all reflect the, 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 the we have the imago day in all of us the image of god it still is it's all in all of us god jesus became man that man may become like god man jesus became god that human persons be, be divinized i do not know how you are looking at that but God, Jesus became, the word became flesh, so that you and I be divinized. He went low so that he can lift us on high. That is why it is always a good gesture, posture in liturgy, that will lift up our hearts. That's why you hear the priest say, the Lord be with you. And you say, and also with you. What comes after? Lift up your hearts. That's right, we lift them up to the Lord. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, we are gathered in the presence of the most blessed sacrament. It may look like bread. 
it may taste like bread, but it is the body of Christ. The, 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 the church also says when you receive one, you receive both of them. So there should be no quarrel about, oh, I didn't receive blood. If you receive the blood only, you receive both. If you receive body, you receive body and blood. Are you all with me? Because there can't be no, there cannot be body without blood. Are you all with me? So we are gathered this font of mercy on this divine mercy Sunday. We are gathered, we converge as a vicariate, the Zion community. And for folks who came from elsewhere, we are gathered to thank God for his supreme act of being merciful to us. If you and I walk through the pages of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, there is a common thread of God's love and infinite mercy. Question is, do we deserve that mercy? The answer should be a Lord, no. But is God generous? Yeah. No one deserves that mercy. But God is rich in mercy and full of compassion. That is why that he sent his only begotten son, mercy. Okay, let me just do that like that. In the beginning was the word, mercy. Then mercy became flesh, Jesus Christ. Mercy moved amongst us. Mercy ministered to us. Mercy lifted us up. Mercy suffered for us. Mercy died for us. Mercy went into the tomb for us. And mercy rose for us divine mercy and the tomb the grave couldn't keep mercy down no grave shall keep mercy down because the mercies of God they endure forever I do not know about you but I would love forever to bathe in the sea it is wider than the sea of Siloam it is wider than the vast domain. When you hear the word font, I would like to think it is almost like an ocean, you see. It's massive. The mercies of God is massive. It is so wide, you can't get around it. It is so low, you can't get under it. So high, you can't get above it. And that is why Today we are gathered as Catholics and non-Catholics for us to take a mercy bath. To be bathed in mercy. Am I speaking to Father David? Seems to me it's only us priests need mercy. Because the people look like they're good. <laughs> Father, you see they did not even say mm-mm. It's only a Zion community and the priests and them that need. It's only us there that need mercy. Don't think it's only us here. The others below here, they're so holy. They may be saying, Father, them talk not for we. Is there anyone here who is not in need of mercy? And the come in your hand should be done. <laughs> Marceline, you know what's in the comment? Is there anyone here who is in need of some mercy? No, no, no. Is there anyone here who is going through a situation and you know that you need some mercy from the mercy bank? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know, you know, in, 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 in biology, in, in the health sector, when folks have a storage of blood, 
What did they call it? Blood bank. Blood is being saved and deposited there. Today, we are gathered in, in, in the mercy bank. And we're asking of the Lord to ascend mercy, to send mercy, to send mercy, to give us some mercy. Because without that mercy, we cannot survive. And you know the thing is, God is so loving and kind and generous that he wants to allow us to get away from the other side of our sins. Be cleansed and come on the other side of our sins. That we may praise him, we may worship him, give him the glory and lift his name on high. We all need mercy. And you know what? I may have said it already, but sometimes you go to bed and you ain't sure of getting up the next day. Mm. There are days you go to bed. Mm. Oh Lord, talk about when I had the COVID. When I the closest I've ever felt to death, Reverend Father, is when I get the COVID. But father didn't get it. <laughs> father, you got it? Oh, he didn't get the COVID. <laughs> but then, I came to realize, even in my moment of being down and under the assault of COVID-19, God's mercy and faithfulness was great. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies. God is rich in mercy. And friends, we are gathered today. We are gathered today. And, say, and we, we are gathered in this. It's like a pool of siloam. That massive pool. You are bathing yourself in mercy. And then it's not only being bathed, but you're bathed in mercy so that to become mercy itself. Because might I say, mercy has no hand, no ears, no mouth, no feet, no ears, but yours and I. Because we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We need mercy. The world needs some mercy. Trinidad and Tobago needs mercy. I said Trinidad and Tobago, you all behaving like all you from Panama. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago is in need of mercy. Amen. We implore the mercy of God on Trinidad and Tobago right now. Amen. Because God will make a way. Where there seems to be no way. Because he works in. And all the Lord is saying of us. As mercy ambassadors. Is be strong. And be courageous. And fight a good fight. Be strong. Be courageous. And fight a good fight. We belong to the mercy army. Of Jesus Christ. Belong to the mercy army. And friends, the Trinidad needs mercy. Families need mercy. We need mercy. The environment is begging for mercy. Financially, we need mercy. There ain't no broke people here. So, um, you all have a collection? The collection will be good. It gone already? Yeah. So that's why it's so quiet. <laughs> we need the mercy in of our families. We need physical mercy. Spiritual mercy. Because friends, the last time I checked, there isn't anything that the good God 
of Jehovah Jireh cannot do. Nothing is impossible with God. God is rich in mercy. So therefore, let's get, I want to take a little journey with you. Listen. There isn't anything that you and I may have done that Jesus is not aware of. Okay, God, Jesus has a kind of camera. And he sees everything. He knows your story already. But he wants us to become like prodigals. Prodigal son, prodigal daughters. So we are prodigals. He wants us to come back home. We need that mercy. That forgiveness. That compassion. That letting go of past hurts and pains. We need the cleansing of the memory. Some people's mind is like a hard drive that is loaded. It can't take more information. Sometimes, so I want to begin with up and we're going down. So let us speak about where do you stand? In terms of your mental wellness. Mentally, how are we? Whatever our mental issues, we can always take it to the God of mercy in the blessed sacrament. And there is power to heal. Many of us here, mentally, we may be overwhelmed. Many of us may be worried and anxious, perplexed. Life becomes tempestuous. Many of us, our minds, physically, you may be hearing me, but your mind is elsewhere. Some of you, some of us are stressed out. Almost burnt out. Your car, which is your life, your body, is on E in the tank. You need a refill. That's why we are here in the font of mercy. That Jesus will fill us and make us whole again. So whatever mental issues you got, Give it to the Lord in prayer. All of us here, there are moments when you feel you're going a little crazy. I don't know about you, but there are days I feel like I'm going a little crazy. But then there is something that reminds me in the Bible. And when your heart is overwhelmed, you must take it to the rock that is higher than high. Take it to Jesus, and Jesus will take care of you. Because there ain't no problems that Jesus cannot solve. Because God's mercy is greater than all our mental issues. We need to make the move. You got to take it to Jesus in faith. And like this, like this man, like this woman, hemorrhaging woman, who said, if I could only touch the helm of his garment. Mentally, I will be whole again. If I could only touch the helm of his garment, I would be whole again. God created us for wholeness. God wants us to be whole, properly integrated. That's why we, you hear a lot in the Archdiocese about integral human development. God wants us to be formed holistically. Are you with me? So whatever is on your mind, or should I say, whoever is on your mind, mm, some people taught in people, some, Um, 
was I again? <laughs> right. And pour me, I thought it's some water the man bringing for me. You know? Wrong signal. Wrong timing. Friends, where was I again? I had to call for it. <laughs> for giving it to me late, you have to come back for it. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone you toting right now? The person on your mind. You carrying somebody on your mind. You need to set yourself free. And set the person free and move on in the name of Jesus. Are you holding on to anybody? And don't worry, you know, sometimes I know it doesn't happen in the Catholic Church. But other people, the Birel toting people, carrying people on their mind. And you vex with people on your mind. You smiling, but you vex with them on the inside. Free up your meditation today. I want you now to use the antivirus, which is Jesus, to clean your hard drive so your mind will be functional in Jesus' name. Amen. Cleanse your mind. Cleanse your mind. Heal your memory. You know, the worst thing is to see people singing Jesus' song and they're toting people. In their mind. Oh how I love Jesus. But mentally you ain't love your neighbor. Whoever that person is. Don't let that it's you take you to hell. Let it go in the name of Jesus. You normally see people raising their hand. Singing Jesus song. Talking Jesus thing. But they taught him people. If you taught in people, you ain't ready yet. You are too... I, oh, I can't use that word here. I almost say overweight, Father, but I cannot use that word. Because it will come back to me. <laughs> Full measure, pressed down, shaken together. <laughs> Listen. Let go of the neighbor now. Let go of whoever now. Some of you here, you holding on to somebody in your mind. And you know the strange thing is, the person done dead and cremated, but you taught in them. <laughs> Maybe you need to do like easy kill on social media and break the... Oh, all you in the back and all too. Maybe you need to do like easy kill in the social media. If you taught in somebody, best you throw the urn down and take the ashes and say it's powder. Sometimes the person lets it, it doesn't happen in OLPH Ball. Is that example? Because eh? thing doesn't happen. Everybody in OLPH, real good. So, the person left the parish how many years ago? But you still taught in the person. Let it go and place it at the feet of Jesus. Place the person at the feet of Jesus. Because Jesus wants to heal us today. His mercy can allow you to let it go. As painful as the situation may have been. You know what's the equalizer? When you and I reflect on our lives. We've all hurt people in the past. And to use the words of Archbishop Jason Charles Gordon, we've all done some stupidness. So you need to let go and let God have his way on this mercy Sunday. Show that person some mercy. Are you all with me? Mentally free yourselves. Some of us, we cannot sleep at night. We turn in a wrong turning around, and when you get so tired, you're looking at TikTok. You need to cleanse your mind. 
Are you all with me? So first of all, the mental part of it. How are you mentally? <laughs> okay, sister, well, you've been real. She said stress is true. She spoke on behalf of all of us here. On behalf of the whole court that she spoke on all of us here. Because we all can be stressed at times. Are you all with me? So you lay it down mentally. Take some time. Clear your mind. Spiritually. Where do you need? Where do we need? Some mercy. You know, I was doing a little, a little, little synopsis on, on the Jezebel spirit, on the, on the Jezebel spirit, and I would like to clarify a point. Many times people think that someone with a Jezebel spirit is a person who has sexual issues and sexual Im sexually immoral. But I would like to add, to say to you today, that Jezebel was the most wicked queen ever lived. So anyone... St. Anthony is looking out for me. You all see it crooked that I'm in nothing. All you look out for me now? No, how could that be a style? <coughs> hey, hey, you, you, you are easy. <coughs> who is your priest? Um, who is your priest, darling? Who is your priest? Huh? You would let him, you would leave him stay so? Exactly. Now we level. Right, let me get back to where I was. Jezebel. Let me tell you, any form of wickedness is a Jezebel spirit. Division, conniving, scandalizing people, bringing people down, speaking ill of people, tearing people apart, tearing people apart with one side of the mouth, and on the other side saying a Hail Mary. A Jezebel spirit. Dividing people is a Jezebel spirit. Many times we are very divisive in our Christianity. That one versus this one. That one trying to take over that one, not realizing we form one body in Christ. And we are stronger together. So, if you could tick a box of what I said about, let's bring that to Jesus for healing. We need mercy. We need the mercy. Sometimes it is so funny that people in the same church building, but it looked like churches. And what does Jesus say? People of that church, I know your works. You are neither hot nor cold. And on the day of judgment, I will spit you out of my mouth. You don't want that. You don't want that. We don't want that. So let us unite. And let us work together. As community. You know. Let's not get involved in diabolical things. You see. The devil is, is host satanus. And host diabolus. The one who divides. And the one who kills and steals. Let's not do that. We are called to be workers of God. So listen up. All the little tensions. You know the tension? You know what I mean by tensions? Sometimes it doesn't happen in Trinidad. But some other places around the world. Right in the sacristy. 
right on the, in, 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 in the sanctuary. You see, two lay ministers, they can't say hello to each other, but then they're sharing the same Jesus, which is unity. Bad witness, bad witness, bad, super bad witness. Let's bring that to the Lord today. All our spiritual problems, bring it to the Lord today. Bring it to the Lord. That spiritually, we will be whole in Jesus' name. Because whoever Jesus sets free, is free indeed. The Lord has given us a spirit of boldness, not one of timidity. And he has also given us the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. To be able to become spirit-led and anointed sons and daughters of God. So wherever you feel spiritually divided in your being, let's bring it to the throne of grace. Jesus Christ here. Physically, some of us right now, oh gosh, is sickness, 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 pain, pain, pain. If sickness had a name and a face, that would be you. Take your sickness, take your disease, take your pains, and take all your sorrows and bring them to the throne of mercy. God can heal you today. Because God has power to save. Anything physical, God can heal you. What did Bartimaeus say? Lord, Jesus, son of David, I want to see again. Tell the Lord, Lord, on this day of mercy, I want to see again. Spiritually and physically, I want to see again. Are you with me? Physical healing. Everything physical. And sometimes the enemy also attacks us physically. That's so why we must forever be under the blood and through the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. Physically. In terms of our family. Familiarly, we need some mercy. I don't know about you, but my family doesn't have it all together. I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't come here and lie. Why should I lie? My family does not have it together. But I know I serve a God who has everything together. And if I take it to him, he can set my family free in Jesus' name. Because if God sets your family free, your family is free indeed. Take your family and bring every family issues at the feet of Jesus. Because Jesus is present to heal. And mercy is flowing. Mercy is flowing in your family. Allow it to flow. Allow the mercy to flow. Allow mercy to flow in your family. Family may become a seat of mercy. Just ask the Lord to take care of your family. I always say to people, it does not make sense that you're out there in church and else you're being good and at home you don't speak to your family members. Because if you can't be good to your own, you will never be good to me. So we bring all our family issues before God today on this day of mercy. Are you all with me? The, you know, listen. In families, you have those who have it together. In families, you have those in between. And in families, you have those who just, they just do not have it together. Don't forsake them. Rally with them. Although sometimes if they call you, you know what to say. How much? Yeah, let's leave that there. But family is family. 
blood is thicker than water. I always say to people, if God wanted me, Cornelius, to be part of the family royal, the royal family, he would have allowed me to be born in the UK. I'm from the Caribbean, but I know I belong to God's royal family. Your family is blessed. Your family is favored by God. God is writing straight on every crooked line in your family right now. Lift your family on high to the name of Jesus right now. Are you all with me? Some of people may be there. Oh, preach it, Father. Them need to hear it. But all of us here, we need to hear it. Because the last time I checked, human beings don't fall from trees. Created in the image and likeness. We need family healing. Dearly beloved, what about the society? We are social beings. We live in a society, in a country. On this day of divine mercy, let us implore the Lord even more forcefully, although being forceful does not change God's mind, but let us just place Trinidad and Tobago at the mercy seat of God. And let us ask God to show mercy that everyone who is being merciless will become conduits of his mercy. That bandits may be turned into preachers and evangelizers. And everyone in wrongful activities will turn to the activity of the promulgation of the good news, the Holy Gospel. Witnesses to Christ. So friends, we now take the, because we're from the south side, we now place the south side of Trinidad and Tobago at the mercy seat and at mercy himself and ask him to have mercy on this part of Trinidad and Tobago. We now take the central part of Trinidad and Tobago and we place everything central right at the feet of Jesus, right in front of the blessed sacrament, at the feet of mercy. We ask Jesus to show himself strong. We go up to the north of Trinidad and Tobago. We ask the Lord to deal with anything that concerns the northern part of the nation and bring healing and transformation, and show mercy today. We go to the east. We ask the Lord today to show his mercy to all those on the eastern side of Trinidad and Tobago. And we place the east at the feet of Jesus. And we expose the East to the power of the mercy of God that change may come. Because nothing is impossible with God whom we serve. Now the West Side. We bring the entire West Side of Trinidad and Tobago at the feet of Jesus on this Divine Mercy Sunday before the Blessed Sacrament and ask Jesus to just heal. We ask him to take over Tobago. We ask of him to take over the Caribbean, especially Haiti at this time. We ask of him to take over the whole world and allow his mercy to spread far and wide throughout the world that men may come to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And his mercy is flowing as we speak. As a matter of fact, might I remind you that whilst we speak here, there are many angels here. Whilst we speak here, the saints of God, they are there. 
whilst we speak here, the blessed mother Mary is here. Whilst we speak here, St. Joseph, terror against demons, he is right here. The whole arsenal of God is here. And the cloud of witnesses, they are right here to, to intercede with us. That healing may come. If Jesus would set us free, we are free indeed. I want to just touch lightly as I end on, on your finances. Take your finances and place before God his mercy seat. And just to remember that whatever God has blessed you with, he has blessed you so you could bless others. You are, you are a blessing to become a blessing to, each, to others. Ask the Lord to take care of your financial needs. You know, I saw yesterday, was it, on social media, and it ached my heart. I saw a young lady, some young lady, and some issue with a children, a child. Huh? One of the things I say, when somebody's down, you don't bring them lower. We pray for them. We lift them up. We ask God to have mercy. We do not share bad news. Are you with me? Many of us good Catholics here, we have a habit of forward. Everything you get, forward. Hear a story, forward. You get a little gossip, forward. But let me say that, when you forward, something will forward on you. Are you with me? So don't share anything that is not wholesome about a brother and a sister on social media. This is demonic and it's diabolical and it's destructive. Not the work of God. So what goes around comes around. Today may be my day. Today may be my day. Tomorrow may be your day. So when somebody is going through some hell, we must take them off from hell and bring them to heaven. We must not stamp them in hell. It's quiet. You know it's true. To share all kind of thing. So you have to be careful. Are you with me? Somebody may come to you and they try to get some words about you. And they're talking to you. You and know they're recording you in their pocket. Hey, 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 hey. They're recording you in their pocket. And you know what? They interview you. But they share only what? They want to share, but the whole talk, they never share it. That's why I always say, when you hear something, you must go to the source. Many times, their sources are evil. Just to bring somebody down. But let me tell you, when you try to bring me down, you are bringing yourself down. But when you lift me up, you are lifting yourself up. Because mercy does not bring down, mercy lifts up. So let us bring all these things before the Lord. And we need mercy. Are you with me? We need mercy. And we need mercy today that the Lord may reawaken our, our lax consciences. 
because of our consciences need to be informed, formed, and reformed. Ask the Lord to cleanse your conscience. You never hear people say, oh gosh, girl, you haven't got a conscience, man. You have no conscience and you're in church. Let me say that bold face. Bold face statement here. Father Vika, it's a bold face statement here. Mercy. Mercy in the Bible has to do with jubilee. Jubilee, the time of favor from God. Today is Mercy Sunday. I know how the, the debt may be. Cancel a debt. Oh, the place quiet, you see? Father, you see how the place quiet? We as priests have no debt to cancel because we, you know how it is, Father. Are you all with me? Tell somebody, let bygones be bygones. I am turning a new page. I am having mercy on you. You owe me nothing. Are you all with me? No matter what the amount may be, you could never make up for the amount of mercy and graces and favor that God will show you when you cancel a debt. Cancel a debt. Cancel somebody's debt. Some of you have book. Let me see that. Bring that thing for me, sister, as I end. Father, I'm ending now. Some of you have a book big like that. If you see names, maybe you need to take off some names on that. Am I with you all? Some of you must be watching me cocky eye and say, hey, okay, Father, uh -huh. all your business fix. Father, your business fix. All you priests, all your business fix. And you're telling me, cancel that. No, I practice in, I practice what I preach. And I can tell you, the greatest blessings you receive is when you go the extra mile to show somebody some mercy. You know, somebody had told me about something. And I know, you know, all priests are broke. So, so, a person came to me and said to me, I hope they are not hearing. Is that live? Oh, well, I start already. The person came, well, somewhere in the Caribbean, eh? Somewhere in the Caribbean. And the person came and said, Father, I'm going for a little situation there. Could you loan me? I said, hey, hey, I turn a bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hear that? I took a leap of faith. I said, here you are. Help your child and organize somewhere in the Caribbean. Eh? So don't say Trinidad. I didn't call Trinidad. No, no Trinidad here. Nobody, not a, not a, it's not a Trini. You got Trinidad, give it to me back. So when the person came to me, the person came to me. I myself, I don't, I forget about that, you know. The person came to me and they say, Father, God bless us, and we come to level the business with you. I said, which business is that? I say, your debt to me is zero, 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 and a few Hail Marys. And you know what the person turned and told me? Father, I was giving it to you, but I really was in need of it, you know. I have to cancel some debt, show some mercy, practicality of mercy. Are you all with me? But I'm not saying to you if you have a shop or whatever. You know what I mean? If not your shop, go boss. You know, but all you know what I mean. So today, friends, let us just bask in that mercy. Mercy here is not in short supply. And the very same way that Jesus moves through this place. And uh, Jesus moves through this place. We can say today, if I touch the helm of his garment... I will be filled with mercy again. And my tomorrow, my, to, my yesterday, my today will be better than my tomorrow. And my Monday will be better than my Wednesday. Because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. 
So friends, let us do it. Let us do it. Let us enter into that space. Listen, wherever I see some people from Sawa here, don't go back Sawa the same person you came. Because whenever you get in contact with mercy, you could never be the same again. Wherever you may be from today, beloveds, mercy is in abundance. Mercy is flowing. Flowing like a sweet, sweet rain. Mercy is flowing. Mercy is flowing. Mercy is like a river. The river of mercy is flowing. God is washing us. God is cleansing us. God is healing us. God is making us one and whole. God is revivifying us. God is sanctifying us. And God is divinizing us. So just receive. Receive. Receive that mercy. Receive that mercy. And surrender all to Jesus. And so receive that mercy. Receive that mercy. Acquire whatever you choose. Receive that mercy. Receive that mercy, beloved. Receive that mercy. mercy is falling, it's falling, oh, praise the Lord. It's As you are listening to Father mercy right now, receive falling, your mercy. mercy Just open your hearts and receive falling, mercy, mercy at this time. Lift your hands, your voices, where you are. Get on your knees if you can. And plead for God's mercy. Feed, drink from his ocean of mercy. Eat from the bank of God's mercy. At this time, the Blessed Sacrament will be passed around by Father Hygienus. And we're going to be receiving mercy. You who are listening, in your hearts, you will receive mercy once you open your hearts to it. Open your hearts, open your minds, open your hands and receive. If you can kneel, kneel. If you stand, stand. But open your hearts at this time and receive mercy. So far, the hygienist lifts the monstrance and he's going to move around to every tent. As we see brothers and sisters need, bow, surrender and plead for God's mercy. Monstrance is passing around now to the congregation led by the altar servers. As we receive mercy, right open your hearts at this time. Draw near, mercy, mercy. Draw near to the Lord, and He will turn mercy to you. Mercy, mercy. Dear Lord, I will dance. Break the shackles. Break your shackles. Break your shackles. Break all your shackles. Towards the tents. Receive your healing. As Receive, Receive your healing. Receive your mercy. Receive favor. Receive for God's Receive the anointing. Hands outstretched. Receive blessings. Believing, Receive the jubilee graces. That indeed they will receive, receive the favor, the compassion. 
the power of God in their lives, in their families, in this nation of Trinidad and Tobago. Just receive, as Father said, just receive, just receive, open your hearts and minds and just receive. Once you believe that you will achieve, so receive God's mercy at this present time. Pleading and begging that we receive God's mercy this time. All over this land, we need that mercy. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We bless you as we receive this mercy. Father, the mercy is falling. Thank you. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for meeting our needs yes, Lord. Yes, in our personal life, yes, Lord. in our family life this nation, Lord, as the choir of Dominican friends continue to tell us, continue to sing for us, this is falling all over. Father, hygienus continues to move with the monstrance. Believe, trust, believe, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we believe and we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord. And for faith to be increased and stretched at this time as we believe that God is a faithful and a merciful God. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every evening. And we claim the mercy of God at this time. We claim it and believe it. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God is truly present at this time with us. Truly present. We feel it in the atmosphere. Mercy is falling at this time. Pray, pray deep in your hearts, pray in your minds. We continue to thank God for Mercy Sunday. We continue to thank God for this feast and believe that all Catholics, all religions can be renewed and believe in the mercy of God. this time we want to thank you so kindly for being with us and as our coverage is coming to a close we want to see thanks we want to thank the Zion community and the Archdiocese, the Southern, Southern Vicariate under Father David Pan we have Father Hygienus with us we had Father Crystal with us we has Father Ransom and we have Father Deacons, Cornelius, Deacons Peter Timothy, and Deacon Ian Bourne also joined us. And we thank God for each person from every Vicary, North, South, Central, Suburban, Eastern, Western. We thank God for your presence here with us. We also thank the choirs, both Point Fountain and Dominic and Friends, who took us through this Mercy Sunday. We thank the altar servers, the Eucharistic ministers, the hospitality ministry, all of Zion community, all of um, persons who did the Mercy Chapley, St. Joseph's Convent and Presentation College, those who did general intercessions. We also want to thank Clooney Eucharistic Center, they who set up the prayer room and they also were journeying with us, both in spirit and in presence. We want to thank them, and at this time, we also thank WAC very dearly for bringing our coverage with us today. Thank you, WAC. And on behalf of Jennifer and myself, we say good evening. Good evening. God bless you. Amen. Thank him for joy. Thank him for peace. Thank him for patience. 
Continues to resonate to the alias of WAC Radio 90.1 FM and WAC TV. While the rest of the world goes on, we stay rooted in the rich soil of our culture, celebrating the Trinbegonian spirit that dances in our hearts all year round. Wack Radio 90.1 FM is your constant companion, bringing you the essence of Trinidad and Tobago. FM and WAC.TV invite you to a musical journey that transcends the ordinary. Bring it splashy and splashy like water. God tell me bring fire. Somebody say fire, fire. Somebody say fire, fire. Let's embark on a soulful exploration of hope, rejuvenation, and the sheer joy of gospel, jazz, and uplifting music. Whether you're at home or on the move, make us your cultural soundtrack to your life. in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Brother Wendell Paris, evangelist and minister of God's Word, inviting you to listen to the Know Your Bible broadcast hosted by the Churches of Christ every Sunday evening from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. This is one of the most informative, enlightening, and thought-provoking Bible programs just for you. We will also be coming to you live. So get ready for sound biblical teachings from the Know Your Bible broadcast every Sunday evening from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Rock Radio 90.1 FM. Listen to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the Know Your Bible broadcast on Wack Radio 90.1 FM. We are always thankful to Almighty God for this divine privilege of being able to come into your homes or wherever you may be at this time. We trust that you would have a copy of God's holy and righteous words with you. So together as we turn the pages of the Bible, we'll be able to see what God says, understand what he says, and be willing to be drawn closer in obedience to his words. Because we do know that the word of God is accessible to all of mankind via through our device. And understanding that devices that we use are not only for the reasons and purposes for business or family or entertainment or fun, but we have access to the Word of God even through uh, these devices. So let's make good use of it. Let's say to ourselves, thank God for the opportunity uh, to be able to have technology advance to the point where we could have the Word of God accessible to us at any time. All right? So today is what you what we call... Um, Marriage and family life. Anytime you hear those words, marriage and family life, sometimes people like to turn down the volume of the radio or they like to switch station. But I know the loyalists on WAC radio, they don't switch stations. They, they perhaps want to find some things to do if you were relaxing and listening to the WAC radio program. But now I want to challenge you because this is an area, this is an area of study that we all need to hear, need to understand, need to learn 
in order to live better lives, better family lives. And I, I'm only encouraging you, really, to, to just continue making the time to listen to what is going to be said from God's word, to make your contributions where necessary, and also to ask your questions as we go along. Because why? It is important, very important, for us to try and have a more solid base, solid foundation where the word of God is concerned. So if you're joining us on YouTube, stay with us on YouTube. If you're joining us uh, just live right here on Mark Radio, listening as you travel, listening in your homes, or wherever you may have access to this radio land, just stay with us as we go through our you know, moment of New York Bible broadcast here on WAC Radio 90.1 FM. So let's go before Heavenly Father in prayer. We'll have an acapella song played for your listening ear. And then we would look into something pertaining to marriage and family life. You don't want to miss this because uh, to give you an insight, uh, we do know, we do know that whereas birth are on high, statistically speaking, debts are also on high. You have marriages and you have divorces. And sometimes one wonder, what is the cause? What is the reason behind these things, behind these statistics increasing? You know, I look at some statistics from 1990 all the way up to 2011. And then you have some other statistics that are recent, you know, but you still cannot find a number. And to realize that many people who are married, does it equal the same people who get divorced? It's very interesting. And so if we have not understood uh, biblically the foundation which God has been setting us uh, towards and pointing us in that direction, then we could realize where we have gone wrong and what we need to do to make it right. I'm speaking to families now, I'm speaking to people who are married now, I'm speaking to people who are going through some real challenges in their marital relationship. We want to set it right. We want to be able to look at what God says. And be, maybe we'll be able to see where we have gone wrong and try to do the things that will bring that kind of relationship back to where it ought to be. If it was not there in the first place, let God's guidance, let God's will help us to be in that place. All right? So let's go before God in prayer this time. Heavenly Father, as we approach a divine throne of grace, we continue to acknowledge your presence. We continue to understand it is your way that leads and guides us. And as we consider living this life on this earth, we know there are many times that we will stumble and fall from your grace. Help us, dear God, to remain faithful and committed to you. We pray for all marriages and family lives that are pleasing in your sight that are in accordance to your covenant relationship, that are in accordance to your word, those marriages and those lives that are acceptable because you have ordained such, and those who are followed are able to understand the importance of doing so. We pray that God for those who are struggling, for those who are seeking ways in which to improve, and for those who are even seeking to give up, that you would hold their hand and help them to understand the necessities of remaining uh, committed to you and in their marital relationship. So may you bless us and give us that guidance. As we humbly ask this prayer in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. All right, so stay with us. Don't go anywhere. And we'll talk about those issues. Those issues why the statistics are so high um, and, and why it is that people tend not to Listen to one simple thing, just one simple thing that could change a whole lot of the outcome of these uh, situations. So stay tuned. When we return, we will talk about those things. <laughs> Ooh, 
it's gonna work, 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 work Like you said it would Ooh, Done with lying and I'm done pretending That I've got all the answers Done with trying to fix it all on my own That I'm Lord, you're my savior Tired of toting, wanna lay my burden Down on the altar Cause I believe It's gonna work for good Like you said it would Cause I believe It's gonna work for good Like you said it would Though the storm does gather Though the night gets darker I'm gonna worry no longer Though my cross is heavy, I'm holding on to my Savior. And though it's hard not to see, I know He's working it out for me. Cause I believe it's gonna work for good. Like you said it would, cause I believe. It's gonna work for good Like you said it would Cause I believe It's gonna work for good Like you said it would Cause I believe It's gonna work for good Like you said it would Okay, um, thank you for staying with us here on New Year Bible Broadcast. Uh, I'm certain that what we are about to do as we engage in this wonderful uh, talk, share of ideas and thoughts together, we'll be able to come to some common understanding as to why these things are in terms of two people who have decided that they want to spend the rest of the years of their lives together going on a journey by which do you begin to understand that the first steps taken would not be your step alone, but the step of two, and walking in a particular direction, hoping that things can work out for the best. And I use the term hoping because marriage in itself, for some people, um, seem to be a fantasy island thing, you know? And when you look at it from that aspect, you tend to believe that it's a bliss that will always remain. It's something that, you know, you have no struggles, you have no difficulties. It's all romance and everything like that. But it's not like that. And therefore, people begin and must realize the, and to face the reality of what this is all about. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a number of things because we're going to spend some time together. A number of things that are a bit different. And, um, but with the end, hoping that, number one, we'll understand where we are in our foundation for marriage and family life. And number two, we'll also understand what we need to do to change some things. And, and three, we will have that biblical aspect of, of God's guidance into what's supposed to be what God had ordained. But before we do all of that, I want to read something for you that uh, someone have written. It seemed to be unknown, but I find it very interesting. All right, I'm just going to read it for you. Um, it's called Love and Time. It's called Love and Time. And then you tell me what you think as we go along, all right? Once upon a time, there was an island where all the feelings lived. Happiness, sadness, knowledge, and all the others, including love. One day it was announced to the feelings that the island would sink. So all constructed boats and left, except love. Love was the only one who stayed. Love wanted to hold out until the last possible moment. When the island had almost sunk, Love decided to ask for help. Richness was passing by Love in a grand boat. Love said, Richness, can you take me with you? Richness answered, No, I can't. 
There's a lot of gold and silver in my boat. There's no place here for you. Love decided to ask Vanity, who was also passing by in a beautiful vessel. Vanity, please help me. I can't help you, love. You are all wet and might damage my boat, Vanity answered. Sadness was close by, so love asked, Sadness, let me go with you. Oh, love, I am so sad that I need to be by myself. Happiness passed by love too, but she was so happy that she didn't even hear when love called her. Suddenly, there was a voice. Come, love, I will take you. It was an elder. So blessed and overjoyed, love even forgot to ask the elder where they are going. When they arrived at dry land, the elder went her own way. Realizing how much was owed, the elder, love asked knowledge, another elder, who helped me. It was time. Let me repeat that. <laughs> Realizing how much was owed the elder, love asked knowledge, another elder, who helped me? It was time, knowledge answered. Time, asked love, but why did time help me? Knowledge smiled with deep wisdom and answered, because only time is capable of understanding how valuable love is. Isn't that interesting? Only time is capable of understanding how valuable love is. A lot of people get mixed up with love and like and loss when it comes to relationships. And having to be involved in doing biblical counseling for years is still something that people mix up all the time thinking that as long as that particular type of feeling is there, it's supposed to be the feeling that drives or motivates them. So we look at love, like, and lust. Each one of them seems to have its own personality, seems to have its own identity. When you talk about like, you're talking about formulating or having an attraction for something that does not necessarily lead to love. I like this blouse. I like this shirt. But it doesn't mean I love the shirt. I just like it. It's something that is attractive to me. Now, lust in itself is a desire for what is forbidden. So you don't hear somebody say, I lost you or I lost after you. It's something that usually happens without even being spoken of. But it happens in the mind. So while the word like could call for some form of assurance in words when somebody says, I like this, lust is not the word that you would hear coming out of somebody's mouth when they say, I lost you. Because lust is a desire for what is forbidden. You could look at another man's child. You could look at another man's wife and vice versa, another woman's husband, or another child, male or female, and you may lust after them, but you cannot have them because they are under the guidance of their parents or they may be under the covenant relationship of another man or woman being their spouse, being their mate. So when you look at someone, and you lust after them, you have a desire for them. That desire is forbidden because they belong to someone else. Now, even if they don't belong to someone else, they are an adult and they are before your presence, you still do not have any association with that person to claim that person as yours. But when there is a form of, of uh, intensity where passion is concerned, that develops into this lust for the individual, and the lust now is more of a sexual feeling and uh, intimacy that involves the touching and just wanting to have their bodies caress your bodies is a difference in its entirety. But love, love is something that is progressive. 
Love is something that is demonstrative. Love is something that is genuine. Is not lost and is not like. Because it requires that the person understand. Just as what we said. Only time is capable of understanding how valuable love is. So when you see somebody for the first time and you say you love them, it's actually during that process of time you'll be able to know whether or not that is love or lust. Oh boy. So when you're able to determine when that period of time is at its end, meaning that you have learned about the individual, you understand the individual to a certain degree or point, you begin to see how love can develop itself, how love can grow, how love can become progressive. But people need to draw the line between what is loss from what is love. So many people are listening to me. Um, I'm going to put a, a challenge that may seem uh, more or less sometimes might get you in trouble, but at the same time, when you, when you look at your, your spouse, uh, you might ask him the question, do you, do you like me? Uh, do you lust me? Along, that's the wrong phrase to use, but I'm just using that based on the convenience of the terms that I'm going with here now. Or do you love me? And then there's a question of, okay, if you do love me, then it must be seen, understood, because during the process of time it was developed, and we could see how it grew into something that really defines what love is. But do you lust me? Do you have a relationship where uh, only passion and sexual uh, intercourse and all of these things become more of the D than anything else? And, and to like someone is just what it is. I'm attracted to you because of something. But that's just it, nothing else. The attraction usually is external than more internal. However, however, when we talk about all of these things, you realize that it has a role to play in sometimes marriages lasting long or marriages lasting short. You understand what I'm saying now? So when you have these things taking place within a marital setting, you have to ask the question. Some people might say, okay, I don't want to talk about that because why? It, it requires me to uh, be open, to be genuine, to be expressive. And so if you are sitting on next to your spouse right now and you're listening to WAC Radio and we're going through all of this, uh, there's going to be a, a measure of uncomfortableness because I'm going to, to raise some issues that people don't usually like to talk about. Now in Genesis chapter 2, it is God who laid down this foundation for marriage and nobody should be against or upset about in Genesis chapter 2. When he said in verse number 18, you know, the Lord God is the one who said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make him and help me for him. You know, I really want to talk about these things extensively, but I have to just not go too deep because it will take more than the time that we have together. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And Adam, whatever Adam called it, every living creature, that was their name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found and help me fit for him. That's when God caused him to fall into a deep sleep. He took one of his rib and he made a woman. To, out of the DNA of man, he made a woman. And then when Adam woke up, he said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So God made someone who is equal to him but different. Equal because she's a human being, she can reason, she can think, she can decide, but different because she's a female, not a male. She is a female, all right? And therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. The man, uh, they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. So God is the one who laid down these, uh, these princi marital principles by which people, when they uh, see someone that they are interested in, you know how to go about in that relationship being formed. So it is that when it comes to marriage now, there are some unscriptural reasons for seeking marriage. In other words, these reasons are not supported by Scripture. And I want us to make it clear, it's not supported by Scripture. So one of these things, one of these reasons that one may seek to be married, and you may say to yourself, well, you know, this, this is not really the thing. This is not really what I believe it is. But you'll be surprised to know that when you talk about divorce 
and people getting divorced for different reasons. It all stems before the, the perception of the person that they have, whether it was based on love, lust, or like, the process of courtship, whether it was a short courtship that led to more touching than expressing of, of feelings in terms of wanting to know the person, or whether it was just based on sexual activity. So you meet somebody for the first time, the second time, the third time, maybe going out on that time, uh, it ends up in a sexual relationship, and from there, you have a relationship form. There's nothing in between to say, let it be progressive, let it grow, let it move from one level to the next. It just go right into it, and that's it. And then what happens to the relationship now, when things start to challenge what you have? So there are some unscriptural reasons for seeking marriage. And one of them, which is not very strange but should be understood, is found in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse number 32. You know where it says, I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married cares for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. But there's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. All right? Now, I am going to entertain the call at this time because I'm allowing the opportunity to call. You can ask the question, make your comment. So let me pause and see uh, who's on the line. A pleasant good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, teacher, minister. Good afternoon. May God be glorified. You know it. <laughs> you know, uh, one, one thing about praying, yeah? A lot of people just, just pray, but they don't like to be humble. Mm -hmm. They only come and, and request things in, in prayers when, when they're in certain situations. But, you know, they, they, they wouldn't pray when, when they're out there, like, Smoking and drinking and partying and things, right? God is not know about it. Understand. But yet, but you know, putting aside gay relationships, all right, how is it that men could be best friends from childhood until death? Same thing with women. But yet when it comes to a romantic relationship, you can't wait to get your romance on. And the key word is relationship. Because we say, all right, you do something, you get romantic and thing, all right, so, you, so that out of the way, right? What kind of relationship you have with the person that you just got romantic with? What do you know about the person? You ever meet their the, 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 the friends, their family? Or you're avoiding the friends and family because you know the friends and family could be looking at you at a certain, uh, through, through certain set of eyes. So you don't want to meet the family and thing. You don't want to meet the mother and them. Because you know once you meet the mother, the mother watching you, the father watching you, the brothers and sisters looking at you, hey, you're a player or what? <laughs> so by not having a relationship with the family, with the friends, So, you're yeah, a man, you could have a relationship with a man for years. Well, you're playing ball, all kind of thing. But when you're a man and are going out with, with a woman, or vice versa, all of a sudden, you have to prove that you love me by being romantic. And sometimes the romance is, is not up to expectations. And sometimes, uh, one, two, three times, you're gone. Then you, when, when you see each other, you break from each other, you, you hate each other because one only burn the other one. It's a relationship. Get to know the person, what they like. You just go with their friends and them. You just go with their family. How many times you, you, you sit down to dinner, and I mean some Thanksgiving or something. All right. I mean to just go over and have dinner for, 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 for once or... So if you don't build up that kind of relationship and you get romantic and after the romance that person busts it, who 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 are you to, who, who are you blaming? All right, thank you. I appreciate thank you. that. All right, great. 
All right, we have another caller in line. A pleasant good afternoon. Good afternoon, my brother. Good afternoon. Now, you, I, I love the topic that you're on with your, your bridging the gap to show the relation with marriage and, and so on, right? Yes. Now, the other caller would have called in and said, you know, nobody's taking time to get to know the family and those kinds of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, to me, it's like trying to reinvent the wheel because this is such a broad topic that you could speak about coming off of um, religion and spirituality and looking at the culture, right? At the culture of youth from the time they started getting the adolescence, they are being bred to see what they want to go after, get it, and if it's not useful to you, discard it. You understand? You understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes, 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 I'm here. Right? So, that is something that needs to be um, discussed in the when, when I believe it should be discussed in terms of, you know, getting to know somebody and getting to support them and all these kind of things. Because, yeah, you, know, you, you have young girls telling fellas, I ain't into this long term thing. Hmm. You understand? Anytime you come as a decent young man, you're being pushed aside and, they, as they say, they're friend zoning you. Because they want what they want and they must go after it with all. You understand? Hmm. But as you're speaking on the topic, I'll, I'll end up. I want you to um, expand on the, the point where you were saying with marriage, because you're saying that, you know, you should get to know your partner and all of that. I understand. But today, and no, I can't say for today alone, but a lot of relationships are based on financial. If she, has, if she or her family has plenty of money, yeah, I'm going in hard because hmm. I will benefit. Or oh, if he and his family has plenty of money, yeah, I'm going in hard because I saw my bread butter there, you understand? Yeah, and but... you're not really looking at the um, affection part of it. Right? All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate man. that. Um, but what the caller just said, that I, haven't, I haven't reached there as yet, and I'm hoping to reach to in that direction where he just mentioned um, about how relationships are really formed one and, and the basis for these relationships forming because people have different motives when it comes to heading into that area. Uh, there's culture involved, yes. Uh, there's religion involved, yes. And if we are believers in God's holy and righteous words, all we have to do is actually follow the pattern that God laid down. And the simple pattern is when I mention that God made Adam and then from his DNA he made Eve. And when from the time Adam would have seen Eve, and I often tell people this, although we don't have the detailed history of what happened in the garden, I strongly and do not believe from the time Adam saw Eve, he just went over there and had sex with Eve. I don't think he did that. I think there was a process of him having to learn about this woman. He would have to see her physically, realize that her physical design is different from mine. She has certain things that I don't have. I have certain things that she does not have. He will be able to observe all of these things. And then he will have to take the time to know um, this particular person who is before him that God made. Remember, God made man with the ability to reason and to think and to decide. But uh, according to what the callers are saying, sometimes you see somebody for the first time and you want to jump into their skirt or jump into their pants and you don't realize the, the whole thing about the person. And, and you, you start off a relationship on that basis. And then when things go haywire, when things don't go the way it ought to go, then you hold, you hold your head, you want a ball. And if you are married already, you want a divorce in three months. You know? Because you're not really learning to appreciate, number one, the blessing of someone who God would have provided for you because you made the choice that you want to live the rest of your life with this individual, you want to marry this person, we'll, we'll get, uh, there's uh, one person there, I think is um, Percy Sledge has sung something of that nature, um, take time to know her or something like that, you know, because you, you can't just go into this thing fully and then expect, you know, things to just work out. In like manner, I often tell people as well, don't put all the eggs into one basket, all right, where your feelings are concerned. 
You see somebody for the first time, you think that that is it. That's the person. Yes, we're going on the road. Until something happens a little bit down the road, they get heartbroken. As we call it in China, they go to banker. And then you can't live with yourself. You have to commit suicide. You have to kill the person. Or something of the sort. Because you're putting all your eggs in one basket, thinking that that's, that is the one. You know? I would look at it in this way. You have 50-50. You bring your 50%, you bring the next 50%. Somebody might say, no, you must bring 100%. When you start enough a relationship, you don't give 100% in a relationship. You will pay dearly for that. Because not all relationships, when they start off, end up in marriage. And then people who are heartbroken, they do not know how to handle or deal with these situations. And in, reali in reality, most times it happens to individuals who were once virgins, and for the first time they had their sexual activity with that person, they see that that person is their gold mine. And if you had a breakup with that person, you feel it more with breaking up with that individual than with somebody who was already engaging in sexual activity and has surpassed all of that. So it's very dangerous when it comes to establishing relationships. You have to know not only the person, but as the first caller said, understanding the family, the background, all these things really play a very important part. It may seem to some people as a small part, a large part, but it plays a very important part. Because the decision you made, you don't know whether you're getting married into a family that is different. And I want to use the word different with inverted commas. Meaning, they could be involved in some things that really will be against the, the laws of the land. They could be involved in some things in a religious manner that seem to be pertaining to more sacrifices offered to the devil and to God. You don't know. So this idea of seeing somebody and being attracted to them, yes, you could be attracted to somebody, but you have to be careful how you commit yourself in a relationship not knowing sufficiently the things that you need to know about the individual. And please don't take for granted what your friends may say. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, she's a good girl. I know him for a good while. Everything is just good. From that angle, but they're not in their bedroom. They're not in their houses. They're not in certain places where you could be with them 24-7 to know of their goodness. And even though it comes from a family member who grew up and say, yeah, that's my brother, that's my sister. I know them well, good. They are a nice person, whatever the case may be. That's brother-sister relationship. is different from husband-wife. And so you have to be willing to understand that this road that you want to pursue, look out for the dangers and the risk. At some point in time, I did a Bible, I have a Bible chat program on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's called Bible Chat at High Noon on YouTube and Facebook. And we deal with a whole lot of issues, um, marital, non-marital, doctrinal, whatever the case may be. And so many times I deal with issues pertaining to what I just mentioned here, where, where people get themselves caught up in, in relationships that really to, are towards their detriment, to their destruction, rather than to their salvation. So before the two callers, I was heading this direction to show that there are some unscriptural reasons for seeking marriage. And one of them is to please your partner without pleasing God. You see, when you're single, according to the text of 1 Corinthians 7, when you're single, you're supposed to allow yourself to go through the process of building a relationship with God. That's the first relationship you need to have, a relationship with Almighty God. That's why he said there's a difference also between a wife and a virgin, the unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. So her focus is to be more concerned of the things of God, that her body would be pure, she would not be engaging in, a, in unlawful sexual activity. She build that relationship with God. And likewise for the man, he would do the same thing. So the whole idea is that both parties who are concentrating on building a relationship with God, when they see each other and they understand that each other is pursuing in the same direction, have the same desires, then you can take it from there and say, that right, let's build a relationship for ourselves. But so many twisted, corrupted things have happened in this world that people are blinded. And they say blinded by love, but I like to say they're blinded by lust, not by love. If love is genuine, you cannot be blinded by love. You're blinded by lust. Because of the mere fact that there are things that you ought not to do or think about or, be, or see yourself saying or doing that you get yourself involved in thinking that it enhances a relationship when it is to the destruction of the relationship. So the first thing is to please your partner without pleasing God. Now, how could you please somebody without pleasing God? 
I'll tell you how that happens. When you find yourself doing things that displeases God, then you realize you're pleasing this individual more than God. All right? Because God's word is clear about how we ought to live this life. If your body is holy and your spirit is holy, then you do things that will cause you to be separated from the filth of this world. But nevertheless, if it is that you want to please that particular person, then you do things to put yourself in danger. For example, we all know about these teenage lives. And in this teenage life, when a teenager has a phone and they like somebody, it's all hours in the night they're talking. I mean, all hours in the night. When you think that you're sleeping, as a parent, during the night time, they're talking on the phone. They, they're saying, having conversation, they're doing whatever the case may be. And because you have video chat now, could you imagine how many things are taking place behind closed doors with video chat? Uh-huh. Because they want to see who you are. And they want to see you in such a way that entices them. So when you begin to, to displease, to please men or women in that fashion, you displease God because you're moving away from the principles and the stand you're supposed to take as someone who is spiritually minded or someone who is conscious morally of who they are and you value your human body. You value that. Yes, I know that there are changes taking place Especially when you cross over 11, 12, going into the team, there are changes taking place in the body. Changes that sometimes you don't understand. But when those hormones begin to rise and you begin to have these desires and, and you talk about it, you think about it, and now you want to act on it. If there's no self-control, you put yourself in danger. Because why? You find yourself pleasing others rather than pleasing God. So if you're building a relationship, let it start with God. You start pleasing God. And if anybody asks you to do anything that displeases God, then you know it's a challenge for you to leave God and to please them. So when people are married, is it possible? Is it possible that you are marrying someone, not necessarily to please God, but to please yourself and the individual? Is it possible that that could happen? Yeah? So God is no longer in your focus. No matter how many people say, hey, that's dangerous waters. Don't go there. God is no longer in the focus. Because why? You want to please the other party and you want to please yourself. And so when marital situations arise in such an environment, you started off wrong in the first place. And when you can no longer please this person, they're looking for somebody else. And that's where you begin to feel the pinch of why you want a divorce. Because there's no longer a desire. There's no longer an attraction. There. You have been used and abused several times. So yes, it is wrong to be involved in sexual activity before marriage. Because once that individual has sampled the product, if I want to use in that context, and realize what it's all about, you can either say, yes, I'm going to stay here just for that, or we're going to move on to something else. And that's why we get involved in all kind of trouble. All right? So number one, number one, if you're seeking to please your partner rather than to please God, that relationship is not going to be a healthy one at all. It's not going to be a healthy one at all. All right? In, in, as a matter of fact, in verse number 35, it says, And this I speak for your own profit, that, that, uh, not that I may cast a snare upon you. So the, the writer, the Apostle Paul, you don't want to really discourage people who pursue relationships, you know. But actually, he wants you to attend upon the Lord without distraction. Pay attention. Don't be distracted in pleasing people or pleasing someone who you want to be your spouse rather than God. You started off a single, build a relationship with God, please God all the way. And let the other person do the same thing. If they are not pleasing God, do not compromise your principle of putting God first in your life because it will take you down. Do not compromise your principle in that area. The second reason I want to talk to you about is similar to what the second caller says. To gain inheritance or wealth or prosperity. You see, that is another danger. To gain inheritance or wealth or prosperity. You know, we know for a fact that there are many people, uh, because of their upbringing, because of their education, uh, because of their abilities and potential to do great and wonderful things, they can excel. And if they do so legally, and they do so with the right frame of mind, they are blessed indeed. 
you know, and they have wealth and they have everything nailed down. Sometimes, not only from their parents, but they themselves have the opportunity to do so. And you now become the attention of individuals who I like to call uh, financial vultures. All right? They prey on you because they know what you have, what you possess. They know that they will be in a life of comfort once you are able to be under their wings, maybe male or female, and they can feed off of you. All right? So what do you get married for? Just to gain inheritance, wealth, or prosperity. Now, it may be dangerous because you are the one that will realize that I have been played for a fool. The scripture says, the person said, what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Matthew 16, 26. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Do you know how serious that is? What are you willing to give up for your soul? Understanding that wealth and riches will only last for a time. It's not forever. It's for a time. And if you get married to someone based on the premise that, hey, I'm going to live a comfortable life. I can feed off of them. I don't have to do anything much because why? They are loaded, so to speak. You're going to be disappointed. That's why Jesus said in Luke 12, 15, take heed and, and beware of greed because a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things he possessed. That's not what life is all about. So I keep saying, whether somebody is genuine in their career opportunities and they're able to financially have a good you know, foundation, fine. But beware of financial vultures. Beware of the one who smile with you and tell you, I will take care of you, I'll be with you, I'll, whatever the case may be. The whole world they will do just for you, but their aim is really for your wealth, your prosperity. And sometimes it's difficult to determine, you know, whether they are genuine or not. It's very difficult to determine because there are a lot of deceitful people out there. So you have some individuals who may uh, disguise themselves, you know. I've seen that disguising themselves, you know, trying to make themselves look as, as if they are they're not among wealth and all of that. And they try to find somebody who just appreciate them for who they are without knowing of all this wealth and prosperity that they have. But, you know, that is still have a leeway for the person's mind to change. So all I'm saying to you is that before, build a relationship, know the person with whom you bring into your circle or space. And before you say, I do or I will, be sure that that's the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Because in the vow, these vows that are being written or said in a marriage, remember it will say, in adversity and prosperity, I'm going to be with you all the way to the end, in sickness and in health, adversity and prosperity. So when things go the other way around and the person who's rich and not poor, are you going to be there still? Or are you going to leave them? So make sure that the foundation is there. And when you're being married or getting married or seeking marriage, it's for the right reasons. The third reason people get married for is for popularity. Mm -hmm. So that you can be well known or accepted by society. Popularity. Jesus never wanted to be a popular person. But people were putting that before him in so many different ways. Because why? He could heal, he could talk, he could preach, he could do everything. But he never wanted to be this person to say, you know, I know it all. I'm the best person here uh, as he walked about. And so there are people in life who want to be seen, want to be recognized, want to be known. And as a result, they put themselves out there for such a lifestyle. Let's take this call before I continue. Pleasant good afternoon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Saying that sweet TNT is a cosmopolitan nation, right? Let us say an African decide to get hooked up with, let's say, a Hindu or Muslim, right? Which will be the, the which religion will they practice? You, you which jump, religion you, will they? You're jumping the huh? gun, you know. I wish they had to know you're jumping the gun, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but look at look at the children. How will they raise their children? Which belief system they're going after? I'm not seeing anything. Let me, not yet. Let me say one like, let me say one like to do the clubbing, <laughs> and the other one, no, my religion do do like people going to party and and, and going and gamble and all. You have to take all these things into consideration. What about if you you you, you do some your woman and you try to go up there and looking good boy, hey. <laughs> Only to find out later on that his brother killed somebody that you related to. Mm -hmm. You know, 
You need to get to know the people that you're with. You want to, if you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, and you want to make that person the only person that you intend to get intimate with for the rest of your life, let, 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 me, let me say this. Remember, remember many years ago, what, in the 1960s, 70s, there in particular, do you know those, the parents there would, would scrutinize this individual from head to toe? And there were strict <laughs> rules given before you could even go on a date somewhere? You remember yes, those days? You, know, you, you go back further than that, friend. <laughs> get in. Get up. You know, when I was born, when you when 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 uh, I, I forgot, I, I can't remember if it's the Hindu or the Muslims, right? Mm. When they have a wedding ceremony, until the husband eats something, the, the celebration didn't start because the wife parents had to get this and get that and get get, get goats and cow and all kind of thing household, and then and, and what I did is. That was a way for them to get off on a good foundation. Mm. You understand? And, and and that was a requirement back in them days. I don't know about today. You know, t -t today it's like, oh God, you're looking good. Like, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. There's some, there's some <laughs> who still, there's some who still hold on tightly to that kind of tradition. Eh? <laughs> they do. Yes. As you know, we African people should do that. Because when, when we do so and we get uh, and we join, at least we know we're getting into uh, we're getting our head start, and we not to start from scratch. All right. Anyway, I'm talking yeah. to you. <laughs> Thank you very much for your comment. I right, appreciate that. Um, in addition to what the caller said, I didn't want to talk about some things yet, but in addition to what the caller said, because we're going until half past half past six. Eh? We're going until half past six. Eh? As I failed to tell you that, but uh, what I observe in society today, and is is a reoccurring thing. It it just happens. You know, you find people living in a street, living in a village, and they grew up together, and as a result, the, the, the boy on top of the hill uh, likes the girl at the bottom of the hill, and um, they meet each other, they talk, and, and eventually, not too long after, you, you, you see signs of something. And that's, that's what is very scary to me, because no, after a while, you see this teenage girl you know, is pregnant, and then you're trying to figure out, you know, what happened, and wh what was the reason for all of that. They live closely together in a village, in a street, and you realize that when that happened, the cycle just continues. Is there any preparation for marriage and family life? Or is it just that it, it developed into a culture now, where in any form of settlement or way, people just see as a normal that this is what you do. You like somebody, you spend some time with them, um, you, you start your family young, and when they grow up, the same thing happens with their children. It's just a reoccurring thing. It's like marriage has no sacredness. Marriage has no place in the hearts of individuals for them to say, yes, uh, according you know, to, to, the, to, to God, this is my husband, this is my wife, and this is what we do according to, to Scripture. Well, then I have to go back to the point where not everybody is familiar with what the Scripture says. Not everybody wants to walk the road in accordance to what the Word of God says. So, so life begins for an individual in a village, in a society. You grow up, and this is how you live. This is how the village is being populated. All right? And as you, you see this happening from time to time, um, who choose to walk away? They walk away. They go to somebody else because they're free to do that. They're not tied up with anybody. And, and if they don't agree with this person, they walk away, go with somebody else. And it's just a reoccurring thing. That's not God's design for marriage and family life. But in the society, maybe, just maybe, uh, parents who could put a stop to those things and try to reshape and, 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 and cause individuals in regards to their children to think differently. Maybe you need to get a little bit more input into the choices that they make. A little bit more input. While they may want to reject your uh, contribution, the fact remains that if we don't say anything, if we don't say anything, it will just continue. It will just continue. All right? We have a call in the line. A pleasant good afternoon. Good afternoon again, brother. Good afternoon. I understand what you are saying, but you know, old people are saying you're closing the barn up. The horse has already bolted. <laughs> because yeah. I understand fully what you are saying, and we could discuss this as adults. Hmm. But there are a lot of religions in Trinidad that are allowing young people to be themselves, explore their sexuality at a young age. That's sad. 
you understand? And they're not even pulling them to show them the scripture. They're not even preaching certain scriptures. So when you standing on the top of your mountain and you're shouting to the top of your lungs and few people hear you, what happens to the, the vast majority of them who, you know, as you, as you walk the, as you, as you leave the studio this evening and you walk on the road and you see exactly what you're preaching again happening in front of you, how do you feel? What do you do? Hmm. You understand? Yes, yes, yes. All right, brother. All right, thank you. And I, I feel for that in the statement that was made because that's the reason why it, it affects me. And um, it has to start with training and helping even your own family unit, your own family circle to understand those things because it's very important that we, we come to the, 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 the reality of what life is all about. And if this continues, as I said before, then we, we're not setting a good example for what marriage is really about, this sacredness when it comes to marriage. I see um, Stephen saying Adam didn't know his wife on, on, on YouTube um, romantically before being chased out of the garden. Well, well, that's your opinion, right, Stephen? He didn't know his wife romantically. That's your opinion because, as I said before, back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had to learn. They have to learn. They come like children. Their minds is like... We have to learn about this whole thing with relationship. And that's the reason why I said I do not believe that from the time he saw Eve, he just went after her and did have sex and that was it. No, they had to learn. And, and that period of learning, of, of realizing the importance of who is before you and why this person is here, goes back into what God has established into marriage and family life. There's a reason why he created the man. There's a reason why he created the woman. And if people could just just, just take the time to understand these things. The whole outlook of marriage and family life will be different. Because the man would understand what is his role, what is his function. The woman would also understand what is her role and her function. And then we begin to close in the gap, which is so wide, where the sacredness of marriage and family life, which is being threatened today, the, the gap is so wide, we have to close in that gap as best as we could. Because it's going to continue every generation, and no one is going to say, hey, this needs to stop. You have to change some things. Now, I, please understand what I'm saying. Please understand what I'm saying. I grew up learning that we have a family planning association. And in family planning, you learn that they can educate you about your sexuality. They can talk to you about certain things. Um, and sometimes the, the, one of the solutions would be to provide the condoms so that people who engage in sexual activity will not be uh, able to produce children all the time. But you see, the thing about it is that um, while the, the condoms might have been serving a purpose to help reduce, it doesn't really reduce anything. Because people today, they do their own thing to begin with, one. And number two, it just encourages perhaps more of the activity than to lean individuals to the point where they can see, hey, you see this? This is supposed to happen in a marital circle, not outside of marriage. But then one of the things I was going to talk about is where um, the scriptural reasons for marriage, as opposed to unscriptural reasons for marriage, is that you have people wanting to, they call this um, sex trial or trial by sex. They want to see if it works first before they engage in marital life. So they have to go through the process of trial. And, and that in itself for young people is a normal thing, you know? Because they're not thinking about marriage. They're just thinking about, hey, we're two young people, let me enjoy myself, etc., etc., and see what happens after that. It's only when they, they become parents before husband and wife is when you have the problem escalating. Because what we have in our society today is people becoming parents, especially young people, becoming parents before becoming husband and wife. And that is sad. They're becoming parents first and then husband and wife after. So we have done switched everything around. It's supposed to be husband and wife and then parents. So therefore, what are we facing in our society today? And why is this thing encouraging to the point where even we embrace that kind of lifestyle? So while I talk about popularity and gaining wealth and, and pleasing uh, uh, your partner without pleasing God, th there's some other things that I want to mention. My partner already jumped the gun. I don't want to go there yet, you know, but let me just see if I reach there quickly. But for equality in profession, 
equality in profession so that there's a level of superiority on both sides and not inferiority. So when you're getting married now, some people look for equality in profession. If you're a doctor, you get married to a doctor. If you're a lawyer, you get married to a lawyer. You know, so the thing is, you don't want to lower your standard to somebody else. You always want to have somebody on the same educational level as you are. Thinking that that's going to cement your marital relationship because why? You know, both of us are in this um, category of, of producing children, mm -hmm, producing children that may have high IQs. So people are already foreseeing, <laughs> which is so amazing, they're already foreseeing you know, the advantage that they may have when they marry according to equality or profession or, or that kind of career opportunity that says, hey, I'm up there and I'm not down there, as the case may be. And it's interesting because you want to maintain a certain level of financial status, all right, or class of identity. Uh, the rich will always be rich because they marry into riches, not necessarily themselves. I want to get you to understand that. They marry into riches, not necessarily themselves. So the person is not really the highlight there. Our covenant relationship is based on the fact that we have equality uh, on a level that says your career, my career, we up there, we good, we fix, and therefore that is how we want to live. So in our society today, you have people who choose marital life based on such, based on equality in profession. So if somebody is not highly educated, but they fit all the qualities of a wife who is committed, a wife who's committed, uh, a wife to be who's committed, who's dedicated, and, and all the things that you would want in a woman if she is there. But the only thing is that her educational level is not the same as yours. Hmm. Uh, there are a number of things that could happen. You could have her as a subordinate to the point where you become the master and she becomes the slave and you become the one with the authority to the point where uh, everything you say is right and, and she must follow because why you are the educated one. So there's an imbalance as well that takes place and it tends to bring about a level of abuse. Uh huh. Why? Because I'm the intelligent one. What if it's the woman and not the man? In a rare case, if it's the woman and not the man, then she assumes the authoritative role in the home. Because she's the intelligent one. My husband is not so educational as, or in, uh, you know, um, all that driven by knowledge as I am. He's not intellectual. So then she would assume the role of being the one who have the authority. All these things changes. So we are forgetting that these things, all of these external things, added things, pop-up things, it's not supposed to make or define a marriage, but it does. It does because the basis for these two individuals getting together is outlined here before them. And now you realize that, hey, that's the only reason why I married you. That's the only reason why I married you. Now, in certain cultures and religions, some people marry within their caste system. And some people marry because of the color of your skin. And it's really interesting how marriage has taken so many different angles and avenues, thinking that, hey, it's going to be the most beautiful thing because why I marry according to my profession or my financial, and then you realize that it changes because things don't always go the way that you think. It's, it changes. Hmm. Yeah, Stephen says condoms use, uh, uh, encourage more frequent intimacy. Yes, it does. It doesn't encourage, um, what do you call it? It doesn't pull back. It doesn't say to yourself, well, listen, uh, le let me consider that this is not the way to go. But actually, it encourages more intimacy. It does that. But it encourages more intimacy to the point where the people now believe everything is safe. But they don't tell you that it's not 100% safe. That's the reason why I said that you have more young people today becoming parents before becoming husbands and wives. All right? Another reason is to gain citizenship in a country. We know that for a fact. To gain citizenship in a country or state, people get married. And sometimes, I do not know if the government of the day could have a hold on that, uh, could stop those sort of things, but it happens. It happens just to gain citizenship in a country. You marry this individual. And then after that, the person goes their way. 
So you have to understand, hey, these are not the things that God really wants for people to follow after. They, you have to become conscious of what the sacredness of marriage is all about so you wouldn't find yourself in these sort of errors and in these sort of mistakes. You don't do those things because it's, it's, it's not pleasing to God. Another reason, I'm saying this quickly because I want us to understand, another reason is that because I am getting too old or my biological clock is ticking away. Now some people look at themselves like that. I want to be involved but I, I haven't found a partner I'm, I'm crossing the 30, I'm going into 40, and there's nobody there yet, and my, my clock is ticking away. I can no longer produce or bring forth children, whatever the case may be. And sometimes you perhaps go for the first person that comes through the door in a mall, and you say, well, that's the person I'm going to marry. Because you get desperate now. What if you're supposed to remain single? What if you're supposed to just concentrate on you and build a relationship with God? Hence the reason why no one has found you yet or you have not found anyone. What is supposed to be, you're supposed to be like that. Then you might deny yourself and say, no, I can't go down this way. I, I have to fight. And then you end up taking somebody who perhaps you're not really interested in, but they just show a, a little keenness. And, and because time is against you, you run into this marital relationship and you say to yourself, well, that's it dangerous to do that, isn't it? Even though God said that everything, there's a season, there's a time to every purpose under the heaven, he never tell you there's a time to get married because your clock is ticking away. He never told you that. But you have to use wisdom. And sometimes for, for certain people, not being married is going to be the best thing that you ever decided in your life, for certain people. Because when you are, there's a whole lot of things that you got to change. A whole lot of things you have to adjust to. So sometimes it's better to be single for some people and for others they choose to be married. All right? And one of the things I want to encourage a lot of young people who are listening to me now, and I want you to be very clear on what I'm saying and do not find yourself into this error. You want to get married because you become pregnant. You see, that is not a reason for marriage. I know parents might want to push because they don't want the shame, they don't want the embarrassment, so they will push you to get married. For those who are conscious of their own status, whatever the case may be, they don't want that kind of talk coming back. So, hey, you know, my daughter is pregnant, so what are we going to do? Let's push her to get married one time. Why? So they can avoid the talk, so they will see that when she's married, this happens after. Now, come on, folks, let's, let's, let's be real. Let's be real. Even if you found out that this person is pregnant after three weeks or a month and you decide you want to get married because you want to cover the shame of this person, isn't that the period of time between eight to nine months and then after that um, well, the child comes forward, then people will know. I mean, it's common sense. People will know that you got married because you just want the child to be born inside of a marital circle. But that sex sexual intimacy has already been broken, which was not supposed to be broken. So yes, we try to do things to correct the situation, but you make it worse. So yes, let the child come into a marriage family relationship. So before, go get married. Fast, just get married. <sighs> That's not the answer, folks. That's not the answer. Because those two people who perhaps were having a good time until she said, I'm pregnant, and he now hold his head realizing, hey, I'm, a f I'm going to be a father. They were not ready for it in the first place. So they're not ready for parenthood. They're certainly not ready for marriage. And two things they have to deal with that they were not ready for. So at some point in time in their lives, they realize that they have been a frustration to each other. They were just having a, a fun time. And they don't really want to be married. Or if they are, they get a divorce not too long after. Because why? That was not the person. Another person I intended to spend the rest of my life with. It just so happened, we played the fool. Something happened, and bam. So, again, that is not a reason for being married. You'll never see it in scripture because I am pregnant and I have no choice but to get married. And also, because all my friends are already married and I'm the only one left. You align with a group of friends. They certain being wedded one by one, and you find that you are the one that is not going in the same direction, and they start to put pressure on you. So there's peer pressure, and there's this type of pressure as well. This pressure means, hey, what happened? You're taking too long. 
and they want to hook you up with this person, this person is a good person, uh, but you don't know enough information about the individual. And don't let me start about talking about dates online, please. Don't let me start talking about dates online. That's the worst thing ever. I don't care if you get a wife or a husband due to the internet. All right? You probably one of the one of the fortunate escaped ones, but that's very dangerous. This online dating thing is very dangerous. All right? So when you think about your friends and all of them are being wedded off and seem to have their family life and you are the only one left and you're under that kind of pressure, then you too want to be wedded to somebody who you did not spend time with because you think they are just part of the circle of this marriage and family life. You're putting yourself in danger. All right? Because of my time running here, I'm trying to give as, as much as I could to help people realize, hey, you need to come back to God's way of how marriage is done and understand the process that needs to be worked out. Some people say because of certain religious customs or culture or tradition, I have to get married young or before a certain age. I never like that. I never like the fact that you marrying people even before they can understand their own feelings. And some cultures and some religious customs permit that. So individuals are being married at a young age, not even knowing the person because they're still young. They are forced into that marriage. So whatever that custom or culture is, right? you may want to accept that. But personally for me, I don't because it really defeats the purpose of what marriage is all about. For some people, they say it worked out for them. Because why? No, you have to learn to love the person. Could you imagine that? You married somebody and now you have to learn to love them. Hmm. That's very interesting, isn't it? You have to learn to love them. That's, that to me is forceful a forceful type of marital relationship. We have to learn to love somebody because it was arranged before. So not getting too much involved in that. If we go the biblical way, the biblical way is to get to know the person, understand the person, get to know the environment where the person lives, get to know the environment where they go to work if they work or, uh, or, um, or, or if they are involved in certain activities or career opportunities, get to know them holistically. Get to know, as the first caller said, you see your parents? Oh gosh, please, come on, man. Because some people have relationships, especially those young adults, and the parents don't even know, never met the person before, and all of a sudden they come and they tell you, I'm going to get married. Parents don't know the person, never met them, and perhaps that's the first day they might ever see them. And that's the whole thing about how these things are done in a society where Everybody is on their own beat, do what they want, because why? They think this is how this life is all about, and nobody following the word of God. Nobody wants to look at what God says in how to get these things done. So because of a certain religious custom or culture or tradition, I have to get married young or before a certain age. Because I believe I am ready, but did you prepare yourself adequately? You believe you're ready. And most people, when you ask them, because I do, and by the way, let me just say this quickly as well. There's a difference between marital counseling and biblical marital counseling. There's a difference. Marital counseling, especially from those individuals who have their degrees and who have all sort of PhD and whatever the case may be, and they will tell you, well, um, if you're doing counseling in this sense, you can do this, you can do that, and they give you different ideas. But you see, biblical marital counseling really comes from the Bible. And for those uh, who have went through the process with me, um, looking back over 50 marriages thus far, by God's guidance and grace that I was able to do, when you consider all of these marital situations, and we do biblical marital counseling, you can't go wrong because all of the advice is actually coming from God. And His words, it is written there, it is recorded there. So I'm not um, dunging, so to speak, those who have their degrees uh, to do counseling in various areas. But I'm saying the best way to prepare people for marriage and family life is through biblical marital counseling. Listen to what the creator, the designer, the manufacturer, the engineer, the person who put together in marriage and family life, listen to what he has to say. Because God never made marriage to fail. I repeat that. 
He never made marriage to fail. God didn't institute marriage at the beginning to fail. He instituted marriage and he gave the guidelines as to how people could live in this marital life. So when problems arise, use his solutions. Use his solutions. We have something called anger management. And I've read so many different documents of how you could go through the process of learning anger management, how to control this, how to do that, whatever the case may be. And do you not know that the Bible speaks of anger management? Do you not know that the Bible speaks about how to deal with abuse or abusive situations? And So everything actually is there. It's just that we have to know where to go to find it. It's there. And if we neglect the word of God that guides marital relationships, and sometimes you seek advice from everybody else. Let me tell you something. Sometimes parents, grandparents, auntie, uncle, friends, cousin, everybody has something to say when it comes to marriage and family. Everybody has something to say. But not all advice that they give, number one, could be biblical, number two, could be something to help you in your marital situation. Not all advice. All right? Long time ago in the Jewish uh, custom of life, they used to go to the elders. The elders are the ones who know the Lord. Elders are the ones who understand what God's word has been said. So you go to the elders, elders would advise you what to do. You face the council, they would help you in certain things, whether it's parental situation, marital situation. You go to the elders. Now God's word is, is more open and, and accessible to find information. You have preachers and teachers I hope, I hope they can advise you well. Because one of the callers did mention that in the religious world, people are allowing sexual activities to take place in such a way that they are going against the sacredness and the purity of marriage. They may teach their members to so do. And that in itself, they will have to answer to God for all of these sort of abomination. They have to answer to God for it. So while you have these unscriptural reasons, then you realize when somebody says that they're ready, the question is if you're ready, did you do biblical marital counseling? No, I didn't do it, but then you're not ready. You have ideas and thoughts, but you're not ready. Yes, if you fail to prepare, then we must prepare to fail. If you plan to achieve, then you must achieve a plan. You cannot move forward without a plan. So please, those individuals who after three months, after six months, looking for a divorce, more than likely, number one, you did not go through biblical marital counseling. Number two, you lack the patience of a marriage to be developed when it is in its young stage. It has to develop. It has to go. Number three, you perhaps ignore the red flags as an indication that something is wrong, I don't like the way my spouse thinks or acts or whatever, and you ignore the red flags, but you still went in there because why? You're blinded not by love, uh-uh, but by lust, and you went into this thing head on. And number four, you have a desire that you want fulfilled, and it doesn't care how you do it. And now you realize that that has turned towards your detriment, your destruction, because you didn't follow the biblical examples. All right? So what are those scriptural reasons for seeking marriage? Scriptural reasons. I want you to mark it down. Mark it down. I'm going to give you some scriptural reasons for seeking marriage. Mark it down. There are those whom I did biblical marital counseling to already. And they are listening to the program. And they know I talked about these different C's. One, two, three, four, five, six C's. I talk about six C's. Right? Not the Mediterranean Sea, not the Atlantic Sea. I talk about six seas. So what you need to do is to mark it down. And you'll see that these are the reasons that God gave for anyone seeking marriage. Number one, Genesis 2.18, God says, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me to fit for him. The first C word is companionship. The person that you're seeking to be married to is supposed to be your companion for life which means every other person does not have the same privilege as this person would have. Some people say a dog is a man's best friend. Yes, but a wife is your companion. Don't let the dog replace the wife. Some people treat their some men treat their vehicles better than their wife. They wash that vehicle clean. They perfume the vehicle. They make sure the vehicle smelling good, looking good, everything. 
and the wife still looking raggedy than do. You understand? The thing about it is that your wife is your companion. She's your partner. She's the one whom God has given to you. And because you are seeking marital relationship, you want to have a companion. If you don't want a companion, then keep your dog as your best friend and your car as your tool. But a wife is a companion. That's one of the C words that you're getting married for. For companionship. Somebody who could be there for you in the night to comfort you when you go through your problems and your trials. That's what you want a companion for. Not to beat them to a frazzle. Because you think to yourself that they need to be in subjection to you by force. Number two, Genesis 2, 19, 20. Remember, uh, the Bible said out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. He brought them to see what Adam would call them, but Adam couldn't find a companion. What Adam also could not find was somebody compatible to him. That's the second C word, compatibility. Capable of existing or living together in harmony. That's what you're looking for. Because in your courtship with the individual, you could tell whether or not you can live with this person. When you get married to them, you can tell whether or not they are compatible to you. You may have similarities. You will have differences. But don't let your differences overweight your similarities. Because you will always focus more on the differences than the similarities. All right? From the time that is more overwhelming, then you realize that this person is not compatible to me. Feel free to say, okay, no, no offense, but we can't make it. Because why? There are some things I just cannot deal with, cannot handle, cannot live with. So in the earlies, if the person is not compatible, hey, don't pursue marriage. Number three, communication. But I want to include the word intimate communication. Because in Genesis 2, 21 to 23, when the Lord God formed a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he took one of his DNA and he closed up his flesh and he made a woman and he brought the woman to the man. That's what God did, you know. God brought the woman to the man. That's why in marital relation, um, in, in wedding, sorry, you, you realize that the woman walks up after the man because the, the father most likely is bringing his daughter to be wedded to the man. Just as similarly, when God made Eve, he brought Eve to the man. So... Genesis 2, 21, 23. That's called intimate communication. The form of communication will be to understand each other as God brought the woman to the man. You have to understand this person, who they are. That communication is not sexual, by the way. It's knowing the person through eyes, through ears. And understanding them as you listen, as you learn. The other C word is what you call commitment. Long, I, I add the word lifelong commitment. Yes, because in verse 24 and 25 of Genesis 2, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That's a lifelong commitment. That's the C word, commitment. So you are into this for the long haul, right? Because you left your father and your mother, you abandoned responsibilities to them, and you're taking on your new responsibility, which is your wife. And by the way, in case you didn't know, your wife is supposed to be in front of your father and your mother. And wife, in case you didn't know, your husband's supposed to be in front of your father and your mother. And if you have children, your husband is still first after Christ. If you have children, your wife is still first after Christ. That does not change. Because the order in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is that God is first. He's the head. Christ is also the head. The man is the head. Then the woman after. So, is God, Christ, the man, the woman. No children, no pets, nothing. Right? It must be outlined. So, scriptural reason for marriage, companionship, compatibility, intimate communication, lifelong commitment. Because the man and his wife, they were both naked and they were not ashamed. That's how it's supposed to be. Man and his wife naked, not ashamed. But when people are not, <laughs> they, they don't even have any shame to begin with. All right, then we have conjugality. Conjugality is what you call the sexual intercourse. Genesis 2, uh, verse number 25, the man and his wife were naked and not ashamed. And Genesis 4, 1, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So there was sexual activity between the two. We call it conjugality, a sexual intercourse between the husband and the wife. That's the other C word. That happens as a reason for marriage, to be able now to enjoy the blessing that God gave in marriage. Because marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. That's what God says. 
You bear this holy. And the last C word is child or children. That is the offspring. Genesis 4, 1 again. Same thing. Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived and bare children. She again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was the keeper of sheep. So God's design and purpose scripturally for marriage is one, companionship. Two, compatibility. Three, intimate communication. Three, four, lifelong commitment. Five, conjugality, sexual intercourse. And six, child, children. All these C words, all these C words are important for you now to pursue or to state the reasons why you are seeking marriage. If you don't want a companion, don't seek marriage. If someone is not compatible with you, do not seek marriage. If you cannot have communication of, of an intimate basis, not by sex or by that form of touching, but by getting to know each other closely, then don't go into that area. Definitely conjugality is out of it. No sexual intercourse before. And definitely no children before. All of these things, if we follow the guidelines that God has given, we'd realize we are putting ourselves in a better position, a better position for marriage and family life. Better position. We are changing the course of history where our village, our street is concerned. Everybody should be involved in helping our young people charter a course that will be more beneficial for them than just to have this reoccurring type of life in every village that you just continue to have children before marriage. To become parents before you even, hmm, you yourself need parenting. And then everything just continues as it is. So I hope that our discussion here this afternoon was a fruitful one. It opened your understanding towards many things that we need to consider. And if you agree, then amen. If not, go back into the scriptures and see what God says. And you'll be convinced or convicted by God's holy and righteous word. So I want to thank you for um, bearing with me and for us taking this time together as we talk about marriage and family life on WAC Radio 90.1. If you need further information, if you need biblical marital counseling, whether uh, before leading to marriage or whether now as you go through certain marital situations, you can call me at 763-2888, 763-2888. Call me at that number, all right? Okay, so then... All right. Okay, so then that's what we're looking at. You can have the opportunity given to you to, to do what? To call, ask your questions, make your comments known, uh, all of these things, so that you can have the opportunity to say, yes, I, I really want to pursue marriage and family life. I, I need some guidance in that area. Uh, we can sit and we can talk. And if you are planning your marriage, again, include biblical marital counseling. If you're planning it, include it. Because that's what we're going to be doing together. Whether you want to do so when you call me or whether you're seeking that uh, from another minister, make sure that it is from the Word of God. All right? Make sure it's from the Word of God. Again, I have a Bible program called Bible Chat at High Noon every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, just type up the Church of Christ Laramie on Facebook page or Laramie Church of Christ on the YouTube page, and you would see. Bible chat at high noon. Um, there's a picture there with me holding up a Bible. You will know that's me holding up a Bible. And, and there you could um, subscribe. You could join us. And any Bible question you want to ask, you could come on, ask your Bible question, get your Bible answers. All right? We have another program called Breaking Out of Depression on LBW Radio. Look for LBW Radio on the net, yes. And you can tune into Breaking Out of Depression at 6.30 to 8 Every Tuesday, 6 to 8, Breaking Out of Depression. All right, that's with uh, the Andy Charles. So you can tune in. And any traumatic situations that you have been through, that you know someone is facing or going through, um, somebody's in a state of depression, just, just get yourself that opportunity to call and to view the LBW radio, and you'll be able now to you know, be encouraged and uplifted from those situations. So once again, I am Wendell Paris, and I thank you for staying with us here on the New Year Bible broadcast. May God bless you and may God keep you always. All right? Take care. There are days when I wonder why I go on. There are times when I can't hold back these tears. Since that I run to you when my eyes lose sight.
side of the way In these times, Lord, remember these words I pray Lord, when I walk, walk beside me When I talk, Lord, please guide me When I run, Lord, help me run to stop Sometimes, sweet Lord, I just can't let go of my burdens. Even though I know your yoke is ever so light. Cause there are things that I must prove to you, even if I must get it. Now 
life has just begun. Just begun. He is coming, coming for his ride, coming for his ride. Oh, on that bright and glorious morning, he is coming, coming for his ride, coming for his ride. Oh, on that glorious day. Coming for his bride, coming for his bride. Mm -hmm. Oh, that same bridegroom is dwelling in the air. The time may be far, or maybe it's near. So let us be prepared for when he's coming. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I am Brother Wendell Paris, evangelist and minister of God's Word, inviting you to listen to the Know Your Bible broadcast hosted by the Churches of Christ every Sunday evening from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. This is one of the most informative, enlightening, and thought provoking Bible programs just for you. We will also be coming to you live. So get ready for sound biblical teachings from the New York Bible Broadcast every Sunday evening from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Rock Radio 90.1 FM. Listen to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Are you looking for a side hustle as an independent contractor? Are you looking to make extra cash and business opportunities? We have opportunities for graduates from our online Chambers Paralegal Program to work with lawyers and other legal professionals in New York State or persons with similar qualifications. We also have opportunities for other Chamber businesses in graphic arts and design, creating and updating websites in WordPress, the most popular platform, and other platforms, social media experts in the various platforms, and database experts. There is also a high demand for voiceovers, audio, and video podcast editing in the marketing field, journalists, and other professionals in the services industry who can work in the virtual world for U.S. businesses. Send your resume and a cover letter explaining why you or your business is the right fit for these partnerships to info at myiqinc.com. That's info at myiqinc.com. Join Supat and friends Sharon and Alicia on a return trip to Ghana from the 13th to the 22nd of November 2024. 
The tour will cover three regions, Accra, the capital and surroundings, Kumasi, the capital city of Ashanti region, Aslan Manso, the slave river last bath, Elmina, Cape Coast, door of no return and impact during the slave trade. Let's meet up on tour again. Call Supat 240-472-2140 for occupancy rates and details. Limited space is available. Ghana, we are coming back. It was nice, so we're doing it twice. Join us for the WAC Meet and Greet in Okara. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of WAC 90.1 FM at Marion Oaks Community Center in Okala. On Saturday, June 15th, the Father's Day weekend from 6 p.m. Dress code is white with a touch of red. Come and meet Mr. Feely, the CEO of WAC Radio, your favorite radio station. You make the wrong choice. Music for Dancing by DJ Richard C. of Wack Radio. All inclusive tickets, singles $40, couples $75. Book your ticket for the Wack Meet and Greet now. Call Shortman at 813 263 2127 or Dance a Boy at 917 753 3123. Get discount and hotel accommodation. Call 352-261-0024. Mention WAC 90.1 F. It was nice, so we doing it twice. Hello, Miss Trafili. Toronto, Toronto, get ready for the big, big, big relaunch of A Taste of Madness at Twilight Restaurant and Bar in Scarborough on April 13th, 2024. Don't miss an electrifying night with the Calypso King of Toronto, Connector, Nikita. Could this be Daryl the Steel Pan Man and the Sensational Jew? Accompanied by Toronto's finest Tassa drummers with DJs, the enforcers, and selector Ombi. And hosted by the big band Taste of Madness. Remember, it's the relaunch of Taste of Madness. Win a door prize of a microwave starting at 9 p.m. Tickets are $40. Book now on eventbrite.ca Taste of Madness and tasteofmadness.com Come and join the unforgettable madness. The craze in the country is learning happy. Contenders say, come enjoy 73 with me in his big birthday concert. Bigger and better. Friday, 26 April at Cafe Blue Rice and Road from 8 p.m. with some of the biggest Calypso and X Tempo stars featuring Crazy, Trinidad Rio, Johnny King, Oronga with the Hendrickson family, Organizer, Dr. Will B, and Trinity with X Tempo by Gypsy, Black Sage, Myron B, Niall Manswell, and Gary Ranks. All backed by Michelle Henry, Kaiso Kaiso Encore Band. Showtime, 8 p.m. sharp. MC is Shirley Hendrickson and Omari Ashby. Get your tickets now at only 150 at Tuco North Zone Office, Crosby St. James, and Tuco's Head Office, 45C Journingham Avenue, Belmont. Plenty giveaways as usual. Contenders say, come enjoy 73 with me in his big, big. birthday concert. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Love and happiness. Something that can make you do wrong, make you do right. Yeah. Love. I want to bring the love songs back to the radio. Love and happiness. Back to 
to the radio. Thanking the master one more time for bringing you all truly safely to the studio. I want to thank Brother Paris, he took you through knowing your Bible every Sunday evening from 5. A little extra time for him today as we meet up for some lost time. Now we're into the music that takes you back. It takes you back to those days, those days of wine and roses, jolting your memory as we take it down on a Sunday evening right here at your True Nation station 90.1 FM. I'm Alpha B. Seen a pleasant good evening.
Big Band Songs of Byron Lee, song entitled I Know You There. Songs of Louis and the Lynx.
man, we just call it love and happiness. Nine minutes after seven, we are together until nine.
WAC Radio 90.1 FM and WAC.TV invite you to a musical journey that transcends the ordinary. Oh, bring it splashy and splashy like water. God tell me bring fire. Somebody say fire, fire. Somebody say fire, fire. Somebody... Let's embark on a soulful exploration of hope, rejuvenation, and the sheer joy of gospel, jazz, and uplifting music. Whether you're at home or on the move, make us your cultural soundtrack to your life. on Sunday 14th April from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Demi Melville Entertainment presents its much anticipated children's show. Get ready to see many talented children sing, dance, act and play instruments. The talent will be mind-blowing so don't miss it on all WAC platforms. Facebook, YouTube, WAC Visual Radio, Sino Radio, TuneIn Radio and WAC TV. And don't forget to donate. You certainly don't want to miss this on April 14th. So, save the date now. It's an all-inclusive vacation to Jamaica with your music, your culture, and your entertainment. You get a choice of six restaurants, 11 bars, three pools, beach days, day tours to Dunn's River Falls, plus meet and greet with fellow West Indians from USA, Canada, Trinidad, and other places. Also, a private entertainment night with Ronnie McIntosh, Crazy and DJ Madman Maddie, a beach day with more music, six days in Jamaica, your music, your culture, your entertainment from TT, $12,995. August 8th or 9th and return August 12th, 13th or 14th. Call Amrals for your Jamaica all-inclusive at 6653383. That's Amrals at 6653383. It's an all-inclusive vacation to Jamaica with your music, your culture, and your entertainment. The crazy in the country. Is Lonin Contender say, come enjoy 73 with me in his big birthday concert. Bigger and better. better. Friday, 26 April at Cafe Blue Rison Road from 8 p.m. with some of the biggest Calypso and Extempo stars featuring Crazy, Trinidad Rio, Johnny King, Oronga with the Hendrickson family, Organizer, Dr. Will B, and Trinity with Extempo by Gypsy, Black Sage, Myron B, Niall Manswell, and Gary Ranks. All backed by Michelle Henry, Kaiso Kai. So Encore Band, Showtime, 8 p.m. sharp. MC is Shirley Hendrickson and Omari Ashby. Get your tickets now no. at only 150 at Tuco North Zone Office, Crosby St. James, and Tuco's Head Office, 45C Jerningham Avenue, Belmont. Plenty giveaways as usual. Contenders say, Come enjoy 73 with me, me. in his big, big birthday concert. Toronto, Toronto, get ready for the big, big, big relaunch of A Taste of Madness at Twilight Restaurant and Bar in Scarborough on April 13th, 2024. Don't miss an electrifying night with the Calypso King of Toronto, Connector, Nikita, Curtis B, Daryl the Steel Pan Man, and the sensational Jew. Accompanied by Toronto's finest Tassa drummers with DJs, the enforcers, and selector Ombi. And hosted by the big band Taste of Madness. Remember, it's the relaunch of Taste of Madness. Win a door prize of a microwave starting at 9 p.m. Tickets are $40. Book now on eventbrite.ca Taste of Madness and tasteofmadness.com Come and join the unforgettable madness. Dive into the rhythms of the Caribbean with an unforgettable getaway. 
join us for Kaisoka in Panama Memorial Weekend May 24th to the 27th 2024 with an unforgettable getaway package includes round trip from JFK New York Miami or Trinidad airport transfers and hassle free travel four days three nights accommodation in Panama at the Tourist Day Alba Hotel and Suites the highlight Saturday night jump out and dance the night away with the chosen one or optional a tour of the Panama Canal or city tour don't miss out on this incredible opportunity on Sunday, it's Last Lap featuring Posa and Prince Unique. Enjoy fantastic music and make memories to last a lifetime. Book now for only 899 US dollars per person, double occupancy. Limited availability. Reserve your spot today. Give us a call 646 399 0000. Kaisoka in Panama Memorial Weekend. The True Nation Station. Give God all the praise. It's blessings time. We are a culture crazy. Count your blessings, not your problems. Be thankful for what you have and have achieved. 90.1 FM, WAC Radio. Songs of Ray Sylvester. Song entitled Rain. I want to say a special good evening to all the past students of St. Benedict's. Got something special for you later on. As you know, today is the 25th anniversary of the passing. Dom Basil Matthews, the principal of St. Benedict's.
to Mr. Leslie Moore. And good evening to Francis T. And to Lynette Alexis. This is Lynn Regis. Sandra Anno. And the First Lady of Union Hall, Judy. Dutchy Brothers. one especially for Mr. Owen Boyce celebrating his birthday today I know you had a good day I wish you many more doing this one especially for me a loving wife Betty and all your good friends and all of us right here at 90.1 FM wish you many more Mr. Boyce and this one is especially from that lady in your life Many more, oh, many, many more. Enjoy.
band songs of Fitzvaughn Bryan. Song entitled I'll Be There. And we say good evening to Mrs. Patricia Callis and her family. Also, Brother Valentino is loving wife Peggy. Mrs. Anne Marie Quan Chan and her family. Good evening. to Joe Bruce, to Franklin Beckles, to Vernon Adams, Veronica Lewis, Gail Hayden, and the two young ones. 